painkiller already, 661. Harley is filling in for Woody. We've got our wonderful guest, Josh Wolf, Wolf back again. How's it going, gentlemen? But why can't Josh be filling in for Woody and I'm just here chilling? Because he's got a flight to catch, you Canadian <laughs> fuck. God, that, sounds that sounds very Woody, though. That sounds very Woody. You said a bad word. He's <laughs> you monetized, Woody. Sorry. <laughs> this episode of PK brought to you by Lock and Load, FaroDistro.com, and, of course, BetterHelp. We'll hear more about them later. But, yeah, as Kyle said, we've got Josh and Harley. Josh, you're heading out of town in the next bit for a, a stand-up show, Corpus Christi. Yeah, I'm down in Corpus Christi this weekend. Um, never been down there before to do stand up. I used to party down there when I lived in Texas. So we'll see. I'm excited though, man. It's gonna be hot as fuck. Yeah, that will be rough. I you were talking about doing stand up like with your son and shows like that. Do you like offer tips to him sometimes as a more wise comedian where you're like, hey son, you've been hitting this same bit for a long time now like and it's not and it's not playing i love you but it's not playing like does, does that ever happen yeah i don't think i say it quite as nicely as that okay i mean yeah. i thought you were talking about epic meal time for a second we we no. uh we we look we have a great relationship and so we figured out a way to separate father son shit and business stuff and he go he'll know he'll come off stage and i'll be like hey that joke didn't work and he's like, yeah, I know. But, but it's funny when I give him a, like, I'll give him a, this one part of the story that I, for weeks, I kept telling him, hey, 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 this isn't, try this. And he was like, oh, I got it. And I was like, try this. I was like, he was like, I got it. So last week he tried it and it fucking worked. And I was like, you know, I've been doing this for a couple of years, dude. Like, you just needed a drunker is, crowd. Perhaps. Yeah, this is free advice, man. Yeah. My crowd is probably higher than they are drunk. And I've turned my Friday night late shows into mushroom shows. So I take two and a half grams before I go on stage <laughs> and just fuck around. You ever just take like two point. grams and it's just, a, it, it like hits a bit like three and you get out there and instantly you're like, they're not going to like this. Or are <laughs> you, you always like, week? are you <laughs> last week? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, sometimes the mushrooms just hit harder. And last week I hit harder. And last <laughs> week during the show, I think I said out loud, I hope I can figure out a way to land this plane. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny about that is like you're doing like like just getting on stage and, and, and speaking is a huge fear for a lot of people that, you know, you I mean, I've taken for granted many times uh, and then being able to tell jokes and entertain people like I halfway tried that once. And that was the hardest and scariest <laughs> shit and doing drugs in public or even trying mushrooms. But you throw it all together casually <laughs> and you're like, uh oh, let's see how this goes. Yeah, I don't really mind public speaking as much as most people, but I want to be sober ideally i'll be like all right <laughs> i want to feel like <laughs> what's the biggest crowd all right so it's gonna vary wildly i think for each of us what's the biggest crowd of live people you've had to just say something to announce something get them in order hey everybody this is the thing what's the biggest crowd hmm i did I, uh, a lot for josh i i, I think 50, i have I've, fifty three thousand. yeah live damn attendance. he won Jeez. That's crazy because like even with all the training that I have or being like I'm getting in front of 50, just trying to imagine it, like getting my head in that space, standing in front of 53,000 people, no matter what you have to say, even if yeah. it was entirely for their benefit, I feel like I'd be like, <clears throat> hello. <laughs> like, I, you'd I just, hear I like, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> like even just, like, I've done a couple hundred at paintball events, but even just getting on a bullhorn and talking to people, it's so like, man, they're not all looking. <laughs> it's, like, it's like if you can't really, if you can't get them, then it's you're feeling like, should I speak louder or should I just shut the fuck up and walk away? Am I causing yeah. a problem here? You you're almost read the rules of paintball, do a out joke there. in. Yeah, the fifty-three thousand. I was doing comedy, so I was opening for Larry the Cable Guy, and he sense. sold the fifty-three thousand tickets at Husker Stadium in Nebraska, right? And he would have sold more, but they had to put the stage somewhere. Yeah. And 
And what was weird is that I would tell a joke and I would hear laughs and I would go into my next joke, but then I would hear laughs because the people were so far mm-hmm. away. It took so long for their fucking laughs to get to me. <laughs> it really threw me. And he said after the show, he said, I'm so glad you went first. That was weird to hear those delayed laughs. I was like, yeah, it was real weird. It was so real he used weird. you like a guinea pig. And then he got up there and he's like, all right, instead of a, a, a two count, we're doing a four count between our jokes or whatever. Yeah. You, you know what happened to that show? So it was a 4th of July show. He was filming it for a special. And so one of the bits for him at the beginning is he was going to have a guy parachute in. But, you know, one of those where he gets to do this and kind yeah. of like, and the guy was going to be dressed like Larry the Cable Guy. And he was going to land, run behind the stage, and then Larry, or Dan is his name, was going to run up. Mm -hmm. So the guy starts to parachute, and everyone's like, oh, look. And, you know, the pre-audio is coming on. Hey, everybody, this is Larry Cable Guy. I'm coming down to see you, or whatever it was. And we're standing behind stage, and we're watching this dude. And this was this dude's retirement jump. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. He was almost to his pension. And the wind picks up. And the dude who's who's part of his, you know, part of the parachute team go, I'm standing next to him and I just hear him go, oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, what? He goes, is he on comms, by the way, in the parachute? Did he hear that? Oh, no. Also, I that'd be terrifying. I don't think so. <laughs> There's nothing you can tell him that'll matter. You know what I mean? It's one of those. <laughs> the, the next thing he said out loud was, I don't think he's going to make it. <laughs> it's on YouTube. This dude crashed into the cement stadium seats. Oh, no. Oh, it was fucking crazy. Wait, this guy died? No, I think he was sick and dislocated his ankle. But he still the, was he to run backstage. We're, uh, we're so the show your could audio. Uh, we we really? just lost your audio there, Jack. Yeah, yeah. Would, you, would you say, what was it that... Uh... Oh, so, the bit was, the bit was that he had to run backstage, right? So Dan could run on yeah. stage. Of course. And the guy was fucking broke. broken coccyx, dislocated ankle, peeled himself off those stands, ran backstage. It was oh, amazing. Oh, God. Dude, I just watched it. That that guy hit the, the stands so hard. Well, well no, it wasn't from the sky. Yeah. Hey, what's your, yeah. is your, what's your coccyx? Is that your ass bone? That's your that's your tailbone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It One was, of the worst things to break, apparently, because like, how are you supposed to be comfortable in ever with that? I will say, jo- I, 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 Josh was being kind to that gentleman. He limped his way to the stage. <laughs> he was fucked up. I you know what would have been funny that. is if like he went back oh behind, God. like to the concession area, and then Larry came out limping as he was like, oh, Larry, oh, oh, Larry, man. Larry oh. should have faked the limp. That would have been good. That would yeah. have been good. Contact. Is Larry the cable guy still? I never hear about him anymore. Did he just make more money than God and then check out? Yep. He has made more money than God, and he still probably does 20 shows a year. I- I'll tell you something right now, man. I- I've met a bunch of people in this business, and say whatever you want about him. Nicest guy I've ever met in this business. Generous yeah. to a fault to his friends and his family and his openers. And just a solid, solid dude. And would do an hour and a half every night for his fans. And had something crazy like 310 punchlines in his set. It was just a... Even if you hated his show and you're like, I'm only going to laugh at 50% of his jokes. That's 155 <laughs> yeah, so Out of just that, uh, that blue-collar comedy tour, he was not my favorite. Because obviously he's kind of playing to the lowest common denominator. He's for the dumb rednecks, and I'm more of a fancy Bill Ingvall kind of guy. <laughs> like, ah, like, yes, actually, <laughs> intelligent. Uh, you, you really think no, that more Ron White? Guy? Honestly, um, I, 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 uh, was... I always Ron was my favorite. Jeff Foxworthy, obviously, I remembered those Jeff Foxworthy. You learn something from kids. <laughs> Yesterday, I learned you can put eight boxes of raisins in a cassette player. Yeah. <laughs> like I still remember listening to those jokes as a kid, like a little kid, um, and all of his Christmas albums and stuff. So Larry Ron was out, honestly my least favorite of them, but I love that whole thing that that blue collar comedy tour. Ron White is painfully funny. I, I don't know this off the top of my head, 
And when people talk about the greatest comics of all time, you know, they're skewed. But I would bet you out of the top 20 comedy albums of all time, not downloaded, but comedy albums bought. Sure. If you count Blue Collar, Foxworthy, and Cable Guy, my bet is they have ooh, eight out of the top 20 would be my bet. I bet, I you, would... I bet you Sandler's number one. I bet you his album is number one. Huh. Which I, I just uh, I know yeah. that their crowd, their audience in particular, like uh, the blue collar crowd, buy shit. They yeah. buy shit, and that not just di- not usually digital shit. They'll buy. A they got CD players. They got That's cassette right. players. <laughs> 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 you better sell some cassettes because they'll buy them. Um, so I I believe it. I, I believe they sold a, a a fucking metric shit. They get they cassette kept going players fixed. I think they made a movie, you know, like I know that Larry made several movies that I just couldn't watch. Um, Dude, but he was Mater in Cars. That's right. Yeah, I don't watch any animation, really. That's for children. I have I not have seen Cars, but I know that's a huge movie. Yeah. 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 Huge. I've heard Mater, though. I saw like that character that that fucking he's the truck. He's the redneck, rusty ass truck. Yeah. And he's got obviously Larry's cable guy voice. It's I, I do know that. A great writer, old school jokes, set up punchline, set up punchline, right? There aren't a whole lot of people doing it, but like Sam Morell's doing it now, Mark Norman, those guys are kind of more old school, but Cable Guy was the only guy for a long time doing it. And man, so good to his fans, he'll shake every hand, take every picture, just a solid dude, solid, solid I, re- dude. I remember watching Blue Collar Comedy Tour when I was young, and- Loving Larry the most because I was like a young guy and I thought he his whole character was funny. Like even at that age, I was like, this is obvious. He's not really a cable guy. Like he's being silly. And but I like I was maybe like 13. And every time they'd be sitting on like the four stools and it was Jeff Foxworthy's turn to like start riffing. I'd be like, fuck, man. Like, give it to the drunk guy or pass it back to Larry. <laughs> like, like can, <laughs> Billingville and Jeff Foxworthy can both just saunter on backstage. Like, this is like what 13-year-old me wanted, is I wanted the yeah. high energy of Larry the Cable Guy and the smug fuck you of Ron White together. I'll tell you something else about Cable Guy. Don't play wiffle ball with him. That dude is a fucking master. <laughs> that is, okay that, that, i'll keep that in mind next time we hang out i won't challenge him yeah don't challenge him then he will kyle you next. love wiffle ball yeah, <laughs> Me too, dude. I, that's why i gotta keep it quiet it would crush my dreams of being a pro <laughs> <laughs> i can't i can't lose to the cable guy wiffle, i haven't played wiffle ball in forever but that's a really? really uh that's a really embarrassing sport to whiff on so i think it's come back or maybe i'm just misunderstanding what i'm watching because oh, i watch these out. baseball youtubers and they're able to put this they play this game where they throw they play wiffle ball basically but they're putting so much spin on the goddamn ball it's really hard to hit and uh i don't know professional high level wiffle ball is definitely too hard for me because the, the ball is moving crazy amounts because it's- high level anything is too much for me like you watch people you watch <laughs> oh, come people do on things that you feel like semi-competent in a game you play an activity and then no, you, just you got get, a like, couple with reality you got a what couple. can you do at a high level taylor High level impressions, high level podcasting. You look like you probably do high level shoulder presses, just like maybe a one shoulder exercise. You look like you would nail one yeah. shoulder exercise. But then if I go to the gym and I try to do my my epic overhead press, there's going to be some giant who mogs me and makes me feel like a silly man. Well, there's always a high. There's always like the the peak of the highest level, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think aspiring to be the lowest in the higher levels is really where you want to be. You know, you're never like a target. No one's going to be aggro lifting at you or anything because yeah. you're not the biggest guy. That's what we're doing with the podcast world. The, the is it hard for you? Lowest right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> has it, has, is that hard for you, Harley? Because I bet people look at you and they, they, they get an idea. It's like, oh, big, tough, scary guy. Yeah, undercover it's like cop. Sometimes I want to be fucking tender and emotional and shit I honestly i remember the year when i was like uh like you know i did the the whole youtube thing and had a persona you know what that's like and then i was just like i'm just gonna show everyone me guys i've been collecting action figures and i like to take these cool pictures of, the, of them and like uh 70 of the people were like you're gay shut up <laughs> i thought you were cool now i know yeah. that you collect dolls 
You're I thought all Denver. you did was telling <laughs> Jack <laughs> Daniels and put bacon in women's assholes. What are you Holly, doing? Were you on a show that I hosted for Discovery for Shark Week? Oh my God, he you were on from- that? I hosted that <laughs> show, dude. I, and so I I came in like fucking wasted, eh? Yes. I think I was banned from TV after that for a bit. Yes. I was like negotiating stuff with Discovery, and they're like, "Let's put that boy on ice a little bit." <laughs> so, so they were like, like, "Let's test run it." Uh, okay, that that was so. Okay, man, this is like 2012, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And uh, it was like full crew epic meal time, and I honestly I, I remember we made I, I was wasted when I got there. We were all wasted, and I think I like even pep talked to him. I was like, guys, we go out there, just do whatever you want. I think it was live, right? Was it live? Yeah. Yeah. I do whatever you want. I was like, let's just want. like go crazy. I think it would have been strategically would have been better today because people would have been like running clips on youtube a bit yeah. mm-hmm. but back then discovery was like yeah this is like crazy this energy is like fucking like <laughs> really crazy you were uh, definitely shit faced yes yes it was a it was a blur but like <laughs> you were sitting right next to me yeah oh i was the host yeah that was my <laughs> <laughs> well, it was well, his show it? you ruined is what we're trying to say here harley this well, is what this tonight's about that was like a special thing it was right wasn't it like a special i uh, want to tell you i loved it now the the, the <laughs> The network people were like, what the fuck was that? I'm like, that was great TV is what that was. <laughs> that was amazing. Is yeah, like, I mean, we had more dudes like that guy we were We were chill, right? <laughs> it was amazing. Well, no, but like you it and was- I, we were chill, right? Oh, we didn't have, we didn't exactly. fight on, we didn't fight on set. And and let me ask you another question. Tell Kyle, tell Kyle we hit it off, you and I. We, we hit it off. <laughs> let me ask That's you another good. question. That's Molly. good. I think, I think better of you now. Did we ever, because I was on... A show I was writing on a show called che- called Chelsea Lately at the time, and I was trying to get you on the show. Did you ever get on that show? No, I didn't. I didn't get on that, but I uh, I remember this being a thing that had floated around a, a bunch, and I was always down for everything. Yeah, I know. Like my rule was like, if anyone called me to be on something, I'd be like, yeah, let's go, and we would go and do it. Uh, that yeah. Discovery Shark Week thing was huge. That was like, it was kind of like after I was like, whoa, we were, what did we do? I was like crazy that day. And we went on and like, I just, it's, you unlocked like such a memory. Cause like, how sad is that? That like, I was on TV and I'm like, (laughs) I'm just gonna like, you know, when you have like a fucked up night and you delete your snap stories or whatever, you're like, I'm never going to think about that again. (laughs) I did that for something that was supposed to be really special. Uh, But I went a little crazy, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 2012, was, 11 years ago, you were the sauce boss leaning in. I just wish I remembered it. It was great TV, <laughs> dude. It was great TV. I'm sure it's recorded. Don't I, worry. Yeah, I want to. I want to. What was so like? What was Harley doing? Just like, oh, get a load of this shark. Do you know what, dude? I might have it. I mean, That'd I know sick. I have. I have all I remember standing shows. a lot and like moving move, we were we were everyone was standing and moving and it was kind of like a, everyone sit down and it's a and like we were, we had a chum bucket we had like it was like a human chum That's or right. something like that and uh yeah that was that was crazy were you riffing like were you were you up there like you know what's funny about sharks they're the opposite of us i like the great white shark they're only seven percent of the sharks i was like cringe obnoxious 20. (laughs) no i was like fps russia's best bud character so i was like we got these fucking sharks well, you better put the on them. Like, you know, I was just like. <laughs> 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 you're so drunk, you're like hitting the classics over and over. It's just like, it was. It was classic time. Bacon. I literally, it was like classic was now. Like, I was like, this is right. This is the right yeah. thing to be. <laughs> well, you were, here's the thing is that the it, what I loved about Discovery is every episode, they let me book somebody. And I remember watching you and I was like, this dude is going to be so good live. And they were like, how, how are you going to be able to control him? I'm like, I don't think I will be, but that's going <laughs> to be great. That's going to be great. It was, we had the, there, there was a show called moonshiners on too, for a little bit. Yep. And so we had the moonshiners guys on that. They, they were my guests too. And I was like, Hey, let's have them bring moonshine on and ask them, what moonshine they would pair with like a nice salmon. Yeah. <laughs> and so we set up these fancy dishes of food and we had this dude named pickle come in <laughs> and, 
and he would pair his peach moonshine. He's like, this is probably good with a steak. But but uh, but I loved having guys like Harley on because, you know, he, he's alive and awake. And that's what you need for live TV. You need somebody who's going to take the screen mm. and go, okay. Mm. I, I always like, I loved uh, the, the times that we did get to do something like in traditional media, something like that. Like, so it, it was always so cool because there's so many people putting it together. But I'll just, it reminds me of this time that I was at on set. It was uh, Ridiculousness, um, the Rob Deerdeck like clip show. Yeah. And I'll never forget, I was in there. And like, no disrespect to a- anyone. Everyone there was actually uh, really cool and nice. And it was fun. And the show was yeah. great. But I, uh, we were, I was in the writing room. And there was a lot of funny writers there. A couple of them who I, I own, I had like their stand up bit like downloaded on my phone. Like, it was just cool seeing them like riff jokes and they all wrote jokes for for rob and then he would come in and hear the jokes and so like they showed a clip and one of the writers was like and then you'd be like uh something something or if that's a something something and he's everyone laughs it was a good joke and we're like that's funny and then rob's like "Mm, i'm just gonna go what (laughs) and and they're all like oh that's good too yeah 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 and then like we watch the show and the clip plays and rob's like what and the crowd's like yeah (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, it was just a funny, the whole circumstance of that coming together was beautiful to see the sausage being made in that sense. Yeah. That's amazing. You know, it's funny. <laughs> Some what? people just know just, their audience. Just slaying with what? Just it was like, a good joke. The guy had a great joke and it was very funny. I was like, trying not to laugh too hard because I didn't want to disrupt. Mm-hmm. And Rob's like, nah, I'm just going to be like, what? <laughs> and Rob was right, actually. And that's why he was 15 shows on MTV. You want to hear something funny? Um, when I was in prison, we watched that show all the time. They'd show the reruns. Like, it'd be a block of ridiculousness. So you'd see 12 mm-hmm. of them in a row. That's all they play on MTV. Hotel yeah. style. It's like that on the so hotel. your episode or... comes on, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say a goddamn thing. They wouldn't believe me anyway. They wouldn't you, believe me anyway. You didn't try and I talk yourself left. up? Like, you see I that cooking fucking... guy? He's my I good buddy. I would take a piss and think about how I'd gotten to where I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. That, like, that is like very kyle thing to do in my brain as much as i know i was like if that comes on getting because even then even if you're like i know that guy if i were in jail i'd be like fuck that guy (laughs) i'd be like i don't give a fuck about that guy i'd ask you a question first i'd be like what does everyone think of that guy they wouldn't believe me like really you know that guy the guy in ridiculousness aren't you in (laughs) cell block three (laughs) with the (laughs) pedos harley did they did the writers also write jokes for you, or did you have to come in with your jokes? They uh, didn't write any jokes for me on that, but there's a show called At Midnight that was on Comedy Central where you stand there, and it was like the Chris Hardwick like uh, guess. It was a show, but we knew all the questions before. Yeah, and uh, you sit down and uh, like with uh, we, I sat down with a the writer there. Everyone did, and we just like you spend like two hours writing the answer you're comfortable doing. Um, and it's great because you get like you know a talented dude who's sits there and like kind of comes up and you and like it could be funny but you might be like i i can't say that joke i'm not funny like that and then they say something you're like well, i'm just gonna be like what and you find your you find your own what you find your voice yeah. <laughs> that's how we did it on on chelsea too we would like you'd go sit down with somebody who was on the show and you'd have jokes and they probably came in with jokes too and you were like, do you need any jokes for this? Do you want to hear any jokes? Because we would sit in the writer's room yeah, and just yeah. have a whole list of jokes. And some, like, you would, we would write a joke and be like, nah, two out of three of the people on the panel couldn't tell this joke, but mm-hmm. fucking Harley could tell it. So we would earmark certain jokes because mm-hmm. we were like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it was, it was super cool. I'm with you. It was super cool to find people who knew their voice so well. Mm-hmm. But they were like, I can't tell the joke that way, but I can tell it this way and change mm-hmm. a word or two to make it fit their cadence. And their- my, my favorite yeah. is like uh, being in a group with people that you're kind of like, it's a funny day, a funny moment. Everyone's like, it's working. And it's always interesting when someone throws something out 
and what they say, you see another person be like, oh, and then they say something and you're like, I could kind of see how your brain got that from this, but that's still yeah. weird that you did that. You know, yeah. like it, yeah. I'd be a terrible joke writer. I'd be like, say this, but you have to do it as an Indian guy or it's not going to land. And <laughs> no, they'd be no, like, no. Once that's again, you, I'm not an doing a- this. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, that's, that's an AI like this, like are you on paper. But no, I think uh, I think you, Kyle, Woody, like if you sat down and wrote jokes, like if you oh, sat down and did that, like, yeah, you'd, you'd make some good. You guys, you guys would make I a think great stories are easier to write than jokes. I also but think so, you guys could write jokes, jokes for each joke. other. Yeah, dude, let's do a whole episode, Kyle, where we write each other's joke. People don't know this whole show is scripted. I write this every Wednesday night. What yeah. if you did a whole show where each one of you acted like another one of you? Damn, mm. that would be funny and a good way to bully. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this I, is a podcast, I, I, by I the way. I just anybody listen, I don't want to, this is so this is a podcast. What we do is we come here every week and record this sort of audio story and then we upload it to the internet for people. It's, we call it a podcast. It's our thing. Yeah, it's so I'm doing thing. Woody. It's so, this. Right, you go. <laughs> I know. I'm doing me. <laughs> wait, wait. I got. I got this. I got this, this. This thing of ours. Wait, I got one. Oh, here. Um, the chair spun. So That's just the Kyle this. exit. Just oh, how is it? <laughs> that was it's a good one. It's like you've qu- seen it's it. Always just a quiet. Of yeah, I'm trying to be professional. That's how a professional stands. It is. Up, it's very. It's ceremonial. Know. Like the. It's yeah. Always the same thing. Headphones off, placed here. It's because if I bump anything, I'm afraid the audio is going to get fucked up. Because I don't touch anything, but occasionally it's there's a buzz or a hum, and I'm genuinely scared that if I bump a wire or something, it's going to going to sound like shit. Dude, I got up from the show maybe a month and a half ago. And there was like a wire going across here that I hadn't plugged into something else. And I I think I barely got off camera before I had like a two or three step stumble and almost <laughs> fell down. And I was like, thank God you always <laughs> mute your microphone because obviously professionalism. But otherwise I would have heard like, oh, and then like almost <laughs> fall, like catching myself on the door br- a jam right there. That would have been humiliating. And no one would have ever known if I hadn't brought it up just now. But hey, that's okay. Kyle, mm. can I ask the question now about what I read on Reddit? Yeah, yeah. We were talking about this pre-show, yeah. but I was like, hang on, let's Good make call. this show topic. Save the gold. Okay. So on Reddit, I re- there was a apparently there's a woman who had nine months to live, and she asked her husband if he wouldn't mind if she had sex with her ex-boyfriend one last time because before she died, because that was the best sex she had ever had. And he was asking, do you think I should let her do it? And so for me, like, you know, what's crazy is I did ask two women and two women had the same answer. They were like, well, how do you know the guy would even want to? I'm like, that's such a woman answer. Because, of course, the guy's like, wait, she's dying? And she asked me to fuck her? Yeah, I'll do it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Make a wish foundation right here, baby. Yeah. What's her What's her, uh, What's her? her timeline? 11 months. Nine, All right, talk to me months. in four. Yeah. <laughs> but, but interesting because the guy was legit. Here's my take on it, right? It's your life. You got nine months. You get to choose. Now, don't cop out and ask me for permission. Mm-hmm. Don't because then if I say no, I'm the asshole. Yeah. Right? So she should if, have it's on? Want, if it's something you want to do, do it. I don't know how I'm going to react. I don't know if I'm going to want to spend the next nine months with you. Do they have yeah. kids? I, I don't know. I think uh, I didn't know that she had said the uh, the best sex of my life part, but I had seen this and I, I found it very a uh, very fascinating mental exercise. To consider uh it is a bit of a thought so, experiment it's so <laughs> like i i agree with you first of all like if i were her and i thought this over a million times the least selfish thing to do would be to cheat on my husband mm-hmm. and i like i know how that makes sense um, <laughs> I that. um 
It is. Because, like, once He's you right. tell him, like, I, I would just make sure he doesn't know, I guess, or something. Yeah. Um, but, telling like, him is a fuck you, I think. Yeah. yeah. Telling him is, uh, is funny because it's like, well, now you've done it. Now yeah. you've already done it. Like it's already now, over now. Like like the the penis going in your vagina is like thirty percent of it. Mm -hmm. The other seventy percent is like the weird shit my brain and my emotions are doing with like why did you want to do that? Who am I? Who are we? And like whatever, however any human would break that down. But you did. You took the seventy percent. It's like well, you stuck your finger in the cake already. Yeah. No one. You, know, you took I, a I, bite. Of, you I, took I would, a bite of the donut. Would, like, how about do you enjoy the donut? Here's my counter offer to her. Like, Honey, really? He was that good? Yes. You just have no idea. All right. Well, I'm gonna have him come over and he's gonna train me up, baby. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be working hand in hand with your ex boyfriend in the bedroom from now on. It he's might take a year. The lab coat on. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get there. <laughs> and like, man, my ex wife's gonna be so happy. If it really was about just that super orgasm that Ted can get her to have, then but she'd be oh, fine Ted. with that because because we get Ted in the bedroom with a lab coat on. He'd be like, no, no, yeah. Like lift your ass a little. Yeah, that's the stuff. That it. There's the angle, right, Becky? Yeah. See, that's how you make dreams come. Dude, I, I bet that that dude who got told that by his wife, I bet he Say obviously it. hurt, but oh, he probably was much less sad about her dying like a day <laughs> later because like he's he's prepping to be like. Oh my God, my wife, my my oh my whole world is changing. And then she clues him in that like I'm not even into this. And then he's like, so this is over whether or not she is. Yeah, like I'm gonna I, I'm going I'm going to Disney. I'm going. And to Disney. what happens if she miraculously makes it? Then I divorce her. Can I say it? Well, can I? I gotta say something. I none of you guys are thinking it, but I'm thinking it. You believe yeah. this bitch? No. I, I think it's a guy on a Reddit. No, I, no, I don't. No, no, I'm saying I don't believe this bitch for a second. You don't think she's sick, you, or you, th you don't no, think? No, no, I she, think she, she's sick. She just wants to bang Ted. She's sick, and she's actually going to die, and she's trying to retroactively relinquish her wrongdoings because she's on her way to heaven. So she's thinking, if you okay it now, well, then you would have okayed all of it. And when she gets up oh. to heaven, that's her negotiating chip. Ooh. Already, she's not asking on behalf of another guy. They talk still. A million percent they talk still. I'd be going of through course. that sick bitch's phone in a second. Uh, oh, Put the GPS tracker on her hospital bed. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing at St. John's again? <laughs> I, me, I don't trust I, it. I'm I walk away from the table like I'm in Vegas, and I'm like, if that's what you want, you got good luck, gentlemen. Do you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I don't know when you come back. I may be like, yeah, I don't really care. I, I really just I want think, to spend a lot of time with you. Or I, I might be yes. like, eat dicks. I think yeah, what I do I think is I'd I go say eat yes. Dicks. And then I take the proof of her cheating on me, use it to divorce her so that my insurance doesn't pay for her medicine that keeps the pain away anymore. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. actually I, 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 I'm similar to that angle. I would have been like, give me cash. How about literally, this? I I her, literally I give me all of, of your cash. Give me all your cash. Everything. You're not leaving oh, anything for Max. anyone. You took credit you Max, chose sir. you chose him. Does it yeah. say how long they've been married? Eight months. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> I want to know everything. I want to know where he lives. Like, Wait, what when was the last, when was get, last time she saw him? Attorney. You get power of attorney over her. And then mm -hmm. you convert your entire family Christian science. Now you're Christian scientist and you can't use medicine. Can Boom. we, for a second, though, talk about the ego boost that this other dude must have? Like dying chicks, their last wish is a little dick from David. Do you know Everyone what I'm wants to fuck him now. His dick stock <laughs> is through the roof now. Through the roof, but it causes kidding. cancer. So yeah, <laughs> that's that was the whole thing. He gave her HPV and killed her. <laughs> yeah, to kill her dick. Yeah, that, that dick is oh, sick. That that's infuses terrible. you with a um, huge cum and pancreatic cancer. No, it, I'm. I mean, look, it, you would imagine, I would imagine that an orgasm wouldn't be the thing you were thinking about when you got nine months to live, you know? Yeah. And, and we're men saying that. We're supposed to be the ones who are super, 
you know, about an orgasm. So, so looking down on her big time, I'm thinking, why aren't you? There's this um, what's that song? It's like uh, it's about a guy diagnosed with cancer um, and, and he's like started living then, you know, like, like my I, I don't know. I'd be trying to do some shit like what he's doing right now. What he's at Moab right now. He sent us this crazy video. What he's he dying? Wrote, he, yeah, every well, I mean, we all are, but he's just closer That's than true. any of us. Nine, uh, uh, he, yeah, sorry, go. He rode his dirt bike up to the top of this peak of a goddamn mountain in the desert in Colorado or wherever the fuck. It's crazy how high up he was. It, it was it was pretty neat. I don't know. If you know guys knew, if you knew you were there. nine months away, you're not like just in. Okay, first of all, I am ten thousand percent becoming religious nine months before I go. Just covering, really? yeah. Like what you're gonna not fuck that. Well, what are no, you doing? Gonna, are you doing a draft? Like, are you going to visit like a mosque and a you synagogue guys all say and like now, and try and pick to be the best? Or are you honest with myself? Yeah, but and which I think okay. I would. I, I don't know. I would have to. Well, like, are you, you all know, in on does, the one from birth? Does, like, yeah, I, listen, I I'm a Jewish would, guy. I'm Jewish guy. But like, I'm Jewish guy. God. Like, I, I'm going to I'm going to go see what the other gods are offering in the afterlife Islam, and which one I feel like Islam yeah. is the same God. No, I'm Islam's saying, if I hard. To Islam, Islam, that's Islam, hard. But I going to know. But you because I would never. It's, it's yeah. the same God. They don't think that they do think that they believe in Jesus. They just don't believe he's the son of God. That's the that's the whole part of Christianity. That's the whole thing. That's the New Testament. They're Old Testament, and the, the Jews are Old Testament with, with a twist. So like, we're, it's all it's all they're they're called Abrahamic religions for a reason. We all believe in the same God. So if you're gonna go somewhere else, we gotta talk about Buddha or fucking uh, what's that chick with all the titties and arms? Sure, it's, yeah, uh, go go visit all of them. Vishnu. But like, but like Vishnu. at the same time, like Islam always looked hard from the outside. I was always like, whoa, like they're mm -hmm. doing how many times a day and. I this is just nine months like you could be you could be Muslim for nine months. You have that in you. You serious guy. If you committed 100%. to something, I you'd be a great it. Muslim Aaron, in nine months. You could be you. deep within are the enemy's saying, council in nine months. <laughs> are, you, are you saying you're going to get religious just in case? I'm saying that if I knew like death was imminently approaching me nine months from now, I would like desperately want to believe something was going to happen afterward, but it would be very oh. tough to try and reconcile because, you know, belief isn't really a choice. You can't like force yourself and like strong arm it either do or you don't. And so you could, I don't know. I just, I'm trying to be honest with how scared I would be. Like I would be like turning to anything for sure. I, I would not be one of those guys who's like, whatever, bro, life is life. There's no suffering after you go. I'm like, oh, oh my God. Yeah, but those guys don't think it's over when it's over. Those guys think that we're all the same. And when you give me the up, scenario, you're living the exact, another living what disease? Thing's life. What's going to kill me in nine months exactly? Uh, pancreatic bullet. cancer. Fuck. All right. Pancreatic cancer. Good example. I picked something that, that you're not getting out of. Because I might be dead in nine months, but seven months from now, I'm not going to be feeling great. Six months mm -hmm. from now, I'm probably That's not right. feeling great. So there's so it's very important for me right now not to find an imaginary friend in the sky or experiment with, it, with somebody else's imaginary friend either. I you gotta suck make a the dick. Neck. Yes, so Honest, many. Let's get crazy, right? Because AIDS AIDS takes decades to chip away <laughs> at you. Who cares about these dirty loads? Let's have some fun. <laughs> dude, the last thing you do, dude, if religion's real, the last thing you're gonna be doing is sinning hard. I'm going to sin so goddamn hard, and I'm going to kill myself, Taylor. I'm letting you know. I'm going to go so X. If that X ever games, happens, I'll kill you. I'm wow. killing my... No, you no won't. Problems. I'll take you, you with me. You better kill yourself or you'll be dead. No, that I was a magnanimous offer. After this. I'll that take was, you with me. I was, I was making sure that, just in case it's real, I get in trouble for murder here's what I get in do. trouble for suicide. Here's, here's how I kill myself, though. I go I go um, parachuting, and uh, just at the end, like... <laughs> have like a whole snafu and pretend like I, I don't understand my parachute with the guy <laughs> by the door <laughs> and then leave it behind like nah this one's no good hang on to this and then jump out <laughs> just to just to look back at his scared face this is that one too is, heavy I chuckle the whole way just to, oh man yeah. I'm not carrying this all the, the way the, the last Bro, thing I, you do is is ruin a Super Bowl halftime show <laughs> like, that's, the, <laughs> that's the absolute last thing you do is you oh, kick, you kick Usher two feet to the sternum right off the stage everyone gasps and then you sweep dude, into I that sweet usher. black knight if i could impact usher with my body i would i would or you I ruin larry the cable guy show global again. news if i yeah, fucking fall out of the sky and kill usher i wouldn't do it to larry he's he's paid his dues with injuries from, from <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't take out larry no i would but but some other celebrity that i 
you know, don't really care about so much. That would be a real way to immortalize yourself. You know, I might get into lighting missile. fires. I will tell you, big one, Kyle. Yeah. There is something the to kind. parachuting, a, well, or jumping out of a plane and picking somebody's house you don't like and like crashing into their roof on fire. Like I'll light myself on fire right before I hit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> gotta piss yourself at that point. <laughs> Just be a, this, a terrible gonna, missile. Dude, my I'll roof is shattered. Myself. It's on fire. And it smells like myself. ammonia. I'm going to shit myself in the room where they explain how the parachutes work 30 minutes before we get on the airplane just to make everyone else very uncomfortable. I just don't care at this point. You know, it's the You're end. You're an inconsiderate dog. You got yeah. to bring a firearm and film one last FPS Russia video on the way down. Just take oh, out I'm five like, seconds. Take five seconds like, out of like your every, day. Every five seconds up in the plane, you're like, I can't take it anymore. And then you're just like, I got you guys. I got you. Uh, I, my fear. My it just fear. looks like you're, you're like standing at the door, like the wind's going like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Everyone's so scared. <laughs> you could, you could do a Kobe thing. You could I'll do take the, the old uh, the, pilot. <laughs> Remember the Bill Burr joke where you, you just you just go for the helicopter tour and hop out? You look up and you laughed and this, this guy just soars to his death. Yeah, I would want to make my death matter to me. I don't care what y'all fucking think. I want to do something neat that I think is neat. And I've always thought... Hey, that, kids, watch this. There you yeah. go. Look, you One, they'll remember you. To it. Remember when... Uh, What's the, the fucking the other guys movie where The Rock and uh, Sam Jackson are on the top of like a 15 story building? <laughs> he goes, you think of what I'm thinking? And The Rock goes, aim for the bushes. And they yes. jump off a 15 story <laughs> building to their death. <laughs> that's how the other guys begins. That is a that's, how, funny scene. that's how they get Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell into those. By the way, <laughs> what an underrated movie that is. Yeah, they call it a soup kitchen where a bunch of homeless guys have an orgy in a car. Yeah, you, <laughs> terrible, terrible. Oh. Dirty Mike and the boys. <laughs> Dirty Mike and the boys. <laughs> That's who it was. <laughs> thanks for, yeah, I've seen thanks for letting us use your fuck wagon. Dirty Mike and the boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry about the stains. <laughs> Great. I think I think my biggest fear would be like you know, there's an afterlife heaven. You get there and they're like, here's your sins, and there's like a list of them. Uh, and they're like, I can't believe you sucked all those guys' uh, dicks. We told you in the old book to not be so gay. Why would you do that? Uh, yeah. And I can't believe you put drugs in your ass all the time. And uh, you lied. And <clears throat> and we actually, we don't even care about any of that shit. Get in there. Get in there. Just dude. get in there. Why do they start talking yeah. about shrimp and fucking pork out of nowhere? They're and like, you think we... We're serving bakery now. Get in yeah. there. Like, they, they start asking you what your clothes are made out of, and it's like fucking multi fabric. The books are like denim it was and polyester. A prank. We don't care about that shit. Anymore. It was like, a I prank. Am. We didn't think people would follow the rules for thousands my, of years. My so I'm Jewish, right? And I married a Catholic girl, and so we were trying to find a rabbi who would marry us, and um, we were at a Christmas party, right? And uh, I, I was talking to this woman whose house it was. She was like, actually, there's a rabbi here. And I go, where? And she goes, he's actually kind of progressive. And she's looking around. And she goes, there he is. And I was like, the guy eating ham? And she was like, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> so Dude, I walk up king. to him and I go, hey, man. And he goes, hey, I'm Rabbi Brian. I go, hey, Rabbi Brian. Rabbi I go, Brian. <laughs> yeah. And I go, oh. I go, is that ham? He goes, it is delicious, right? And I was like, yeah, you're my guy. You're my fucking <laughs> is it harder to find a rabbi who will do it than like a Catholic priest who will do it? Or are they both like, no, you need, you have to do our religion? Well, my wife knew a Catholic guy, a priest who would do it. It was also hard because we were doing it on Saturday before sundown. So it was like a double whammy for this. Yeah. For the, we, we called him the inappropriate rabbi. Because the next time we saw him, he was dirty dancing with his Catholic wife at a karaoke bar. And I'm like, look at this fucking guy. Yeah, the fucking Rabbi Brian. <laughs> hey, Rabbi Brian. Man. I like that the guy. The most Jewish thing about Rabbi Brian is the scam he's running. <laughs> <laughs> the most Jewish thing about Rabbi Brian is he's not even Jewish. Rabbi Brian is redheaded, <laughs> just clearly Irish Catholic, but he's it unbelievably he's uh, freckles. He's very miserly. We, so people we loved Rabbi Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was my kind of rabbi. He we got married in New Orleans. 
he opened the wedding with shalom y'all and i was like i love this guy <laughs> new orleans <laughs> is the best uh, like that's i i mean that's my favorite cuisine like oh, that's yeah? my Great. favorite just the food like I, I i went to wrestlemania in uh new orleans and just every meal i had there i was like i always knew I always knew this cuisine and I always had it here and there, but I never had it here. Yeah. And it was, it was just, it was the best food. It's I mean, the place very was good. very scary actually also. Thank uh, you. Yeah. But <laughs> we're about to shit delicious. on New Orleans. Buckle up. So, so I, 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 I've been there. I used to drive to the West coast constantly to blow shit up and I'd have to go through New Orleans and I'd make my stops there. Uh, and you know, fuck, like, eh? And fuck. Yeah. Oh, hey, like, Kyle. Yeah. 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 And, um, Oh, it's just such a sewer. It's such a sewer of a fucking city. The people there are such trash. And the people who come there to like have fun are trashier Me. than the trash red Me. residents there. I, They're like, I you know what's fun? Go- New Orleans. Anybody who says that is just gross. I was just there for WrestleMania, <laughs> WrestleMania and then I ate everything. Yeah. It's did I mention, food is, the food's very did good. I, did I mention we got married there and my wife is from Louisiana? <laughs> oh, nice. oh, she's beautiful. from bourbon street that's where yeah. she's like, the, the part that kyle's talking about <laughs> I, yeah, I just, just every time i've gone just, it's just piss in the streets and horse shit in the streets and it's, it's like a mid, it's like medieval fucking times there are harlots in the street with their nasty titties out there's dudes pissing everywhere in the streets there's women pissing in the streets there's horse shit that has turned that. to a, a, a different substance because it's mixed with beer and piss and it's just smeared everywhere and everybody's so goddamn poor that as soon as somebody starts throwing a little money around, everybody breaks out and fights each other over ones. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, but those beignets, oh my God. They're really beignets. good. <laughs> yeah, I want some jambalaya. Cafe du Monde beignets are the best. Yeah. If what is a beignet? Get the people out of that city. It'd be great. A little fat, little fat donut. Oh, a fat little donut? Okay. A little I fat donut. Like, like, are they fried? Like, it's like tight. Yeah. I it's think they fry they fry like biscuit dough and then they dust it with um powdered powder sugar. Yeah, yeah like powder. uh like a churro oh, yeah. style kind of. I like it like that, like cinnamon uh sugar yeah like mixture. I like how they have the most well, they and West Virginians seem to have the most unique accents regionally as far as difficulty of understanding them to like I'll use myself as an example. Being from St. Louis, I have a perfect Midwest accent. Everyone can understand what I'm saying in this whole country. That's why all the newscasters nothing are from the Midwest. Voice. Nothing voice. A nothing voice. Totally forgettable. But I don't know. It's guys, a little pretentious and nasally. Well, it was. The, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I really like the the unique corners of accents. And it seems like New Orleans and West Virginia are the two most. Quebec intense. also. Like even yeah. Yeah. even to French people, like Quebecers, they're like, what the? Like XQC. You guys know XQC? Like just the way that's. That's the way they talk out here. That's uh, it's not attractive, a sexy, or sophisticated to me. There's something about there's uh there's an actress in a show, a terrible show that I watch. She's French Canadian, but they make no mention of it. But every now and then, I hear her accent on some words. She's cleaned it up most of the way, but I'm just like, Ugh. it's like when a Boston lady says a thing. It's just a gross fucking. Not a fan of that. Very attractive on the women other hand, though. Is, they got attractive women though. Of course, like, I yeah, love Boston like, accent. You I'll love it? With that. That's where I'm from. I'm from Massachusetts. Hada. See, you, Hada. You have a, like, yeah, sometimes the, the Boston accent is so much that it's like you're trying to be bothersome. Like you're you're I being never, you're you're being never. annoying. No I feel one like says that. Way with some like that. some you know, New little, York some New York little. accents, I feel like that. I'm like, really? Hey, eh? you're really you're really from New York. Go away. It's like, yeah. Some people yeah. I'm like, nah, they're playing that up. Just pre- mm-hmm. some gay men like some gay exist. men i'm like it's yeah. not that high your voice this everyone can fight back against the accent look at kyle from the south there you go speaks absolutely perfectly look My at josh from boston lot, lot sounds different. like a normal human not even from boston yeah, yeah that's true well I'm western mass so we don't really have an act too much of an accent on that side if you did would you be looked down upon in western mass yeah like the school you went to if there was some kid there that sounded like fucking mikey mike <laughs> no i don't think so and by the way that that you can even be in boston and not have that accent it's a sure, pretty that's a that's a low-class accent it's low-class boston accent yeah it's not low-class but it is come on you know it is 
<laughs> we had someone, Kyle, do you remember the person? We had someone in our Patreon with like That's the right. thickest Boston accent ever. Do you remember like yeah. months and months ago? And like yeah, when he started one. talking for the first time, I was just like, like that's that's unreal. You've been like sitting on that the, this whole is. time in this Discord, yeah, typing just, shit out with a voice like that. Yeah, <laughs> I've been taking Come you seriously. <laughs> wow. I took your stock tips. What the fuck? I, I gotta make a call. I feel yeah, like I would trust a Boston person with stocks. Those Northeasterners, they know fucking, I love our hangouts because every now and then there'll be a real freak in there, and of course nobody picks on anybody in there, not in <laughs> jokey ways, like fun stuff. But you'll see a freak. Right, I don't even want to say what was wrong with this person because there's only one of them. Anyway, well, then don't guy, no, the no I'll, I'll type it in here though, so that we can privately mock the the, the wonderful fan. Yeah, that's um, that's what you want to do. But, but yeah, this fucking yeah. ghoul. You know this, who you are. Yeah, this fucking ghoul was in there, and Ooh, I don't I was, like those either. He just typed dude, it in. You should have seen him. Um, he was one of the. Re it was crazy. He was otherworldly, and I'm staring I don't want at him. To. And someone types to me, like another participant types to me. And they go, are you staring at the blankety blank? And I'm like, yes, I can't stop looking. It's so upsetting to look at him. It's, and we said, it's Kyle, it's time. called a black guy. <laughs> I actually I mean, didn't I, even I didn't even read what it was. <laughs> no, you didn't look at them, huh? they're, they're hard to look at. <laughs> oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, I don't like mm. that. I've never, <laughs> I've never I've never seen one of them. No, oh, bro. You know, if I were listening right now at home, I'd be like, "I'm fucking DMing all of them. Someone's gonna tell me what the fuck they're talking about." Someone's gonna yeah. tell me what kind of person. All the yeah, Patreons will get to know. I've never, <laughs> I've never seen one. Um, I've I've only seen one midget. Yeah, Kyle person. claims Kyle claims this, and I find that yeah. unbelievably hard to believe. I've seen easily a dozen midgets in my life, easily. And in, in person, I'm I'd say, uh, yeah, I'd in say person, half, in person, I'd say half like, I've dozen. walked by probably a dozen or so. Saw the one, oh, saw the yeah, one, that you, that's it. I'm How many so, have you seen? Me? Yeah. I, I couldn't even put a number on it. He are does you, shows. What are you fucking playing Baldur's show, Gate 3? Where are you seeing all these little people? Little, yeah, you know, like he's you, off the front. He sees more people than us. There was one time I was in, uh, was either Bozeman or Billings? or Butte, Montana, one of the bees. And there was a table filled with little folks right in the front row. And I I started, man, I started about five minutes in, and then I was like, listen, I got to – I gotta address the tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a table, and <laughs> it was crazy. At one point after the show, I was sitting down at a table with some friends, and a dude walked over and kind of climbed up a chair, stood on the table, and walked across the table to me. I'm like, "This isn't real life, right now. Is this real life? Is this happening?" And he just sat down in front of me, and I was like, "We had a couple beers." But yeah, I travel a lot though, dude. I travel a lot, a lot. But if he's got to be at least a hundred, at least. Yeah, right? maybe you, maybe I got thirty because I may have walked by a table, and been like, "That's just a table of people," and I'm not gonna think about this or remember this or look at it. Just a table. No, if I just seen a one, table of people. I'm telling you, if I lay eyes on one, it's halfling a, it's a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude they love it when you go young master Frodo. Yeah, they, they love that <laughs> Marianne Brandybuck and Peregrine Took they, they love that like when you go like to, to talk to him Brad you know, Williams gate, you'd have less mobility Brad, Brad Williams who's a, an incredibly funny comic right you guys know Brad oh, I think yeah, I've Brad seen him Williams. Brad talks about how he's pretty sure Dinklage is the king of the group. Mm -hmm. The little folk. Yeah, yeah and that everybody yes. kind of acknowledges that. And I was yeah. like, huh, I guess. I mean, if you had to anoint one of the little people king, I guess Dinklage. It used to be, it used to be Mickey he's from the Seinfeld, the, 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 yeah. the, the, that guy. I felt like he was the one I knew the best. Yeah. Oh, no, never mind. It's the... The one that's in all the fantasy stuff. He's that did the Star Wars. Um, he, he's the Warwick one Davis. Oh, 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 Warwick oh, Davis. Uh, Warwick Davis. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. That guy he does that cheese. super funny show with Carl Pilkington. Yeah, that's, that's a good. I so, hate yeah, the parts we, uh, where they put him in it though. I didn't know that they. It's in, like, uh, those seasons. 
<laughs> I didn't know that they're doing a lean into a being White. ridiculous, you little fuck. Don't act like you're talented. They're doing that Snow White <laughs> Seven Companions thing. And yeah. Peter yeah. Dinklage was uh by the way, Dinklage. I feel like if I were a little person, I would be like changing my name to Donklage. Like I'm not gonna be <laughs> yeah. a Dinklage. Dinklage sounds like uh, a little person name, in. you know? I yeah. feel like, yeah, Peter Donklage. Great. I think I'd switch it up. It plays yeah. in. I like it. I I also bet that Dinklage I, I mean, I don't know if it's true. Like, I wonder proportion dick wise if they well, because they're they're muscular dudes generally. I wonder yeah. if, if proportion dick wise what we're talking about. I'm gonna. I bet it over. depends because because uh, Peter Dinklage is a dwarf, which means that his he ha- his head is a normal sized head. Yeah, and his Brad, torso Brad, and everything else is smaller, and so Brad I imagine had a, he has a normal sized penis. Yeah, Brad said Brad had a bit where he said that like yeah, you know, like a uh, six inches isn't a big dick at all, you know, but like it's an average sized dick. It's pretty, it's doing pretty good, but not really. It's not good. It's mm-hmm. just a, but uh, you know, he's like I said, uh, my dick is six inches and it hangs down that to my knees. <laughs> <laughs> like I made a halfling in uh in in Baldur's Gate three, and he's got a circumcised dick, and the dick's there. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's my cock, but it's on a on a on a halfling. Yeah, <laughs> like See, looks I'm terrible, like, looks terrible on me. Man, I've got a rock got gnome like shoulder proportion, like a, like a Dorito, like a V with his back. I bet my rock gnome lady would love your uh, your circumcised halfling man. Well, it's be- the only thing he does is like I don't even fight people. I keep saying this is the Star Trek game I've always wanted because I just walk up to like uh, goblin camps and I'm like circumcised dick out. I'm like, I'm just here to talk. I'm just here to talk. I'm like I'm there alone. You know, I play the bongos by the fire at night. Yeah. That game's, this game's phenomenal. It's Dungeons and Dragons, basically, but in a video game. Yep, and the yep. things you could do are you're like you're it's you've never had such a sandbox with limitless options or things to do. Uh, you know? Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> it's pretty insane. About uh, Peter Dinklage, that like Snow White and the Seven Companions, which is fucking retarded sounding. Yeah. Like him coming out and saying like. I can't believe they're still using dwarves in these sorts of roles. And it's like, like that's unbelievably shitty to do to other dwarf actors. Wait, I thought like, he was. He's I already thought he, got Game wait, of Thrones I thought he money. said he that. Established. He, he I, said I, that. He's, no, he's, I thought he was like, on the, I thought he was like, why didn't they do seven dwarves and cast seven dwarves? Why are they doing seven companions? Cause they're doing like, I think that's what it is. And, and I thought, and it was pretty interesting if, if, are you looking it up? I'm looking at Taylor up. knows I'm always on a hot streak of being wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, he said, literally, no offense to anything, but I was sort of taken aback. He said they were very proud to cast a Latino actress as Snow White. But you're still telling me the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Take a step back and look at what you're doing here. It makes no sense to me. You're progressive in one way, but you're still making that fucking backward story about seven dwarves living in a cave together. Have I done nothing to advance the cause from my soapbox? live in the cave. I guess I'm not loud enough. Yeah. They lived how in, that in the house. They worked in the cave. It's a mine, not a cave. A and, mine. And how a about this? Not, not every dwarf is getting the same amount of work as you, Dick. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Uh-huh. I thought I thought he was saying, why didn't they uh, cast seven uh, dwarves? Uh, you got seven companions. What about seven dwarves? And I was like, come on, bro. You, the one guy in the last 20 years, yeah. you're going to act like there's six other options out there? You killed the game, <laughs> yeah. Peter. You killed That's it so for shit. everyone. It's like, hey, I, I'm pulling the ladder up after me. I got famous for being a dwarf in all my roles on Game of Thrones and Elf. and being I, He's an angry elf. And then this opens up for other dwarves who are less known, because obviously you can't take Peter Dinklage and put him in a movie like that. He's too famous. He'd, he'd overshine all the rest of the cast of the dwarves. And now it's like, oh, okay, well, I guess we're not going to uh, – I guess six dwarves, seven dwarves, they don't, they don't get a job now. By the way – I mean, I'm sure that the other dwarves are sick of playing Leprechaun and Elf every year. Oh, they, but that's yeah. what he was saying, actually. He was like... Uh, uh, but they would rather work than have no work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, like, that's why it's if that, like... If those uh, are the parts coming in. If you're a dwarf, you're going to get roles that are... Yeah, hey, buddy, like you jumped on that. Tyrion pretty fucking fast. Yeah. <laughs> you jumped on that pretty fast with dragons and stuff, but... <laughs> yeah, there's no problem there. Like that's, but that's it's interesting. Re- you can't like, uh, and I, I don't know. Like, I mean, you can, but uh, like, if a show had, uh, 
I can't think of a show, and I, I guess it, it it could be normal. Like I wouldn't care if the show was good, but like if a show had a a person who was a Siamese twin, and it was not like, and it just wasn't. It was just casually and like you know, like you a would, real one. Yeah. Well, you can't cast not a real one. Well, they did well, that. They, there was no season they, of American Matt Horror Damon Story, and, right? Uh, what was that movie with Matt Damon? And uh, the one where he's on his knees. Gary the Oldman was on his knees. Attached. Oh, I thought you were talking about when Gary Oldman is on his knees, that Matt McConaughey movie where he plays a little person, Gary Oldman, tiptoes. You ever see I'm that? Never oh, seen. I'm going to blow your mind right now. There's a movie out there where Gary Oldman acts alongside Peter Dinklage. And Gary Oldman is on his knees with his shoes on his knees, Bring up playing a, still a little person the whole movie. No, and that's a full movie wow. that so exists he went out there. Full dwarf face. Bro, it's Gary Oldman. He fucking killed it too. I bet he acted so much better than Peter Dinklage. That Peter Dinklage was there, like you son of a bitch. Peter Gary Dinklage Oldman. looked. He looked. Peter Dinklage looked ten feet tall next to him. The way Gary Oldman. That's was when Disney flipped this. the switch. Gary Oldman went down to his height and owned him. I bet it was just What's like. What's the name of the that movie? Tip, tippy toes or tip toes. Yeah. That's Tip awful toes. name for the movie, too. No That's terrible. shit. Yeah. It's about Got to pull up the trailer, guys, and check it out if you're listening at home. What? <laughs> <laughs> Look at his arm. His arm is so long. Their arms are never that long. His arm is so long. <laughs> his forehead's too little. That's not the shape of the head. Yo, the, you're right. the, arm, the arm is blowing. <laughs> Look at that. The, the arm couch. is blowing my mind. The, uh, the length of his arms, are is, it's blowing my mind. Because what's so crazy is Gary's acting like his arms are short. So that's yeah. why he's got the jacket in because he's acting like his arms are short also. Yeah. He's a creepy What year is this? What year is this? Yeah. A, a year where they really bl- had to block it out immediately. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like it couldn't exist because everyone's careers were. Holy shit. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's, uh, mm, he's got like, uh, like puppet legs. Yeah, like, he's, he's, he's in a couch. Like, like, he's hello, standing. Hello, hello, no, he's standing in a couch right now, and those are fake legs popping yeah, up. And half his body's in the couch. Tim Conway yeah. used to do that character, Dwarf. Do you guys, have, any of you remember that? Dwarf, no. His whole character was, he was on his knees, and um, it was like, and they had put shoes on his knees, basically. But it was a comedy sketch it wasn't an actual oh this is a real movie they were dead serious about it <laughs> dead serious and he's there acting the whole time i'm watching that 100 percent. of course because you just have to watch every scene that peter dinklage is in it and also very offended that he didn't get the lead <laughs> <laughs> he's probably like look at this fuck this is ridiculous peter dinklage can say what he want he did that 15 years ago and he's like now i get to say something fuck yeah. tiptoes <laughs> <laughs> <Fuck Jim Jones. laughs> I'm blown away at that. I've never seen that movie before. Yeah, never they did heard a job. Of that Someone before. did their job really well at making sure we didn't. Good job. Uh, yeah. Good. To find a movie Kyle hasn't heard of is unbelievable. Did not know that existed. Um, well, it's not a good one. A movie so. like that with Gary Oldman. He's a real deal actor. Uh, Man, that's got to be discouraging to like go out for a dwarf role as Peter Dinklage in 2003. I think that's like around the same time as Elf, maybe a bit after Elf. So he had some success and be like. I'm the only dwarf here, and there's only two dwarfs. No, roles. worse. It was like, all dwarfs. This is great. And then you get beat out by a normal size <laughs> guy with like fucking uh, Adidas taped to his kneecaps. It's all. It was all little people in that room looking at their scripts, waiting to be called in. And then Gary Oldman walks in. He's like, "Sup, pussies?" Yeah. <laughs> he's like, "You're like, not trying to audition me." You didn't see what I did with Dracula? You don't think I could be a little person? Oh, but he's still <laughs> Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman went straight method acting. He walked into that audition on his knees. I cut my fucking legs off. Tell me I won't. Yeah, I'll get the surgery. I'll get shortened. I'll get that reverse Chinese leg lengthening. I'll have my legs shortened. Yeah. That is, I can't wait to watch that. I'm going to get so high. You're going to have such a that. bad night. Love it. You're going to have such you. a bad night. Look at this. <laughs> That's a Patricia Arquette. Hey, that's a real a, one. That's a, that, he, he's a real dwarf. You can tell because I've seen him stand. Patricia and Arquette his forehead. Is proof that that you. Oh, this is terrible. Woman. Oh my god. This, this is amazing. Shot. By the way, he's got crazy. And, and a legit he's riding a motorcycle. He can't even that's reach like the. Kate Beckinsale's in that. Yeah. 
And I mean, that's I, Patricia Arquette. Kate Beckinsale's only done movies that her husband made. <laughs> imagine you made this movie. Everybody and, thinks of her as a movie star. It's because her husband made a whole bunch of movies and put her in it. Yeah. yeah. Imagine you made this movie and you did it. You did all this, and it was like, and and Gary Oldman was like, "I'm gonna do the knee thing," and you're like, "All right, yeah, it's Gary Oldman." And then like you kind of knew it was a bad idea, but you you're like, "Man, we got all these stars. Like they're not gonna there's the movies. It's gonna be and the movies." Dead on arrival. I think it's very funny because uh, <laughs> right now, and I don't. This doesn't bother me at all. But fuck, the whole thing is so funny that like Bradley Cooper went to uh, be in this movie based on a real Jewish person, and and he's not Jewish, and that's fine. I don't yeah. give a shit. Uh, you know, anyone. Denzel could fucking kill the role as Rabbi Brian. I promise you that. <laughs> sure. But, sure. but Bradley Cooper, uh, he went to, to act as if we every day playing a Jew. And put on a prosthetic nose. And what's funny about that is like the guy that he's based on, like he's got like a nose, but like Bradley Cooper already has a nose, but he yeah. still put on a Jewish nose you for know. this movie. And it's so I'm gonna watch it. Movie looks like it's gonna be fucking sick, and I don't care. I'm not offended or anything. But I think it's a, I think funny. it's hilarious that he went to work every single day and put on a Jew nose, <laughs> not even because like to, to like, but like. You must have known that people were going to some. We know how it is. We know how they are. We know <laughs> the future of the left was. Uh, but no, so realistically, true. you know, if you're putting on a, a Jew nose, someone's going to say something. Let me ask you something, Harley. <laughs> Let me ask you if people ever say this to you. Oh, my. Whoa. <laughs> It's oh, sharp. That's looks sharper. Like the penguin. That's sharper nose than the guy. The real guy's got. This is gonna sound <laughs> offensive, like but I'm penguin. Jewish. I don't care. The real guy's got a touch more of a hook happening. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> no, the, it's the, the fake say, nose is, is too pointy. I will say though, Bradley Cooper Jewed it up for this. This is uh, as a Jew. I he definitely he Jewed it up. He put Harley. on a Jew nose. I I wouldn't even do that. Has any, and they're you, like put on a nose i'd be like come on really i would <laughs> hardly has anyone has anyone ever said to you because people say this it wouldn't offend time, me at all i put it on has, has anyone ever said to you oh you don't look jewish yeah and and i know what they're saying they're yeah. saying you don't have a giant nose is basically mm. what they're i saying. i, you I look like woody I, allen I, I have a, <laughs> I, I do have a small nose just compared to my 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 head and size and everything and like yeah. would you close your eyes picture a Jew nose open your eyes mine is smaller than that but I've hung around people and uh, they didn't know I was Jewish and like well, they didn't know my name or something and then it, it came out yeah. like later or whatever but what I always thought and and this doesn't sound bad but like if someone's like close your eyes picture a Jew. Not just the nose, but you're not picturing a you know good looking, picture? powerful. Uh, you're not like you're picturing <laughs> uh, picture? like uh, you're picturing something straight out of Baldur's Gate three character creation screen. Somebody's and... face who looks like a melted candle. <laughs> that yeah, oh, you guys, you guys you only picture. I, mean? like, I have like friends like, that look like that. Me too. The only people you picture. <laughs> yeah. I picture John Lovett's character and the critic. Yeah, I picture yeah, that. Yeah, Zach, good. show us that. John Lovitz. Is John Lovitz critic. Jewish? Lovitz. That's very Jewish. Very, right? very Jew Jewish. Yeah. He's the he's the one in the Seinfeld episode with the who, who lied about having cancer so that Jerry would pay for his fake hair. Uh, yeah, he's but hilarious. He's talking about believe, blue storm now, Jewish. Jack. But but he, he Seinfeld is a different form of Jewy, but also Jewy. That's what I think of. I think of, yeah. I picture this gentleman here. Yep. It, I can hear him saying it stinks. <laughs> it stinks. So you you guys, when you close your eyes, Harley, you, you have such a bad image of Jews that you picture like an I'm, elderly I'm, one. Like an like, elderly No, like, no, yeah. not even here. This is actually a great picture. Uh I think back to Mel Gibson's The Passion. Um, no, I think of uh I, I think of Todd Phillips. <laughs> I think of Todd Phillips that shows up that's like, I'm here for the gangbang. Uh, yeah 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 that's what hair, i exactly stage, that's what i picture uh like a, like a jewish person also <laughs> that's from um, um <laughs> old school i, it's I think of very hairy arms. arms that's part of my ident like my identification <laughs> hairy as a jewish person. Arms? yeah i've known a lot too. of jews who have very hairy arms and i have like italians in my family and so i'm, I'm used to hairy arms but 
I'm like, yeah, that, that guy's pretty fucking hairy. Yes, that, thank that's you. It. That's that's, that's what it. I picture as a, a, a Jew. Look at his necklace. Look at his necklace. Yeah. Um. So like, I I have like <laughs> lighter coloring. Uh. Like you know, just being a, an Ashkenazi Jew, I, I think like you know, I I just think of like the dark curly hair. Uh. You know, like hunch. There's a hunch. There is yeah. some uh the physiognomy. Like they're sneaking up on <laughs> physiognomy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you press C in Baldur's Gate, Bradley that's called Cooper. that's like the yeah, that's a good ass topic, Carly. <laughs> Bradley you know Cooper. Else, I'm glad both of you are here. <laughs> you know what else Jews? Jews are good athletes until they're like ten years old, and then they get separated from the pack. Yeah. But up until about ten or eleven, you're like that Jew can play some basketball. Every and then, time, yeah, and then there's the, every when there's yeah. always a five foot three Jew at the basketball courts killing it and killing. the craziest thing is he's still there if he didn't tear his acl like 90 percent of jewish guys do when they're in their late 20s <laughs> he's still at the synagogue playing basketball and he's still yeah. much better than everyone else around him still saying yeah. she like could have gone pro yeah I, I didn't know <laughs> that, like, five uh, more inches I, one of my buddies who was jewish this is a few years ago like i did we were talking about hockey and like somehow the topic of like jewish professional hockey players came up like i'd never given that a second of thought in my life and like instantly he was like like named two guys like like steve morenstein and joey jewish <laughs> like, like, those were the two best ones that's the sickest and I'm like, dj that's hilarious duo by the that, way like you've thought about this enough that like you looked up like there have to be some jews that played in the nhl that's not a very oh you know, jewish we know player. we know the professional athletes we yeah. can we, they, that's because there aren't that many of them i'm I mean, not <laughs> i'm not an i'm not a sports guy at all like, like literally, like I not at all. So I don't have any Jewish athletes. And if someone was like came up and they're like, name me a professional Jewish athlete, I'd be like Sandy Koufax. There you go. There that's you go. the top of the list, dude. But that's because he like <laughs> was <laughs> made, he was <laughs> Jewish before he was an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's got to be more than Sandy. That's Koufax. the only one I can name. Yeah. Gabe Kapler. I know, I got a bunch of them. Two. <laughs> Damn, yeah, that's hilarious. Know. Who is the best Jewish athlete of all time? Kofax is undeniably the greatest Jewish athlete of all time. <laughs> and not only is the best Jewish athlete, he's the best baseball player amongst <laughs> all of them. It's like him and then King David. Like there was, there was no athletes in between. Uh, Jake Curran, the Seattle Seahawks offensive tackle, Jewish, by the way. Just learned. There was that. a guy named Sean Green who played for the Dodgers and the Brewers. Um, Gabe Kapler, who still is the, I think he's coaches the, I forget who he's coaching right now. Uh, Kevin Euclid, um, uh, who are the other baseball players? More baseball players. Not a lot of Jewish basketball that players. I can't think of any fighters, uh, off the top of my head, any, uh, in mixed martial arts or, or anything. Yeah. I can't think of Oh, any. there's a guy named Zach Hyman in the NHL. It's a real white he's, trash he's, he's actually very good. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's plenty of representation. It's, well, you so. know, it's just like a, you know, when you're making your RPG characters, you can't be good at everything. Yeah, that's true. You have to prioritize things. You have your to deception you is be... off the charts. <laughs> 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 Who cares if your your fucking dexterity skill got nerfed a little? They, they, they put, all, they put everything's into charisma for them. <laughs> it's, all, it's all about writing tight jokes, a tight five. <laughs> They're like, hey, all, all you idiots, stay back. I'm gonna go convince this goblin horde. I've got a tight three minute bit that's gonna sell them on why we should be able to get through their their goblin pass. <laughs> this is why this is why I don't excel because I'm I'm an actual bad Jewish cross build. Like, I just got some points and some things. It's like, oh, I get it if you built this, but why'd you make them so big? That's not gonna, that's not gonna be useful. <laughs> that's how I end up getting punched out in a boxing ring. Hey, listen, Harley, <laughs> you want to you hear my theory on why there aren't a lot of huge Jews? Yes. Because when we were walking across the desert for 40 years, the tall Jews gave the little Jews shade. And one by the one, they just started dropping off. And the only ones who made it were the ones who were getting shade from the big dudes so by the time we got there it was every the year sure that's and true George and then also like uh being able to fit in the Not floorboards the could have helped too <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> who if if only the family the small enough to hide in the floors that's are right. gonna make it <laughs> they're like i'm like out there i'm like i was like five ten in the fourth grade my family's like, get the fuck out of here 
fuck out of here. You would have survived hey. the Holocaust. We would have. The, no, that's. Oh, yeah, wow. I would have been like, it's him. He used to go to my synagogue. <laughs> Let's <laughs> get him. I would have been like, have you ever seen a Jew this tall? I rest my case. And they're like, guess oh. who's not fitting in the attic? Six five. That would, dude, that would be saying? my case. Yeah. If you're yeah. Harley during the Holocaust, you're like, have you ever seen a Jew this big, sir? I don't think so. Now let me get back to shoveling the hay. Good yeah. Aryan hay for you're white a horses. Of hair dye from Hitler looking at you like, okay. Yeah, you'd like be <laughs> just just you'd be fine. it out, and he would have been You're fine. clearly part of the master race, one way or another. Like, <laughs> like, I I feel like they'd want you around. That was yeah, the thing. Would... All the main Nazis, none of them look like the fucking Aryan master race. They look, they all look like, I don't know, greasy. They they look fucking snake. They all look like snake from Harry Potter. Like 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 <laughs> greasy black hair, kind of like. I don't know, five out of ten looking dudes. Who well, there's just, nothing wrong with greasy, black-haired, five out of ten dudes, by the way. Well, you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> some people are catching some strays. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you don't like Hitler, though. Hitler was not a good-looking man. He was Goebbels was hideous. They all, all looked like fucking losers. I, short. I don't know. But I don't think it really mattered back then. I think everybody was a lot shorter. I think no, so, not that so. Yeah. I think I would have been a giant at 5'10". I would have been at least bigger... Right now, I'm, I mean, my son's six three and a half, or six three, and he's half Asian, half Jewish, which is two negatives. Two negatives mm. made it positive somehow. I'm not That's sure mad. how he got to be that tall, but yeah, Real elaboration. I, yeah, exactly. elaboration. I'm Jewish. And I'm like, I'm looking for an Asian. Aberration. I'm like, I'm trying to make a winner out here. I see how the pieces are being laid out on the board. And, you need you know, like a like, I think a Jewish life. Asian like uh, was pretty good. Pretty yeah, it's the, the two highest IQ groups in the world. How could it work? I don't know. Should we try it? <laughs> Do it. Nah. Find a really tall Jew, or no, a really tall Asian. The same way Yao, you know, Yao Ming's fan, like him and his wife were hooked up by the Chinese government because they wanted to just like make a good Is basketball that true? play. Yeah, they oh, yeah. like introduced like two giant people and they had not, I'm sorry, not Yao Ming. And his, Yao Ming is the product of that. I Jackie believe. Chan, like, they oh, did that. Really? Too. No, yeah. yeah. Jackie some, Chan, they found two funny uh, people made them make a child. That's where Jackie Chan came from. They have a whole program in China. They, they make is, real. Yeah, is this real? Yeah, yes. They made Jackie Chan. He is a it's a, it goes back to the Cold War, the Soviets and the Chinese when they first started working together. Um yeah, they created Jackie Chan in a lab to be a the funniest Asian that science could create. And they failed because there's funnier Asians than him. Yeah, they never Name taught him English effectively. That was the main drawback of program Osiris. Name one uh that the gold Bobby Lee appearances on Opie and Anthony are the most outrageous things in the world. Watch the episode with him and Bobo. That's a good one. I, he spits on Bobo's penis. Bobo's a retarded man. Oh. Bo hey, let me tell you something. Bobby. It's too much. It is Bob too much. <laughs> it's, it's like, Bob, like Bobby Lee went into that and like ONA is like, we're this crazy show. And Bobby Lee's like, oh, really? You're crazy. And like Bobby is like an actual. Loon. You're telling me he spit on a retarded man's penis during the show in the studio. He, he was pretty wild. Yeah, Bobby Lee was was a madman on the ONA. Oh, your he fans would love, love that. If you did that for your Patreon, they'd love that. Mm -hmm. I got that for free. We'll, we'll, we'll get Bobo on the line. <laughs> Talk to him. Shit for free. You, any retard pulls his dick out in front of me, I'm spitting on it. Oh, yeah. isn't that right, Drifter? God. Absolutely correct. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. I couldn't resist oh. the temptation to do something stupid. No, you really couldn't pick between scary and funny, could you? No, we tried to go Whoa. for both. We even added the little sad tear over here, I think it is. Yeah, you fucking nailed it. You're you did. Josh, you, you okay did. there? Yeah. I was not expecting that. I wasn't At all. expecting this either. Uh, Chiz told me that this was the clown episode and that you would all be dressed as clowns, and yet here I am. <laughs> <laughs> that, did he say that? No, actually, uh, my oh. wife was doing a whole bunch of cosplay stuff and like experimental makeup, and I got this message like, hey, we need you for PKA really fast, and I'm like looking at the makeup, we need you for PKA, and I thought, oh my god, this is the perfect opportunity for me to be my real self. So I decided to join, as most of you see me, as a professional clown. Thought it would lighten wow. the mood a little bit. 
That's pretty brave of you to come you, out as scary. There's nothing more dangerous to come out as than a clown in the world. It's true. Because there's no empathy. You'll certainly not find clown empathy here. No. <laughs> and this is a particularly frightening clown. No, come on. I thought I was kind of like friendly, maybe. You have like a, a you've murdered someone tier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just got out of the clink. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. Gums, oh, no. way more gums than I would than I could ever be comfortable with. So it's it's, it's real <laughs> scary. Um, the headset matching and being white is such a nice touch that it's 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 it's. I'm glad. You and noticed. then of course you lying in bed with your medical condition, which is always just a real, th you know. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what's happening? There? What is yeah, happening? I, uh, I have problems, lots of them, and sitting up for a long time is kind of hard. So uh, a friend of mine helped me build this bed rig. It's just a simple computer monitor here. You can see the snake cable goes to a laptop, a <laughs> couple of cameras, and I can lay here and game and stream and just sort of do whatever. OBS virtual camp, so we can hop back. <laughs> this is fucking <laughs> killing me. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's so funny. Chiz was like, do you want Drifter tonight just in case? I think Josh has to duck out early. And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> Every time Drifter comes on, it's <laughs> demons and fucking mystery medical shit. It's always fun stuff. So, so yeah. Josh. Guys, I'm going to tap out on the clown. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> Look what you did. I, I scared I, him off. I have to All catch right. a plane tonight. As always, a fucking straight up blast. Harley, good reconnecting with you. Hell too. yeah, man. You too. Um, thanks as usual for having me on, guys. Always of a good course. time. Of course. Where can uh you want to push everybody somewhere? We'll throw the links in the description. Yeah, man. Honestly, the um the podcast that I'm doing with my son is maybe my favorite thing I've ever done. And it's a really cool dynamic that the two, and a, two of us have. We talk about just about everything. And so it's called Hey Man with three A's because he told me that's how I say it. Hey Man. <laughs> um, it's called Hey Man, you can get, you get your podcast. And jo comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. I want to tell you guys something. Your, your listeners show up to my fucking shows. So oh, yeah. They show up to my shows and they always say something to me. So fuck yeah, guys. Always great. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to have to go smoke that clown out of my brain. Yes. <laughs> Good luck. Bye safe. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Right. Damn. That is so fucking funny. That <laughs> I, I love the clown thing. It's, it, it's so you. funny to me because the more I look at it, it's so high effort. The lines are so crisp. <gasps> like there's no like silly joke about it. Well, it is a silly joke, but like, you didn't laze out like it's you're well, in you're going to have to give all the compliments to my lovely wife at JWO designs on Twitter. She's a professional cosplayer. Uh, I just laid in bed for 30 minutes and just let her do this. She was like, oh, I got this new blue and we're going to do this layering and all this kind of stuff. And I'm a sucker for attention. So I just laid around and let her clown me up so that uh, the quality of this is entirely on her and not me. Mine would look more like uh, somebody fell into a spirit Halloween if I tried to do it myself. <laughs> None of us could do it either, so you don't have to. No, you really take for granted ability. like a, a nice fine line being done on someone's mm -hmm. face. It's so hard to do. I did my clown makeup that time, and it did not look like that. I like that looks really good. I like the wig too. That's not like a. Oh, thank it doesn't you. Doesn't look cheap to me. It's very cheap. <laughs> oh, okay. You it's like, like uh, it up. Oh, you like yeah, Sean O'Malley. I thank you. I'll take that compliment. You won't get that reference. Okay. I don't know who that is. I, yeah, no, you don't. Yeah, you don't. You don't. You don't know. Anything. I bet he's a UFC fighter. I'm still so mad about you not having seen Rocky. Like, <laughs> you told me you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was good. I liked that. I, hey, I liked that episode because you were just ripping company. darts the whole time. You're like smoking continuously the whole episode. It's the yeah. bed. It's the costume. Yeah, it's the yeah. bed. I'm just. Did you really for, during that episode? You you finished the pack after the episode. Oh, right? I finished that pack. Absolutely. What do you mean? Throw the idea of throwing away a pack of cigarettes to someone who used to smoke half a pack a day every day for like 15 years or something that's that wasn't happening i smoked the rest of them cigarettes yeah good I'm yeah glad. and if, if i'm oh, out you, drinking you were with gonna somebody, say you hated I'll something one. you were gonna say you hated something that he he is it what you're gonna say you were gonna say that i know you no, no, said he, he, he we weren't gonna get something no, oh yeah, yeah i hate that taylor rocking. hasn't watched like so many classic movies but we're gonna fix that we're gonna fix that um there's a lot of i'll just, get around to it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many good shows to rewatch over and over and over though 
Oh, I'm watching watch a shitty show. Stuff. I'm watching a watch shitty show on. I think it's on Apple TV. It's got Idris Elba in it, who, if you don't know, is like a six foot four athletic black man. And the the story is that his flight gets hijacked, and he starts working with the hijackers because he thinks that that is a better that that's the most likely way that they'll get home safely. And I'm so tired of him. I, I hate it. I hate it. I, I I can't find a new show to watch. And I've been trying to watch this, and I fucking hate it. The whole oh, idea is so I got goddamn for stupid. You. Hmm. I got one for you. I started it just the other day. I talked to Harley about it before I did Harley's podcast. Binge Eater podcast coming yeah. out soon with me on it. Bunch of fun there. Uh, this show is called Billions. It's got oh, yeah. um, Paul Giamatti and Lieutenant Winters. I don't know what uh, that actor's name is, but the redhead guy from Band of yeah. Brothers. I like him. And it's like genuinely good i started watching it it, it must have been seven years ago now because i remember stopping it at like episode four or whatever and being like well i'm not gonna pay for showtime for however long this show stays out but now it's seven seasons in and paul giamatti's fucking incredible lieutenant winners is great it's really interesting i'm only like i'm not even a full season through but you know um mcmanus from oz Yes, the guy who's in charge of Emerald City, the guy who's like, "Oh, my experiment," and it's not like, not even a fucking experiment. He just puts people in a, a cell with glass instead of bars, and he's like, he is Lieutenant Winter's fixer in this show. Lieutenant Winter's is like the, the he owns this giant capital firm, billionaire, all playing fast and loose with the rules. And every time something gets real serious, he talks to that actor McManus in like a dark alleyway. And he has him do his dirty work. And so in like, I think it's like the first fucking episode of the show. He has McManus go to this FBI agent's house and steal like a tape of her doing cocaine on another naked woman's body. And he's just like sitting in this FBI agent's home watching it on her TV. McManus is and the woman, the FBI agent comes in and is like, you think you're going to threaten me with this? We have training for this blackmail. What you think you're going to get me because I'm a lesbian? And he's like, no. But you do cocaine here and here and here. How do you think that's going to play? <laughs> so you answer to us now. And then the woman was like, you sick fuck. You're just sitting here getting off on this. And then the McManus is like, sweetheart, what I get off to <laughs> would turn your stomach. And then same episode, maybe 10 minutes later, it like shows the McManus guy in like a bathhouse, like clearly just finished fucking and it's a midget, like a midget woman. And I was like laughing because it was presented as though he was like into blood and gore yeah, and yeah, killing yeah. and like, oh my God, the things this guy gets off to would boil your Famous. blood. And it's just him like he's in the door. Instead, it's something that literally like, 90, 95 <laughs> people, 95 percent of people would be like, I'd do it. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd do it. it. Just, yeah, a one -off. Show. just for the good. overall experience of the situation. Uh, another fun show I could recommend. I don't know if you yeah. care for animation. I've really enjoyed the Harley Quinn show on HBO Amazing. Max. Nothing it had no right being that good. It I'm had right. no right being that good. I did not expect that show to be an incredibly funny and entertaining and well-written okay. show. I thought you know it was going to be like a cartoon. I put it on for no reason. And uh, halfway through the first episode, I was like, this is very good and then i binged it all entirely great great recommendation same experience right here i tuned in expecting it to be kind of like velma like very cringy and i was watching it's like this is actually kind of good question mark and then i watched all of it also a uh, similar vibe teenage euthanasia on adult swim i've been enjoying quite a lot uh I've heard of that it's about a teenage girl who lives in a funeral home in a near future post-apocalyptic florida uh, and it is glorious. It's like Florida 20 years from now. It's, you know, the Adult Swim standard, same kind of vibe as Harley Quinn. Very silly, very ridiculous, okay. uh, fantastical, I, but I love I it. Did notice, I did notice on the Harley Quinn thing, I haven't watched it, but the thumbnail or whatever that is Har Harley Quinn and maybe Poison Ivy riding a giant penis-shaped ship. Yep. That's the first thing I saw, and I was like, I bet everyone noticed this, and I quickly Googled Harley Quinn penis, and it's just like, Fans react to Harley Quinn riding giant penis in pictures. Okay, yeah, everybody else knows. I mean, all okay. rockets kind of look phallic. This one is a big... We made them that way, right, boys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did. <laughs> the, uh, the curly uh, hair on the bottom of it was for aerodynamic purposes. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. of the paint. Out, it was, it was Lex out, Luthor's rocket. These aren't very aerodynamic at all. It just, it just wouldn't work. They did Maybe have a huge they... pussy that they walked through made out of ice in the second season. It was about two stories tall. 
Why? Yeah, uh, any uh, context, uh, Mr. Freeze, that's Batman universe. And the freeze oh, ray made oh, a giant, oh. giant, the entrance to his house was like a two story pussy they just walked through. Okay. I wouldn't want that on my house. I wouldn't want that in any place. No. Mm -mm. No, no, I think that was gaudy. I washed my dick brash, after sex. You think I'm going to get in there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not climbing in. Got to set up a forward base camp. In the, yeah, in the yeah, pussy. You know, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Harley, how much Baldur's Gate have you played? Don't it's lie. It's a crazy, crazy amount. And it's Don't not lie. even like how much I've played. It's how I've played. Because I, like, I... Listen, I, I I played Mass Effect, my favorite series. I've played through it so many times, and there's something wrong with me. I cannot play a femshep. I cannot. And people say female what shepherd. Is that? What does that mean? Great, oh. The female shepherd, same game. It's like incredible way to experience it. Just like I'm just something, something pathetic about me. Um, and uh, playing uh, lots of games. I never really sway from the type of character that i make it's either i'm like this is me or i'm like this is a guy i would fuck and like whenever i create the guy it's like my ideal guy or my ideal me something in some weird way uh, you know i mean mm -hmm. i'm just reading deeper i'm like this is a cool mustache but low-key i'm probably like i would fuck this guy <laughs> um but so i make and then this was the first time where i was just like let's get silly let's get silly like lowest possible strength, lowest possible uh, like things that just aren't relevant. Um, so I he's a bard, only bard, no subclass, halfling, uh, luck, persuasion. His 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 proficiencies are acrobatics and performance. Um, and like all I do is like play the bongos with like my dick out. <laughs> So and, he's he's period, people love it. Correct. Like like, like that's, the, what a, uh, that's what a halfling would be doing in those days. Since yeah, you're I, a halfling, I, I, I go up to work. Donkey Konga bongos, like the little Donkey Konga ones, and you just slap them with your dick. Bonk, 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 bonk. <laughs> I bet there's a hey, mind for that. Yeah, and I, I persuade others. I'm like, come slap your dick on my bongos, <laughs> everybody. And they listen. Are you I, is your character doing well with that approach, or are you hitting Yeah, I walked like there was like three um uh uh orcs like uh gigantic ogres like eating and yeah, they no, came by and they were like tasty little meal and i just like basically in 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 four sentences they left and they gave me a horn to blow whenever i want to kill whoever i want and they were like you gotta pay us though and i was like no i don't and then i started playing the bongos naked and they're like i like this guy hit us up whenever dude whenever you want to chill Damn, and that's that literally, I, every time, 500. That's whenever deal. i go to a camp i literally split my halfling from everyone else they hide in the bushes and i'm like hey you guys are killing the vibe and i walk up naked like what up what up <laughs> who's the boss and i talk to animals so like the fucking things come like and I'm like talking to them. I'm like, how you doing? And they're like, yo, you speak animal? And I'm like, bro, I speak to dead guys. I'm like, you get up. And he's like, ask me five questions. <laughs> like the D&D &D movie. Man, yeah, that's it. I have powerful. that spell in the D&D &D movie. You could ask, you go up to dead bodies and ask them five questions. Yeah. It's really great. I watched the D&D &D movie last night uh, for the second time. And I liked it so much more because I had played Baldur's Gate. Um, I've actually done the exact same thing you've done. I always play like sexy elf lady or um, that's it. I always play sexy <laughs> elf lady. He does. She's like a, who's a stealth archer. Like every fucking time. That's my character. Uh, but this time I'm like a fucking, I don't know, a rock gnome or some shit. Uh, it's it's pretty silly. I've, I've loved Baldur's Gate so, so much. Every time I play it, I play it for longer periods of time. I started out really not liking the turn based shit. And it's grown on me so much. I really like it. And like you said earlier, they don't limit you on what you can do. Like, for example, there's this part where you've got to get do a whole puzzle and a bunch of silly shit that I couldn't quite figure out to get behind some shields to flip a switch. And I've been working on it for like five, ten minutes or something. I died a few times and I was like, wait a minute. Can I just use that spell that teleports me anywhere I want to go? It's like, yeah, of course you can. In any other video game, they would disable that spell. It's like, oh, yeah, the, the spell of fucking apparition doesn't work in the Chamber of Ghouls, though. Oh, but in this game, <laughs> like, yeah, skip that this whole puzzle. 
You're a wizard. You don't do puzzles. I had a situation like appear. that. There was a, yeah. a book behind uh, bars, like a door, and there was a trap in front of the door. And I, I summoned uh, the hand because my sorcerer did. And yeah. the hand, I summoned it in that room, and the hand was able to pick up the book and aim it to shoot through the bars of the door. <laughs> and it yeah. wasn't just like this is a door block and the whole thing is like a hitbox and it's, it's not going through. It like went through it and like landed at his feet. And also, I didn't know you could do this, but like I was in a fight at one point, and like my halfling, like my like my barbarian needs help. I like grabbed the the potion and like threw it at him. And like it hit him, and uh, and, and 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 he got healed. Uh, but yeah. that was funny. It was like I tried that again on my halfling when I was using like my uh, like my my fighter girl there, and she picked up the potion and like threw it. And I guess it like it always rolls in the background. It didn't break. It hit me in the face. I got seven damage, then <laughs> fell to the floor, and I got eight health. And I was like, oh, okay, no. I guess one <laughs> HP. <laughs> but it was just like the little failures, like the failures make the game. Like when I walk up dick out and I'm like, no, you bitches are going to work for me because that's how it is. And then it rolls and it's like two. And then I'm like, fuck. And then now my guys are running out of the bushes to come fight because I didn't have, like I just crit failed, like yeah. something that yeah. I, I, I could have stuttered. Done. Like Even on one time, first joke. one time in a dungeon, there's like, and this is like not a thing you could do in games. Like it's crazy. There was these three coffins, and like the the cleric character who's like religious, she was like walking up, and like she had like a perception pass, and she was like, something's not right about this this. Co and there was three coffins there, and like I was like, oh, so there's like, I guess undead are gonna come out, and I was like. I could light the coffins on fire, or like, and I was like, well, and I grabbed because. I grabbed, I chose my uh, barbarian girl, like the, the fighter girl, and I, I just directed her to run over, pick up the coffin, and throw it over the ledge. And like, that's sick. Like, the bad guy's in it, and it's supposed to surprise you. And she went Any and other like, game picked it would, up. And be cut scene. Yeah, you could throw it anywhere. I could have thrown it into the other, and she threw it off the cliff. And the guy's just like dead. He's gone. Whatever items he had, I also lose forever, but that's gone. And then the two other guys like pop out. And also, like, once again, improvised melee weapons. There's things everywhere. And, like, with this girl, like, I love doing shit like this. As someone like a skeleton's light, you can pick them up and smash the other skeleton with them, granted that you're small enough. Like, someone like my bar, my bard is and shit, my little halfling. Like, I just grab someone, take them, and throw me. Like, you just throw people around. Oh, yeah, you weigh less. So you'd be yeah, you you way less bigger, roll. stronger characters can toss yeah. you. Um, there's spells in the game where you can uh, enlarge or shrink a thing and you might think, ah, but they made that so that doesn't interact with other things that enlarge or shrink things. No limit. So you can get your, your druid to turn into an owl bear, and then he drinks the potion that makes him huge and then your wizard goes, not big enough. Boom. And you're colossal. You're colossal. So did you I get that? I wanted to get that. that spell. Like it makes you physically bigger. Enlarge, yeah. Okay, because I've been thinking yeah. about the concerts I could put on as my halfling bard if I'm, like, huge. You can make him even littler. <laughs> my character is a rock gnome, so she's the same size as your, your halfling guy, But I, so I used the spell to shrink her even tinier. So now she's just <laughs> Thumbelina leading the, leading the crew along, and she can go down into cracks in the rock where, nobody, where only the mage hand can usually go. And, and the game just allows shit. this. It's not invisible walls and barriers and shenanigans. It allows it spots. so well that like other game developers went on Twitter and they're like, uh, guys, we love Baldur's Gate. It's great. Don't just don't set your expectations for this to be the bar of AAA games because that's not realistic. This game oh. is is crazy. And like I understand in a way because it's like, well, this game had like 400 people, four years, like a huge IP, which they have to pay to use. But still, mm -hmm. um, and like four years of early that, access. Yeah. And having said that, it's also like, yeah, it's true. But some of those games do make a lot of money and spend a lot of money to make them. And, you know, it there's, just might get them forgot, to shift though, their. There's no microtransactions. They're not bilking you for anything. Well, I you bought could the, buy a the... cape. Not that someone would do that, would they? You don't just get the cape, Harley. You get the special <laughs> die as well. It could be blue or orange. Come on. And, and the, when, look, when I bought that you cape, bought the only I had thing not, you can buy. When I bought that cape, I had not. I also got the digital soundtrack. Well, there's no way that's on YouTube. 
<laughs> yeah, for free. <laughs> but it's fine to support the developers because they made a whole ass game that you can play mm. single player. That's it's not a live service without microtransactions and crap like that. And it's, it's higher offline. quality than the other games. My yeah, oh, you yeah, Steam offline. Sure. I'm almost positive it works fine offline because I was playing during a thunderstorm. And if I've been playing most of maybe every other game that I play, the power had gone out or not the power, but what happened was the power flashed off, which means that the internet gets knocked out and has to go through that whole reboot pro process. But I didn't lose my devices. And any other game, I would have had to stop and wait 10 minutes for the thing to reboot, but it just keeps playing. And then it, you know, the, the cloud updates whenever it gets uh, bandwidth back again. I haven't played a game where I gave a shit about the the story or the dialogue, maybe ever, maybe since Dead Space one or two, like uh, fifteen years ago or something. But I'm reading all the dialogue and following the story along. I'm really wanting Shadowheart to figure out, uh, you know, her, yeah. her whole nonsense, and uh, I'm I, I'm really enjoying the fucking game. It's it's the best. It's the most fun I've had playing a single player game that I can remember right now and it's so deep and it's clearly got so much replayability i i, I had to go and r just re-roll just to see the intro and i re-rolled the uh as a half uh orc like just full strength no intelligence or perception like i step on every trap and like get angry <laughs> and stronger and uh I, I I played through it and it's just like crazy that like how what I could do like I'm seeing like my best friends who I've been venturing with the halfling like one of them is a mage his hand is sticking out of the portal and he's like help me please my orc slapped his hand away and he's like I will perish in here and it closes up and he's dead and I'm like I love that guy in my playthrough. But Gale's dead now. This mutant playthrough that I'm doing right now is like, fuck. Like, one of them also, like, tried to... Something happened. I don't want to spoil, but something happened in the middle of the night. And he was like, let me explain. And I'm like, no. And I just killed them. <laughs> and everyone yeah. woke up and they're Astarian's like, good killed that too. guy. That's what I'm talking about. But I yeah, didn't want to spoil uh, anything. But yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, oh, is that I, the guy we killed right off the start? Uh, no, no, no. He's one of your... Oh, we did kill a, a, a follower. You can oh, play no, in a I, party I, with friends, right? Like you can queue so up and play co-op. My experience with that is it's difficult because if you leave the party, then you're no longer synced with on, on the same um, missions and story, and we're all at different levels, I think, now. Uh, okay. I don't know if, you know, I've got a campaign going right now where I'm in Act 2. I don't know if Taylor could jump in with me, even though he hasn't mm -hmm. done the prerequisites for a lot of the things that I'm doing right now. Whereas I'll give Diablo some credit and Diablo, you could absolutely do that. I can be in the middle of a, a, a mission and, and Taylor can hop on, join me. And he hasn't done the part where he found the book, but we're doing the part where we burn the book and he mm -hmm. can just join in and do the whole fucking thing. But uh, so I don't know about the multiplayer ability uh, in this, but I just play by myself and love it so much. And if it you would be don't fun burn the book, you get the, the spell to talk to the dead people from the Dungeons Dragons movie. I haven't I haven't gotten there yet to deal with that book yet um, for the one with the I, I've got that I've got that man mature that comes later we've got we got bigger fish to fry for yeah now. I have I also I came across something that let me lets me talk to the dead so I'm like I'm gonna fucking burn this book but I, I think I might also... be I was gonna say I think I might be further along or maybe just because I'm a warlock that I've got some abilities that um, but but I'm in act two and I've got those as bound spells now, so I can talk to the dead and stuff anytime for kind of free. I'm um, like, uh, it's interesting. The game is, uh, it's it's like Diablo is like almost mathematical, like on a grid, and and this one's like more of a sandbox. Like Diablo's like it's like Diablo's rails. like it's like mathematical in a way the way that it happens and the timing you can't do mm -hmm. certain things before whatever this game's kind of like well, I don't know how you got in this room here but keep going buddy sure <laughs> I like yeah, games like I, that those are the best kind of games agree the mechanics like are what carries the game have you played yeah, Baldur's Gate Drifter unfortunately I have not uh, because of my many problems it's kind of challenging to game uh, I do play team fight tactics because I only have to click twice about every 30 seconds uh, but no Baldur's Gate I have had a lot of people recommend it to me a lot of people it looks great uh, on the topic of Dungeons and Dragons type things I do watch Critical Role and Dimension 20 and I enjoy some of the Dungeons and Dragons improv content out mm -hmm. there i think that's fantastic biggest channel on twitch most subs got their own prime show and everything 
Uh, wow. Absolutely killing it. Uh, so I do watch that with my wife. It's kind of fun. It's like, I feel like it's like reinventing the old radio drama. I don't know if you guys were around yeah. or like uh, the, it was like the Christian family radio. They'd have these like hour long dramas. And even before that, if you had grandparents that might've played some, it's the exact mm -hmm. same thing, except uh, professional voice actors and improv actors and they do D and D. So they like really get into it and really act it out. And it's something that it's long. It's like four hours, but you can kind of have it on in the background and you don't have to necessarily watch as long as you can hear it. You can keep up with the story. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I never thought I would. I never thought I would get into it. I had a lot of very negative stereotypes against D&D. &D, the only time I had ever seen it was it's satanic or it's all the dorks are doing it. You know, and it's uh, something, you know, you'd watch these old movies and the, the mentally unstable kid would be playing D&D &D and then go kill people and I yeah. just thought, okay, this this is this is a game for people that have serious emotional problems. And it's not. And no, it's not. Yeah. I feel ashamed, but that's what the media made it look like. But you're right I, about like it, it was definitely poisoning as a young person to like see the people who were who were playing D and D and being like, oh, so it would be social suicide at school mm -hmm. to go play that game with them. I think yep. I'm going to keep playing COD 4 with my friends on huh. Xbox. See you later, guys. I'm going to band with the cool kids. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, later, there's I, didn't know. Know. I didn't know what I was dealing with with it. Did you do it? Dungeons Dragons? As a kid? Yeah. No, I, I didn't know. I played way nerdier stuff, like uh, certain board games or whatever. I did, just didn't know what Dungeons Dragons was, and no one was into it that i knew and then like when i figured it out i was like oh this is so sick and then ended it up is playing cool. it a bunch of times and it's yeah it's just fun it's just you could this, do whatever this you want game this game makes uh i mean it, it's D, D the game i want to play real D, D. you need to find do a you? dungeon master and we can all make characters Dude. and all right well, easy to do like, there's so many online programs like there's like four or five different big robust programs and professional dms and well, i can dress up Oh, absolutely. 100%. Well, I'm, uh, I'm basically already playing spell, uh, spell Jammer. They just added Space Clowns, <laughs> super powerful murder machines, but they can't do any stealth whatsoever because their shoes always squeak. So it's a non stealth <laughs> character. <laughs> that means you must be very powerful in other ways. If I you get close, assume... you have a devastating blow. Yeah, you get buffs when perceived. That would be the key word. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm scare me. I, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm trying not to look at your part of the screen. It's it's a little upsetting. It's not um, that bad. It's not that bad. I agree. It's a happy clown. Um, but yeah, at least it's happy. But the thing about clowns is that they're always happy until they're not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like at first they're always yeah. oh, ho, 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 quick, 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 and then it's just pulling your intestines out with a with a spit, cranking it while they they, they get slowly drawn out of you. Click, 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 click. Just... Sounds like that movie, yeah. The Terrifier, which I haven't seen, but I'm familiar I with. I haven't seen it. I, watched I have the first seen five The Terrifier. Minutes. I watched five minutes of The Terrifier. And decided... Oh, you haven't seen The Terrifier? <laughs> Terrifier? It's fantastic. Terrifier and Terrifier 2. Uh, and, that's what I uh, Hallow's Eve or whatever the first one is. The yes. little prequel. Short film, I think. Yeah. This, uh, that, what's man. crazy... It's What's crazy about this is that uh, Art the Clown, that guy, yeah. is I didn't think, like, I didn't think my whole life that I would get oh, another, like, iconic yeah. horror person. Like, and when I say iconic, like, obviously you have, like, the S-tier OGs, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, uh, uh, Jason. Mm -hmm. But then, like, you know, Ghostface and, like, you know, there's been some others mm -hmm. that are, like, in the mid area. Hellraiser. You know, like, for me, like, yeah, uh, uh, Leatherface. Yeah, uh, exactly. Jigsaw. And, Jigsaw. like, that was, like, uh, like, almost two decades ago. And then horror did something else. But to get, like, an iconic horror persona, I will tell you, I have never seen someone climbed the ranks so quickly hmm. in my books of uh, a horror guy like, like this guy he's got like like i i just gotta tell you like it's the funniest thing is he it's grounded in reality kind of like what happens but also not mm -hmm. but like grounded in reality and that like i've seen in in times like and this is his stick just like freddie might have a catchphrase is like he's got things that you like he's got rules like everyone does sometimes like he'll i've seen him get bested and he'll pull out a gun and just shoot them. 
<laughs> it's like the whole hunting oh, and getting hit and running and hiding and then it's like as soon as he loses the upper hand he literally has a gun on him and pulls it out and like so is, it a, is it a film series oh. you'd recommend uh, i'm a longtime horror fan i have some sub to shutter watch all that fucked up stuff but it seemed like a little mean-spirited it didn't seem like it would be funny it just seemed like if i watched the terrifier it would give me depression gore for the sake of gore cruelty for the sake of cruelty and nothing else kind of reminds me of maybe like a live action version of a a guro manga or something like that yeah it's kind of what the the movie is like yeah it's like what I look at it is it reminds me of those times, like those movies, like 2004, like going to rent a movie at Blockbuster and you go home and you're like, I understand why this isn't the biggest thing. But like, damn, we got a little gem over here. Uh, so like um, for me, what was like, is it mean for the sake of being a lot of them are like questions that like I, I, I wouldn't be able to give an answer outside of my opinion but i could tell you what attracted me to it was there there are these moments where like the the two girls are it's very at the beginning two girls are sitting with him with the at the pizza place and he's just there and you're getting the guy but he's like under a bright light and like people are around and he's like right there like five feet away and and they don't realize the da- how dangerous this guy is yet and the movie hasn't shown us but you just know because we're watching a horror movie and the tension in that moment is just so well done that like things are happening and you're like, oh my God, don't do that. You're like, like, look at this person. Why are you touching him? Like, there's just things oh, there. They're like, they're like look at the clown. They're, like, they're doing shit like that. Like one yeah. girl there and her friend is like, that. don't. And but like the tension in that scene, like, for example, except the tone for me m- moving forward. Because the guy who plays Art the Clown just kills it. He just just like Robert England as Freddy Krueger, like he's, he's just creepy. this guy, and and yeah, it's, I didn't it's like, like how they, they do that trope that you're talking and about. There is just about for the, ask about the, for the sake of uh, the girls, like they like the the people. There that is do a lot come of way over the top, and he's like, like it's Kyle. He's not like a clown that's like doing a fake like smile in public they're like look at this scary clown oh or look at this silly clown and, and it's like, like ah. he has like like blood actively on him he has like, like, like dirty like, teeth like, he's like dirty, dirty blood teeth, yeah. teeth like he clearly just was eating and something. while and while her friends like bought she's like he's like staring like it, he's really just like for the like the girl if you imagine her like that's just like a creepy ass fucking guy in a scary costume yeah. sitting over there but he's like staring at her but no one um, would fuck with that guy and re- it's like no it literally feels like like imagine if you saw like a chained up pit bull with foam <laughs> on its mouth and it is the it's thing eight is, inches away from you and it's but they did he did you and you're he like did you something. You're a big scary I mean realistically you? would you fight a clown you're in public and let's say you run into me and I'm looking very angry would you say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to fight a clown here in the 7-Eleven. That's no, going to go well. They do. The, if I did he do does. He covers his base. He covers his base a little bit. The the girl that does it, she has her phone out and she's making, she's taking pictures, like content of it. So once you add that factor, I, 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 I said this to you before, like d- things like over the last few years, I used to see dumb shit in movies and I'd be like, no one would ever fucking do that. <laughs> now I know humans enough to be like, oh, there are people that will absolutely do that. Yep. There are people that will do it. There are, are, are girls, guys that'll take their phone out and want to film next to them and do some dumb yep. shit. And like I that. have seen people you said I used an animal as an example. I've literally seen people, some woman holding a bear, a baby bear for a picture. And then the bear's just like face claw on her face. Yeah, exactly. And I was face. like, and I was like, that's yeah. Why'd you hold the fucking bear? Why'd yeah. you hold the bear? It is you bear. could fuck a bear in Baldur's Gate three, by the way. Yes, you can. It's, and you, you could, could fuck, fuck someone a as bear. a bear. It's like, what? have you seen those clips of people in Australia? I'm the bear. Who are like is, is it animated? Playing with like, do you get to octopus? see the bear fucking? Or is it so just you like... You don't see the penis go in, but, it's, <laughs> okay. but, but you see like a lot of thrusting. <laughs> you see? And, and, and there's like... a squirrel holding a nut, and it stops, and it's like... It goes... And it drops the nut. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Why were people mad about that? That seems silly. I've only had sex with, I think, two characters, and then I had like a romantic tryst with another, but we didn't get, in, get, get you know, physical. I actually I sit there. I, I, bears, which, I play what, the violin. Together. I play the violin while my party fucks each other. <laughs> I, don't I don't allow that. Music. They're not. I don't they're allow not allowed that. to have sex. <laughs> no, no, it's all about me. I've had. I think I've had like two uh, 
I think I, I banged a guy and a girl. I am I'm a girl, and then, I can't um, imagine being a rock gnome. Like I'm in a party for a rock gnome. She's like, yeah, suck my rocky pussy. Oh now. no, she's hot. She's she's <laughs> she's, she's pretty cute. Um, I was cucking the party like your fetish. Like you're the only one that gets to la- get laid, and they all have to watch or just listen to the noises. It's just and that I'm the boss. He appreciates. I feel like audience. I'm the most inter- I'm, I'm the I'm having the most interactions with them, and, and I'm they the like one that. They like that you're the boss. They like that someone's yeah. making the decisions. Mm-hmm. Well, the the get Yankee chick, she made it clear that she wanted to be you know in charge, and I would have had to pass a slide of hand check to to top her. So I just let her run the show. I I didn't think I had the dice. Yeah, <laughs> but sometimes that's the real move, though. Like you think it's the president running the country? No, it's the little Jewish guy lurking in the shadows behind him. Like Carl Rove and George so Bush. True. <laughs> yep, just like that. <laughs> man, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into bringing back game. some 2002. More of it. Yeah, it's real fun, man. Um, that video I sent you with a, someone made a whole party of halflings, like you're talking about, Harley. Like they're they're old. They look like Charlie's uncle from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia with the mustache and the receding hairline and and the pedophile. Four one. of them. Yeah, it's four pedophile uncles running around with battle axes in their <laughs> underwear together. And and it's set to music. And at the end, they destroy the entire goblin camp inside and out with one shot because they, they've got barrels lined up to do this whole Rube Goldberg machine that just and the music's dun 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 and dun 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 and the barrels are boom 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 boom. It's great fucking. Video. So they made like a and then Zelda it zooms thing. in on the four gnomes with their arms crossed, like yeah, we did this. I was rolling laughing last night watching that shit. <laughs> there, Imagine the gnomes so much cool around content. like like the Squirtle with sunglasses, arms crossed, like Squirtle Squad. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, when the mods, uh, when there's more mods for the game. There's already mods that make like inventory stuff better, but uh, I, I saw someone made a child mod so you can play as a child, and that's that's a little scary because we don't want to be having any child sex, right? You no, that child one. murder is a pretty rough topic too. Oh, tons of child murder in the yeah, game. Yeah, you can throw you can oh, throw this children. Kid pickpocketed me, and I would have fucking destroyed him if I'd known how at that time in the game. Kids Turned are the only people on. my halfling can throw, so sucks to be a kid. You're oh, throwing lots of kids, kids in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> I'll say that not everybody's into child murder. I made that mistake recently. Wasn't not in real murder. life. They started it. <laughs> child self defense. Uh, child involuntary manslaughter. Uh, I did. A, I did a watch party on Twitch, and I picked one of these old exploitation films, and I knew it was a spicy one. Oh dear. And I knew that it had some offensive stuff. I thought it was going to be more in the back half. I thought the front half would be more funny. Uh-huh. The movie opens up with the Nazi bad guys running over a child in a car uh, and on a bicycle and then backing up over him to crush his head, then taking Polaroids of the dead child's body and going and masturbating to pictures of the Polaroid. And I'm like, yeah, OK, I have picked the wrong fucking movie to watch. This was way too big boy. Oh, remember I told you, snuff- remember I told you that uh, uh, what's it called? Terrifier was gore for the sake of go- nah, I think yeah. you like it. You'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> reference. Now that I know the, what you're watching, I think you'll be okay. Uh, the film was the <laughs> Toxic Avenger. The uh, Toxic Avenger, the old 80s. Oh, that uh, starts sort of with superhero. Nazis doing that? Yeah, they're so riding good. around in a car debating who to murder, and minorities Toxic are worth more Avenger. points amongst other Toxic Avenger, things. which really crazy, is Toxie was like a superhero when I was a kid. Yes, uh, same and there here. there was a, sh- uh, a show called Toxic Avengers, and it was with Toxie, and it was a cartoon and it existed and i bought the toys at toys r us and it was cool uh, and my uh mom and dad were renting a movie once and they were like oh toxic i saw it i was like toxic avenger <laughs> like my toys and there's not like strict like uh carding or anything in quebec about when you want to rent a movie and uh my parents were like sure yeah rent toxic avenger so the next morning I put on Toxic Avenger. I'm in the living room and my parents come downstairs. And yeah, after all the murder and all that, they come downstairs and people are fucking on TV. Yeah. Because Toxic Avenger is like low key, a uh, soft core porno also <laughs> hidden amongst everything he just described. A wild and movie. my parents come down and they're like, what the fuck? And then they like take the movie and I'm like, well, I need to finish it. And I'm like getting mad because I want to finish it. And uh, yeah, the best. Such a fucking sick show. <laughs> and like my parents, Hater. I had toys like that. But in the movie, like people fuck. And uh, and my mom like wrote a letter to the toy company. She was like, I just want to oh, know no. why. Yeah, this is 1992 or something. Oh, She's like, no. so we watched the cartoon and we rented the movie. 
why does the movie not like there's no you don't have no idea that 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 it's nothing like the cartoon and how do you do both and they were literally like honestly we don't control the movie sorry that mm-hmm. happened here's <laughs> all the toxic avenger toys oh so you got they, loaded that must have been awesome that must have they been just like ended. A back win. back then if you took the time to write a letter to a company you got incredible results no one does that anymore except for my father and and they like write physical he, like letters he he got uh he does an email but he got a a, a mars bar and he took a bite of it and he thought it tasted weird and then he looked at the mars bar and there was a contest for like a movie that came out last summer so my dad like wrote them he was like uh why do you have this old mars bar in the store like uh what the fuck and they were like, we're so sorry, uh, um, you know, we sh- our, our inventory, it should be cleared out from these places. Uh, here is a, a coupon, a card for two free Mars bars every week for the year. Holy That's crap. That's a good deal. I should complain yeah. more. Free diabetes. If you write it out and you do it like that, you can. Unfortunately, that maneuver, which was a long, long uh, practice of my, my people and the culture complaining. <laughs> <laughs> but complaining is mainstream now. Like I, everything that you could have ever made fun of Jews for, I'm like, yeah, but you're all doing that now too. <laughs> like you're all doing that. Like Everybody's that was our shit. Like I, I got like I got I, I know Jewish girls that people bring them their cell phones and they're like, call my 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 company and they get off the phone and they give them the phone back and they're like, you have an upgrade and you're getting uh, the new iPhone in a month and you got I got ten dollars off your annual bill. Oh, also you get free data when you travel now, and like sometimes <laughs> it just takes like a good and these are like like good uh, like a Ferengi. You get like yeah. uh, like a, <laughs> a wheeling <Ferengi>. dealer. <laughs> That's why they're the best attorneys. Yeah. That's why you know you, you need a Jewish attorney if you're. You know why they're the best. The, the brick you know, wall. You know why they're the best attorneys? It's like, no. like money back, obsessed, right? Back in the day, very, very actually, but that's a side part of it. <laughs> uh, back in the day, there uh, when, like in New York, when there were cases that would come up that were particularly ugly, that you wouldn't win no firm would take it like if it was like this guy went into a house and he fucked the dog and then killed the dog and drained the blood all over the children and he's claiming innocent (laughs) uh everyone was like yeah we're not going to do that we're not going to mess up our win record to represent this shit um and but they needed to find them lawyers because that's Mm -hmm. that's the country that that we live in that you know you are you have a right to a lawyer sure and who stepped up they're like someone draining blood on the children sounds like a job for us uh and so jewish jewish lawyers have basically just been like lawyering on hard mode since the like taking those cases and doing it like uh on on, and, and now you get these these lawyers that are like fourth generation of taking the worst cases in places like New York, and that's why the biggest firms are around because they've just been, they got good at it. And then 70s, 80s, that. 90s, people start doing it. I mean, you could double check everything I'm saying could be wrong again. No, nah, uh, I believe this all, this is from, <laughs> it. It uh, sounds believable enough. This was Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, it was like some Malcolm Gladwell uh, podcast thing that I was listening to. Uh, but yeah, then they, yeah, they ended up being good at that. Um, also, even like media, like uh, Jews running media. Uh, is because they weren't allowed to own land, so they ran. Yes. They had bookstores, and so they opened and ran bookstores, and then books became radio and TV and stuff. And don't forget and, investing in film and stuff because they weren't allowed to do theater, mm-hmm. and uh, film was was bawdy at the time. It was not in vogue, but mm-hmm. they realized there was an opportunity there and made it damn much shame. bigger than theater. Jews you love couldn't theater. Lend, you couldn't lend money uh, like with interest to a, a fellow Usury. a fellow Jesus-loving brother. But they're like, <laughs> you know who uh, we could sin for us? <laughs> the Jews. And someone it's was a, like, a surrogate is that center. sin spelt with a dollar sign S? Because then, yes, you can. Because <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I, would help, uh, I would help the Orthodox Jews. Like if they if they paid me, like I'd I'd hit their elevator button, like yeah. on their, their day and all that. They're God like, oh, bless man. them. They'll spit on you. <laughs> they'll, they'll spit on you. <laughs> they'll yeah. like spit on you for not being Jewish. They're like fucking. They're like the ones that are like we're not paying taxes. We don't even want to be here. <laughs> oh well, they're I didn't know they were going to be mean taxes. to me. 
So no, no. What do you mean? They'd be mean to me if I was like, yeah, I'm Jewish. They'd be like, yeah, Orthodox. They're like hardcore religious Jewish. fundamentalists, right? <laughs> yeah, they like just, yeah. cluster in their own communities, homeschool the kids, arranged marriages. Uh, I've I went to a I think might have been in L.A. There's a big Jewish community, and a bunch of Orthodox Jews came out, and I was there, and they just looked at me like I was the scum of the earth, like they were just silently debating what to do about me, and I was just waiting on my Uber for yeah. some of it. Did you look like LA. that? at the time uh no i, <laughs> I'm picturing I in actually, my head. okay yeah i didn't look that different i had a i was probably wearing all blue bright blue and yeah. a bunch of gamer stuff so i was very out of place everywhere i go in the world and they're all dressed yeah. like they're going to solid church. black yeah like it's going to hot a funeral. and they're wearing big Amish, coats and stuff they're dressed like it's the fucking matrix and it's cool okay <laughs> I, d I i if i was gonna be a jew i'd go all the way i want those funny you think you could burns. hack it you think you could pass the tests absolutely i assume there I are tests the tests i mean what you study a little bit and you're in right it's just like uh no, latvian you orthodox. To, like, when i joined the latvian mitzvah. orthodox church it, it wasn't that hard what about adult latvian circumcision orthodox. no you yeah. go if you want to be like catholic they're like what i'll dunk you right now bro let's get baptized yeah. you come <laughs> to jews they look at you they're like hmm, too poor <laughs> they're like you know we don't know if you're what we're looking for with the direction we're moving our franchise so are they like, <laughs> they like scientology they're like scientology a really rich guy shows up and says he wants to be jewish and they like let me see your bank account yep we'll fast track you we'll get you in in a couple of weeks they're like oh what well you're a professional athlete yeah. you're in like we're, we're gonna we're gonna goose our numbers with that uh, we were talking about yeah, this I, a while back. I've, I've never been uh, baptized, which apparently is a real rare baptized. thing. I'm, I'm sure Harley hasn't either. But, but for for us Gentiles, it's it's. I don't know anyone else who wasn't baptized. I need to ask my parents what the fuck I'm happened. I'm baptized, man. They have dropped the ball. The, or maybe they made some sort of deal. Uh -huh. Didn't get baptized until I was like 19, but I still got still got baptized. You still knocked it out. You're you're covered, probably. Yeah, but I went through that whole childhood of Southern Baptist hell and damnation and brimstone. Nope, nope, nope. Don't nope, you nope, see nope, demons? Nope. That shit sucks. Yes, sometimes. You see real demons, so I'm not going to use you as a case cut, uh, a case study no. for baptism. And it's it's been. A I love the and frown, the over like uh like the the frown response <laughs> you get because of the fucking <laughs> <It's just laughs> lips. How do the demons Wait, make do you, you feel? See like... Demons? You see demons? Uh, it's a long, very long story, but the short version is uh much more prevalent and childhood than in adulthood i suffered from hallucinations uh not the schizophrenic kind where you really well i mean as a kid i thought they were like real real you know mm. um as an adult i might see things like a like a shadow person walk by super quick or something like that and i know it's not real and i know it's my mind playing tricks on me but as a child they were much more intense and i saw a whole bunch of crazy ghosts and demons and things that talked mm. to me and all sorts of crazy shit um, I think it was a combination of a very unpleasant medical condition I have and a very you toxic spoke about this on the show, right? Yeah, yeah. I did. I, I, I yeah, told the story this and stuff like that. Uh, so I, in the past, have seen things like demons and ghosts and supernatural events, and I do. Uh, I also have uh, very, very bizarre dreams where a very unpleasant thing often talks to me and kind of controls the scenario. Is that still happening now or pretty few uh, and far between? It was pretty much dead for a long time. I had a brief resurgence about three or four months ago. Very unpleasant dream. Uh, it was, uh, are we, are we going to do that? Are we going to go into paranormal? If we're going to do that, I'll take the clown nose off. It's kind of itchy. Yeah, you can take the clown <laughs> nose off. I think you take it off <laughs> anyways. <laughs> now I look a little no, bit more so like a clown. No, that's so much worse. Like, worse. Now you look like a, like a French Quebec like okay, daytime okay, like, uh, 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 ballet. Uh, anyone yeah. where I'm from knows what I'm talking about, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, continue. <laughs> the Quebecois people. Uh, yeah. But it's like, imagine you've uh, played something like Left 4 Dead, where there's like an AI, the director that directs your game. Imagine mm -hmm. when you go to sleep and you have a dream, it's lucid, so you're you and you're awake, and you might even know that you're dreaming, but you're not in control of it. And there is perhaps another malevolent director there putting you through some sort of godforsaken scenario. And if you break out of the scenario, you're probably going to a meeting room where you have to have a very unpleasant meeting of some kind. Ugh. Yeah, it's not fun. I don't sleep that well. I but, don't blame uh, you. I can't, I can't fix it. Uh, if I get some of my problems fixed, it may go away on its own, which would be great. Uh, I yeah. am Tuesday going to see the only specialist in the state that will talk to me, and then I might have, embarrassingly, yet another final answer for this stupid Peter problem. Peter Vinkman, right? Uh, no, no. It's a no. infectious disease specialist. Uh, I may have a protozoan infection, which is not good.
You don't, you don't want that. It's a little, it's, it's like a little kind of like a bacteria, but a little nastier and they live in your red blood cells. How do you get rid of those? I'm not entirely sure, and it doesn't seem like it always goes away. So that's why I'm going to, to a real doctor to get an answer. And if that, yeah, uh, hope you get good, good news. Another option would be to dream train to grow stronger every day. So when you do encounter the shadow man in the dream, mm -hmm. you are far more powerful than he ever expected you to be. I got a trick. Sell a supplement for that. We do. <laughs> yeah. it makes you come. We really do. Yeah, no, I no, do no, have a trick like, for like that. For real. Side, there's a dream supplement. Makes you real. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. The yeah. trick I learned is that if your heart rate gets over a certain amount, you almost always wake up. Like your body just has like a fail safe mechanism mm -hmm. if that happens. Mm -hmm. So if something's getting really fucked, I stop in the dream and concentrate and try to just hyperventilate, get my heart rate up super high and just imagine it. And usually I'll just poof right out after. Oh, like I got the answer for you. So okay. do you have a, do you have a smartwatch? Been tracking you it. You can yeah, you can set that thing to wake you up if it gets uh, above a certain point. Because I, I know my butt. Someone I know went to sleep after doing a bunch of cocaine and Adderall, and their and their Apple Watch <laughs> woke them up because they thought they were dying because they probably <laughs> were. Their, their heart rate was like 170 in their sleep or some shit. <laughs> in their sleep. <laughs> so, dude, that's like about this. That's like a that's like panic attack level of blood yeah. pressure. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah, telling you guys that. about crazy dreams and shit like that, right? According mm -hmm. to this, I dream only about 15 minutes a night, which is way less than what you need. And yeah. a lot goes on in those 15 minutes, I'll tell you. Either that or it's Kruger just shit. not reading right. Oh, there's uh, full-on full time dilation in our dreams, which is interesting, right? Oh, for right? sure. Like, big, like, how time, does, big time. That's, uh, that's a bizarre part about dreams that I would love to hear a doctor and a scientist talk about like how that works. How does time dilation in dreams? Because and it's, a man it of God. Let's like, cover you all wake the up pieces. sometimes exhausted. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't even know how that shit ended. <laughs> it went yeah. on. I was like I've camping been able to, for weeks. I've left a dream scenario. Like it had been a long dream, maybe running from bad guys through the woods or something. And then wake up and be like, all right, I'm awake. And then be like, oh shit, I got to get back in there. And tr and went back to sleep and got back in. I've done that before. That's how does that awesome fucking work? You do that. How does that work? I, I think it works because works. you want to go back. Your mind is already in the or mindset. Is it because that place is real? Because our minds have made it real. <laughs> but doesn't it, it feel very me? real sometimes? I think that our dreams might be more than just uh, our brains putting on a show for us. Like maybe maybe we're creating some kind of little pocket universe that that uh, that we're going off and playing around in. Maybe. I mean, yeah. I guess that kind of is what it is. It's, don't get your hopes your up though you're not going on. anywhere when you die simulation and you come no. out and you're like it's my dream this has world. nothing to do with that <laughs> Still, I, 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 like a, a huge amount of the time when i have a bad dream like i don't remember anything about it other than like i'll wake up like more anxious than normal and just be like uh i must have had some kind of weird dream I had that like but i can't nail down like what was it about it must have been kind of upsetting, but I have bad, no bad? like a clue. night terror, like where you jump up yelling and stuff. No, I've never had that. Like I've never like I, I, I don't keep saying really, things, and I'm only I, I picturing wake you in the clown makeup doing it. Like yeah, I don't sleeping wake up and nightmare. jumping up, screaming, <laughs> full clown costume. Uh, you do this know how I look like normally, terror. right? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Not clownish. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever had a nightmare. Or no, I, I when I was a kid, I woke myself up with nightmares occasionally. I remember I woke up during a, like a very brief nightmare where I was like, my mom was calling me to like run through the garage to get to her car so she could drive us to school. And I was closing the garage on my way out and I tripped and it, uh, the garage door crushed my head and I died. Mm. And I remember waking up from that, like, Oh my God, I never thought of that as a way to die <laughs> is, is having your head crushed at the age of seven. And then thinking like, Oh my God. And my mom and my brother would still be out in the car looking at like my head all over the drive. Oh, that was a terrible dream for a seven year old. Oh, my dream yeah, when I was seven one. is I would be at school and I'd be like, I'm here naked? Why did I come all the way here naked? What a <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> what a fuck up. Like, that would be my dream. I'd be like, I forgot everything, even my clothes? This is crazy. Why would this happen? And it's just my dream is me standing there stressing, being like, how yeah. am I going to spin this? I remember I'm like, like probably four years ago, which you know, maybe not even that long, you know, two or three years ago, I had like the first nightmare in many years where I hadn't done my homework and like, yeah. I, I had like not, or no, what it was, was I 
realized I was enrolled in a class that I had never gone to. And it was yeah, near the no. end of the semester. And like, I wake up from it or whatever. And it's like, I'm like actually like worried about something. And then I have yeah. to remind like, you're, oh. you're 32. You're not in school. Like that you're, so, it's fine. So here's the school nightmare that I have. Um, I haven't had it in a while, but maybe three, three to five years or something, but I used to have it all the time and way into adulthood. I have been enrolled in the wrong classes or I have taken more units than I thought on than I thought I had. And mm -hmm. I've never attended these classes, though. It's become news to me today that, yes, you do have a third and fourth period class. This is not a half day. You've mm -hmm. been working a half day for the, the year and you were supposed to be learning calculus and, and biology. And so now today there is a Scantron fucking test for both of those classes. And you have to cram right now for the test today. And there and, and all of a sudden they start handing out Scantron sheets while I'm looking in this book that's this thick. And it's just so scary. Just because I, I, I do everything. I, I'm I'm trying to talk to the teacher. I'm trying to like cheat. It nothing works. Yeah, I, I, the reason I think that scares me is because literally, I think it was my junior year of college. I was in like finance 3000 or some upper level finance course. And I, for the second, the second test, there were only three tests. So test two is halfway through the fucking semester. And I sit down next to this guy and through some conversation, I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm so glad the tests are fucking easy as shit. Because the tests were a joke. Like I got okay. like a That's high good. A. And like on the first one, I come from the second one. And I'm like, man, this class is so great. Easy as can be. I never come to it. And the guy I was talking to is like, yeah, but like attendance is like 15% of your grade. Mm. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no. no, that can't be true. I, can't, I couldn't professor? have made that kind of oversight. And so then I just like I had it in my head. I was like, OK, you cannot get back eight percent of this entire grade like you just have to go to every class from here on out and like ended up still doing fine because it was easy as shit but i remember like that was such a big fuck up because i had never just i had never blown off a class where they took attendance that always seemed like so over the line to me it, it that's just willing laziness and indignance and, and ignorance like yeah. and that's what i did <clears throat> I, I i was kicking myself for that it's like you fucking retard you moron! You missed. It didn't matter. You missed Taylor. every single day, other Taylor, than test one and test it two. It didn't matter then, and it doesn't matter now. You didn't oh, even no. need it, the degree. It didn't matter. Nope. You're right. It didn't matter at all. <laughs> Any it, of none you of use it, your degrees? None of it no, none of it matters. Yeah, got I use it degrees. every Don't week on this show. Yeah, you, you can really. you can get those printed off the internet. No one checks if they're real. No. I saw and a Reddit post the other day from a guy. Out of college, no one cares about your college transcript ever again. They care about your first job. I saw a Reddit post and the guy I was like, I've been living a lie for X amount of years. He's working as some kind of professional with a fake degree. He's not a doctor or anything. That's that's different. But, you know, he's, he's working a professional job where they think he went to some school somewhere and there's a diploma on his wall and everything. But that, that ain't real. Dude, he's like, I, a, uh, so I once easy. saw a professor who worked for like 10 years as a professor of ethics with a fake degree. You can get them printed right off. The That's hilarious. Go right now. There are multiple companies who make very good fake degrees, and they'll go so far as to have your, you know, references and everything. Like, like they'll, they'll, they're backed up. Like, real, uh, real quick. I mm -hmm. we've been having so much fun chatting. I just realized oh, we are that. overdue on our ads. So we're going to hear from a couple of part. wonderful, wonderful sponsors. This episode is brought to you by FaroDistro.com. FaroDistro.com. Do you want to get high? Like yeah. really, really high? Yeah. Then get your ass over to ferrodistro.com and try out the new Dab X Go. Say goodbye to messy dabbing with its sleek magnetic titanium design. This revolutionary electric dab, dab rig will take you to highs you've only dreamt of. Get it exclusively at ferrodistro.com with discount code PKA20 for 20% off. And if you're searching for the perfect concentrate to put in your Dab X, dive into Ferro Distro's THCA Diamond Sauce or the fan favorite HHC is better dabs. Fly high, mess free. Get yours at ferrodistro.com. Don't forget, use code PKA20 for 20% off your entire order. 20% off the Dab X Go. Very high quality smoking implement to their fellows. A dab rig. Please use responsibly. Uh, again, if you decide to go for the edibles, uh, the, the 500 milligram of pop ones, these are no joke. Don't think we're, we're memeing on you. Don't think we're joking and that you should take a lot of these. 
if you have a high tolerance, I trust you. You know, you're you're a, a big boy or girl. Who are we kidding? Boy. Um, so check this out. Uh, if you aren't that intense on the super powerful gummies, try out the 25 milligram ones. They have 25 milligram, much more normally dosed gummies called the HHC is better or the Delta 8 is better over on their website. 20% off on all of those as well with PKA20. And if edibles as a whole are a little too little too much, too, too rich for your blood, a little too much THC, the HHC is better cart. These are very high quality. They taste great and they get you high. Uh, so... HHC, it's stronger than Delta 8. So if all you've had is Delta 8 uh, and you jump up to HHC and you want to get a similar feeling, just do a little less uh, or maybe maybe a moderate amount less because it is, I think, noticeably stronger, especially in the vapes. So check it out. PKA 20, 20% off. Yeah, particularly in the vapes, the to HHC me, is stronger. To me, the difference in HHC edibles and Delta 8 edibles isn't necessarily a strength thing, but more of a yeah. different high, which I don't like when people say, oh, this one gives me a giggly high. But it actually does make, it's a different high. It is. And also these little dab things they have that you cut the little nipple off and you just squeeze it into the dab rig instead of having to like carve stuff and like pile it in all annoying. This shit is great. It's the easiest way I've ever dabbed and it gets you high as shit. So check it out. PK 20, 20% off FaroDistro.com. Excellent products and please use responsibly. They are not a joke. Uh, this episode Clearly also not. brought to you by Smooth. Better Health. Better Help. This episode of PKA is brought to you by today's sponsor, BetterHelp. So let's hear a little about their service. Life is full of twists and turns, and it's important for you to show up for yourself through it all. Mental and dental, gotta take care of it all. We're very serious about everyone taking care of their mental or their physical health here on PKA and maintaining a healthy physique. But mental health is just as important, and you need to work to keep your mind in shape as well as your body. Start getting in the mental reps with the help of a professional over at BetterHelp. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely, uh, done securely online, available to people all over the world. It's super simple and made to easily get connected with a therapist. No hassle as soon as you're ready. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, get going with BetterHelp. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Invest in your mental well-being now and get started with our partner, BetterHelp. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. They've got a special deal for our listeners, saving 10% off your first month over at betterhelp.com slash PKA. That's 10%, 10% folks, off your first month of online therapy over at betterhelp.com slash PKA. That's 10% off your first month of online therapy over at betterhelp.com slash PKA. Check it out if you are... You go ahead. I got a friend that used our code and um, they keep thanking me for for getting on there. I know a lot of people, there's like a... There's still a stigma about mental health and going to see the guy and going through the steps of getting the the um, the referral and the appointment to go to a traditional psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever is it can be embarrassing and people just don't want it on their, you know, on their mind and doing mm-hmm. it. But doing telemedicine and, and getting somebody online, like it's real quick and easy and you get a professional who will talk to you and, you know, listen to what you have to say. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're feeling like you could need you need a little assistance, a little help, uh, better help. Give it a shot. Betterhelp.com slash PKA. That's 10% off. Uh, invest in your mental well-being. Start yeah. feeling better. Don't do anything silly. There's nothing after this. Go. This is it. There's, this is this does I seem agree. to be it, folks. And this episode, of course, brought to you by Lock and Load, the premium, premium ejaculation yeah. increasing supplement, taking the world by storm, according to me. Uh, <laughs> code PKA, code JIZ. If you Jeez. thought we were memeing or joking about this stuff, guess again. And guess what? You don't need more than one bottle to get the full effects. This is a month supply. It's a month supply. It's a lot of fucking pills. You have to take nine a day. If we were trying to, if we were trying to spoof on your asses and be like, ha ha ha, they're just paying for stuff that's not going to make them come more. We would have told you to take one pill a day, and we wouldn't have sent Derek back to the drawing board three times about sunflower lecithin. Because we knew that if people are going to be busting, we need powdered sunflower lecithin. Genuinely, it took us months. We, we set the project, this project back months until we got powdered sunflower lecithin added. Uh, literally, Kyle and I did. We were like, we can't move yeah. forward without it. We, we This the, actually has to work. Otherwise, it's not an actual it's half product. The point. Yeah. It's, it's a uh, huge part of it. Yeah. So I'm so proud out. that that shit works. I, I tell I know, my dad too. knows about it. Like I, I tell everybody about it. And... I'm, I'm like the thing about it is it works. It, it works. It's not like some. Uh, there's a lot of nonsense that people sell. When I saw I saw Jocko Wilnick has an energy drink. It's like, who's buying this? Do you, 
Like, why are you buying it, right? Now, More here's expensive why I, monster, probably. If, look, I, and may, maybe we'll sell an energy drink someday, but the reason that I would tell you then and the reason I would do it now is I would say, hey, look, someone offered us a, an energy drink partnership. This is not the best energy drink, energy drink in the world, but you know what? It tastes good, and when you buy it, we make money. So if you want to support us, buy some energy drinks. I'm not going to lie to you and tell, oh, yeah, the PKA energy drink is the best on the market. But yeah. with this, it is. We did it. Yes. We have the best cum enhancing supplement in the world on the market. Nothing comes close. <laughs> I like it, it's <laughs> damn. We have to fuck. We need that. We, we need to that. keep that line. Hang Nothing that comes one. close. Damn. All right. I'm writing that down. Nothing comes. I, close. I thought I thought we should do camouflage bottles, and the slogan could be she'll never see it coming. Yes. That, that's, yeah. that's also my yes. camouflage Nanda, my idea. It would also be better if you could change the color so that you blow a camouflage pattern. Let's do uh, adding flavors. Let's do an anti woke one with camo, and then mm, let's oh do a God. woke one with a gay with flag. Yeah. Yes, a yeah. flag. No, no, the trans flag. Whatever, man. I don't so, care. The anybody yeah. who yeah. enjoys whatever. whatever, you're just blowing patterns all over the wall. But let's get both yep. groups with a, with a hammer sickle. <laughs> whatever, <Why not>? man. <laughs> what, whatever <laughs> gets your rocks off. Communists need to come to you know. Well, just saying. Yeah. Anyway, if you, if you need to jizz more, that's your ticket right there, folks. That is that's your ticket. ticket right Check there. it out. Code PKA or code Jizz, and both of those codes, of course, work for ten percent off everything on Derek's site on Gorilla Mind. So if you want pre workouts, protein powders, weight loss supplements, the Dream Gorilla Dream, the Dream supplement that uh, Kyle's taken before that said helped him to lucid dream better. Uh, check it out. Derek's got a bunch of fascinating, cool products over there, and Code PK works for all of them. But come on, don't uh, lead with the cum pills, guys. You know that's exciting. <laughs> and that's it. Those are all the sponsors. Thank you to FaroDistro.com. Thank you to BetterHelp, and thank you to lot to ourselves at Lock and Load. My God, I hit that DabX during that ad read, and it was so strong. <laughs> it was so strong. The thing's filthy, though. I know somebody's going to say that, and you're absolutely right. It's filthy, and it's time to wash it. And, You've uh, been was, using it so much. <laughs> I've been, I have, I really have. I, I love it. I like it a lot. Yeah, the it's so convenient, rules. but it's dirty. I need to. That's always it. like I'm the experience to. when you go to somebody else's house. Like when you host guests and you hand them your rig oh, or whatever, it would be crystal clear. If you came yeah. Over. But then you go to somebody else's house and they're like, here, man, take a hit of this. And it's got like an eighth of an inch of like solid black <laughs> resin at the bottom. And it's you can smell it from like eight feet away. And you're like, does that really filter anything? I think it makes it dirtier. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that healing is going to taste cordyceps. like nasty cordyceps. water. Yeah, you're cordyceps. healing yeah. cordyceps. Yeah, but, uh, I, you're yeah. right about that. I, when I have company ever, over, I like to clean my, my bongs entirely spotless. It's just yeah, black. for sure. I mean, they're gonna put their mouth on it. You know, yeah. it's like, like it would be like giving them dirty silverware or or dirty plates or something at dinner. Exactly, you know? but yeah, it, it, a lot of people seem to not care. Uh, I think I there's like a, a frat boy, host. like there's like a like a a dude bro kind of attitude of like fuck it, you know. But but that was twenty years ago or so. So yeah, hey, it's a gross attitude ago. to have in your thirties. Yeah, it, it was a gross attitude in your 20s I, yeah. <laughs> I remember i remember distinctly being so grossed out by my drug dealer's bong that i wouldn't hit it and and i think i told him it was just so nasty there was there was visible dust bunnies that had stuck to it because it was sticky you know what i mean like like Ugh. you could see oh. that dust was adhering to it like if, if, you, if you took some duct tape and rolled it out and left it out for a few days like that happened because the whole thing is uh. sticky so that means it hasn't yeah. been cleaned in at least like six months. Months, Minimum. months, and months. Who fucking you can't knows? spring for like Years. a bottle of isopropyl alcohol the, and But then the salt. thing about that is, some people, the time thing doesn't work for some people because if you smoke a lot, this guy was a drug dealer first of all, who yeah. smoked weed in his basement all day every day with his boys. So there are four men downstairs in a basement watching TV and playing video games with a grow room next to them with thirty plants or some shit. They're continuously burning that bong, so it's oh, yeah. so filthy. It's I don't know what kind of herpes these cocksuckers have. So either. they're, they're sitting on, they're sitting thing. around all day doing nothing, and none of them can clean the bong. Filthy. That's, I mean, that's how, how drug dealers work. Filthy. I don't know how many drug dealers you've met. They don't tend to be super well organized or on time or clean or to be uh, fair. orbiting the same planet we are. I've told that drug dealer story multiple times, so I'll be quick, but. He was a loser. 
And I don't mean that as an insult, because sometimes when people will call somebody a loser, what they mean is you don't try hard enough to win. You yeah. don't put you don't do the thing that you could do that would be a win. They don't mean you can't win. They mean you won't win. This guy couldn't win. This guy <laughs> couldn't win, no matter how hard he tried. It was oh, just no. me and him one time. And he was like, hey, I, first of all, he's skinny as a rail. He's, he's like 90 pounds or something. And he was asking me how to gain weight. And I was just like, you know, you eat more. And he's got this weight gain mm -hmm. supplement that he's eating two scoops of a day, two big scoops of a day. And he's talking about this stuff. But he's the guy who had been roofing and they were putting tin on a roof. The guy at the bottom was on meth, pushed the tin up too fast and caught our drug dealer's hand and sliced the tendons in his hand. So his hand didn't work right anymore. So he couldn't oh be that kind God. of carp. So he loses that job. So then he's... He's working like concrete and he's hammering rebar into concrete. It's uh, like most of the way hard in a basement. They're mm -hmm. putting the rebar into it and the hammer chips. And when that happens, that 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 kind of steel that's on a hammer, when it chips off, it does so at a real high speeds just because of the nature of the way that steel is made, mm -hmm. the way it's tempered. <laughs> it went into his chest and nobody knew it until they saw the blood start running down his chest. And just like flowing. And they're like, what is that? What is that? They thought it was a gunshot wound at the ER. They were like, who shot you? Who shot you? And he's like, no one shot me. The hand, we, so we don't know what. So then he loses that job. And he's oh out of that God. job for a while. So he thinks, man, I'm depressed. You know what? I need something to do in my spare time while I recuperate. I'm going to get a little three-wheeler, a little four-wheeler type thing, a little ATV. He's in a backyard. It's dusk. You know, the, the sun's setting, but you can still see well enough to see if this thing's going to be worth buying. And then <clears throat> with his right hand, he's hitting the accelerator. Rum, 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 just sitting there in the yard. His left is sitting, you know, just hanging by his side. He didn't know it, but the chain cover was off of the, the ATV, the thing that covers the chain that spins, that turns the tires. His left hand goes in the chain while he's spinning it up and it eats it takes the tip off one finger, like a good bit of it, like an inch of a finger gone. And the next one is like really mushed up. Like the whole nail oh is destroyed. And like, this guy's like the anti Mr. Magoo. He can't avoid things. He gets maimed basically. And so now he's sitting there like, like, like that guy in the Seinfeld with the two broken thumbs, just crippled. Yeah. And, and it wasn't long after mm -hmm. that, after he told me that whole set that this is why he became a drug dealer. This is his origin story, right? For his, what other ability. job are you going to do? Yeah. Truck should, driver. Truck driver. So he's driving a truck, selling weed. These are his two jobs, living in a house that his wife's family owns. So he's doing the best he can. You know, she cheated on him and left him. And then he had to leave that house. And then he lost the truck. Oh. And that's the last I heard, because, you know, then I needed a new drug dealer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a sad set of circumstances. What a series of unfortunate events. He didn't want to be a drug dealer. He didn't have any other choice. I'm he sure was he okay. Me. That guy was actually pushed into it. Like it seems like yeah. he, he had no other option other than that. Sucks. God was just <laughs> like wrong career, wrong career. Okay, I always wanted you to be a drug dealer. Yeah, I want you to sell drugs, my son. It was like, such a sad story. Yeah. He didn't want him to do anything because then the you know the drug career got crushed when his wife, you know, cheated on him and kicked him out of the house. And, and now it's now a now terrible career to sell weed because it's legal. Fucking yep. uh, increasingly everywhere. No, no, I think it's. I think a lot of people. I think what a lot of people do is bring large amounts of weed from legal states into the states where it's still illegal. And it's that's big business. Very big business. Oh, I sure. walk around my neighborhood here in Texas and I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I very often find trash blowing around or like sitting outside of people's houses. Mm -hmm. That's uh, cannabis products, clearly like California, Colorado, Washington, uh, branded products, not Delta mm -hmm. eight, not HHC like real cannabis and i find that junk all the time just in my neighborhood i'm not even, i'm not like in the suburbs right and god i went to the park the other night and there were two mormon kids smoking weed that was a whole what? fun thing yeah how do you know uh, they were mormon well they were wearing uh white shirts black dress pants dress shoes clean cut tall overly happy looking and they were carrying large black books that i was a little bit too far away from to read and they had bicycles so okay. Yeah. You nailed it. You really Probably, painted a picture for me. Maybe yeah. Jehovah's <laughs> Witnesses, but they were young. These no, nope, like they're Mormons. Guys, Don't second guess yourself. When you you're trying it. to, you got what, it. what is it they make you do when you're a teenager, where you have to go out and proselytize uh, and get your number of hours? Mission or yeah, yeah, maybe mission, mission something, like, something that. like that. And it just looked like they'd had a long day of being told no, 
and they were just sitting at the park sharing what I assumed to be a joint. It smelled like weed. So, <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, gotta I, be a, a really shit thing to have to do as a Mormon is like, just because like I, when I lived in Idaho, I, I had a bunch of Mormon rate? friends and Super I remember wild. like they, I would like ask them and be like, where was your mission or your service? And some of them would be like, oh, <laughs> dude, I got to go to Argentina Wow. And I was in this like little like village and I played soccer with the kids and it was so much fun. And like everybody gets along and they're so sweet. And you just talk to him about God. And then you talk to someone else and be like, well, damn, I talked to Jerry and he said he got to go to Argentina. That's fucking sick. Like, where did you go? And he's like, I went to Colorado. Oh. And it's like, <laughs> so you went like one state away. And he's like, yeah. And it was Western Colorado. Like I have so, family there. Like and it's, it's like, oh, I think, you think about kind of, it. You just get luck of the draw, I guess. Their success rate has to be one in a fucking 5,000 or something. If yeah. we're talking about going somewhere and, and them saying, no, I've never heard of God. And you being like, could I come in and tell you about his love? And they're like, oh, I've got all day. And then you going in there, day. go the whole spiel and them brought wide-eyed nodding along and smiling bigger and bigger as you go on telling them the whole story and just ask at the end they're like how much do you want for the book and they're like getting all their money together to buy a bible and you're like that's the thing it's free and you <sighs> hand it to them how long how often does that shit happen never Probably never rarely. not yeah. 15 uh, 36 or some shit in and, and some shithole part of the world that shit doesn't happen everybody knows about god yeah it's everybody christianity they know everywhere about. Uh, they don't know about Satan. I got a great relative story for this. When I was yeah. in college, I did door-to-door -door Satanism. And I went door-to-door -door <laughs> in Mississippi trying to convert people to Satanism. I did this because my college professor required that we do something subversive to graduate. It was like freshman psychology, maybe sophomore psychology. You have to be a guy who wears a dress. You have to try to get things without paying. You have to do something that's socially unacceptable. And then you have to write mm -hmm. about your experiences uh, of being shamed or shunned by other people in, in the society, blah, blah, blah. And me, being the professional clown that I am, I uh, got together with one of my good friends who ironically was a youth minister. And we got a little fake book with an upside down cross on it. And we went door to door to pitch uh, Satanism. And we, we, I said I was from the post levian Satanism church, the more modern church of Satan I don't think existed or was big at the time. And the responses were, horrible it was a lot yeah. of doors slammed in the I'm face sure. we covered maybe like a hundred houses before we gave up um there was one old lady i remember her eyes got all big and like kind of shaky like those like those ladies on fox news when they get a little cranked up and she was like I, i'm a prayer warrior you can't you can't come in here and just like uh, <laughs> she was like yelling at me and like doing bible verses through like a little glass door with bars um <laughs> It was. I remember there was this. And you've been seeing the Shadow Man ever since. You've been seeing the Shadow Man. This was all jokes. And this older she said a bunch of shit in Latin. Waved her hand around in the air. Then I smelled sulfur. We got out of there. She said, "Sick." Stuff like I couldn't even understand it. It was almost like speaking in tongues and nonsense. Uh, like I was going to say, there was an older guy who, God said, bless him, tried to be helpful. And he was like, yeah. have you not heard of the love of Lord and the Jesus Christ and the sort of standard like, I would hate to see you go astray. Have you read the Bible? And I was like, yeah, I read it. It's pretty much all nonsense. Satan's the way, man. And just like totally ignored it. And he got super mad. Uh, the funniest group was uh, there were these two uh, big fat black guys in a little kid's swimming pool in their front lawn full of like it was a hot ass day and they were just sitting in this little kids pool together big fat dudes tight wet shirts that had little like kool-aid or some sort of like little <laughs> fruity drink or something in the shade and we came up to pitch them door-to-door -door satanism and they told us absolutely not it's like we just told the mormons no i'm telling you no <laughs> yeah. get out of here i'm trying to have a nice day i don't want to hear about none of this religious crap uh, it was a, it was an interesting experience and not like one single person was not offended and not one single person uh, took it seriously or even considered the option. And I've had a very interesting paper and a, a fun experience. Dude, my, my subversive that... action would have been to lie about what I did and write an easy paper. Oh, that would have been so much smarter. Oh, yeah. I, I'm lying. Oh, you thought I was a good paper? I lied. It's all made up. Subverted. <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> I cheated. I cheated. <laughs> and I got away with it, too. So that, that would be my report. My subversive I, I thing is I learned your address, professor. Speaking I know of getting where away you with live. It. 
Uh, like, you guys like weird news stories. Did you see the aliens in Peru? They were actually illegal miners with stolen jetpacks trying to scare people away Scooby-Doo style. style. I did not see that. That's it's hilarious. A, it's a real story. I, I did it because I'm doing news stuff now. Weird transition in life. Uh, there were locals in Peru that were reporting that UFOs hovering a couple meters off the ground were harassing the village. And they even tried to kidnap a 15-year-old girl. And they complained enough to where the police actually sent somebody out there to inspect it. And the police somehow determined uh, that they were actually illegal gold miners and that they had a plan to, I, I, I don't know where they got the money for the jetpacks, but the, the plan gold. was to, yeah, they go, oh yeah, duh, the gold, to scare away the locals. I don't know if they had costumes, but the locals thought they were UFOs and they were terrified. And the, the first thing I could think is Scooby-Doo is real. Like when they arrested him, did they say in Peruvian uh, accent Spanish, which I can't do for the life of me? Uh, it's like, I know we would have got away with it if it weren't for you, your kids, and that darn know. talking dog. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have been fooled line. by that. I would know that wasn't an alien. Yeah, but you don't live in a rural village in Peru. <laughs> look, look, here's that what I love true. about this. She looks, she is not happy about this. She is not presenting this as the silly flying man who went to our visit no village tried, she's like tried this is the man who tried to girl. take me yeah <laughs> this is this the, is this is the night demon, <laughs> the night demon. <laughs> dude they oh <laughs> all right i see no resemblance whatsoever I, like none i, don't I know. love dude, it so no. sweet i love right? it just flying around like that that's awesome i bet it is too uh, look there are very few I don't know, gadgets or whatever that I'm jelly about or, or that I want to get on and try. But th those jetpacks, I, oh, I would man. love to do that. I'm going to try to find some way to goof around on one. Like what, what he's doing now, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. But it's not worth, the juice isn't worth the squeeze for me. I wouldn't want to mm -hmm. go through that to see that view. I'd rather just land a helicopter up there and look maybe or something. I don't know. I, I would, that ride, he broke his leg doing it last time, right? He's going to be uh, careful this what, what if this is Woody's actual trip? What if he's lying about what he's doing and he's actually going down to Peru just to harass locals for fun? He's harassing locals. Yeah. He's the Peruvian night demon. Holy shit. Yeah. It's been Woody this whole time. I'd like yeah. if he did stuff like that. <laughs> that would actually be amazing if Woody came back and he had footage like with GoPros on the jetpacks just hovering over the village, scaring the locals. He'll be into yeah. jetpacks before you know it. Like he'll Those get bored of fucking of, cool. They are cool, and I bet they're actually. I was going to say, I bet they're wildly expensive. I bet they're probably a couple hundred a grand. I think, like, like, okay. like genuinely, like it costs. I mean, that's a lot of money, but it is. It's in like it's in like the plasma TV phase of it. Like these things will be three grand in ten years. Remember the movie The Rocketeer? When yes. I was a kid, there's 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 a movie called The Rocketeer, and the the premise is that there's a jetpack made maybe by a Nazi scientist. I'm not sure. Nazis are definitely after oh, it. I was thinking of and. Uh, and it falls into this guy's uh, possession and he becomes the Rocketeer who's sort of a 1930s era superhero of sorts. Yeah. It's a silly little all that, movie. All this is filmed in all that sepia tone kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's an okay movie. But the, the, what I'm saying is the idea of just a jetpack that worked in the 90s was enough to be a superhero. And now you can get one for like three or four hundred grand. Like the but cost they don't of the work house. like yeah. the rocketeer the jetpack that they don't go that far they're super loud yeah. they're kind of janky it's not like you just put on something the size of a backpack and you fly it's not cool but they do have this other That's weird true. thing uh if you launch from an airplane and you have a parachute on there's this other kind of jetpack i think it's like on the front of you it's essentially like small propellers and like a little wing you can hold on to and kind of steer around Let's get a stuff. plane yeah that feels like it's cheating <laughs> yeah. doesn't it yeah, I, that's where I always end up. When, whenever you, I'll, I'll say this, when we would go to uh, Sporting Clay's events, these guys would have golf carts that cost $20,000 for a golf cart, $20,000, $25,000 golf carts, and they'd look like Hummers, or they'd be stretch golf carts. They'd be all pimped out. And I just remember thinking, I'd rather have the cheapest car than the most expensive golf cart. I, I'd rather get the most expensive, yeah. I'd, I'd rather get the cheapest F-150 they make, which is $19,999, than that pimped out golf cart because then i'd have an f-150 that would last the next decade and do f-150 type shit i i, I don't know i always felt you're, that way. you're not rich enough to get it your money actually not. still matters to you or maybe you didn't grow up with wealth you know some of you know some of those pleats I don't like out the there idea of that throwing grew up it away <laughs> that that's part of it too there's something about just throwing money away 
on something silly like that. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I no, throw money but away what you're doing is you're showing your value. Like you're showing you are so rich. This is how much you can throw away because from the time you've been old enough mm-hmm. to talk, you've been taught that's how society and for the rich people, that is kind of how society works that you need to one up people and you need to show them exactly who you are by your extravagance is my understanding. See, I'm not talking about like guys that. like that. I'm talking about a guy who just makes it just look, this is, these aren't millionaires. No, nah, I, I mean, thought we were talking about the ultra rich here, like maybe old. No, guy. this is at the shotgun tournament. You know, like, like the, I'm, what I'm saying is they would make that decision. They had the same decisions I, I, I would have to make, you know, a $20,000 truck or a $20,000 golf cart. And they pick golf cart for some reason, I think is, no. is what I'm describing. The, the people that, that are really throwing money away have those crazy shotguns that are six figures and stuff like that. That's, I mean, you know, a six figure shotgun. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Look at this. All right, see, this is fun. This is redneck engineering. I can get on board with oh, some yeah. shit like this. I'm on board yeah. with that. Looks very unsafe. I'm here for it. I like having a fun ray in the background better though. Look at that. Oh, that car. It's Corvette. Oh yeah. It's a silly thing he's created there. There you go. Oh Ooh, boy. <laughs> see, that's yeah, like you... uh the what is that? The general. It's a yep. General Lee right there. Yeah, the General Lee. Didn't age that well. No, I don't know. Is that have you seen those uh, those pictures of people getting mad on social media where it's like some British guy, like like after a soccer game wearing like the the United Kingdom flag, and people mm. are like, in today, in this day and age, really? And people it's looking like, to cancel somebody for that's anything. A, to... that's a Union Jack retard. Like that's <laughs> that's not even the same thing. They can't tell the difference. No. They are a little similar, but not That's similar cool. enough that you can't see the difference. That is neat, That's, but like you said, what would the, the, the fucking point of that be? That, I mean, that's if, fairly if cheap. If it costs the same as a regular oh, guy like that. Okay, that's, that's, the cable guys one. that's great. That's Mater. Mater. That's Mater. We were talking about Mater. Good old Larry earlier. the fake cable guy. His yuppie comedy was weird. I never watched his yuppie comedy. Yuppie oh, this comedy. one sucks. These people should be oh. released from the contest. Oh, they're children. Okay, that's fine. I, I like yeah. when people do cardboard. Remember that YouTube series at 15 years ago, like oh. Cardboard Warfare? Yeah. I Damn, that I, was so I cool. That. I love that. I would love to like go out in the woods and fight with cardboard. Yeah, be when, a I fun was, time. when I was 10, that would have been pretty fun. Well, it could still be fun today. You know, you just have to have a little imagination. Think about it like a like a YouTube video. We've got not not just like cardboard sticks you're hitting each other with, but like cardboard cannons and guns and cardboard traps. It's a little bit more like airsoft paintball. Maybe. Yeah. Why wouldn't we just play paintball or airsoft? I would rather just play paintball. Honestly, I have not played yeah. paintball in what? When did we go to Joliet? 11, 12 years ago. So it's Something been like that. Yeah. Eleven or twelve I, years since I played. I paintball. think somebody may have stolen my paintball guns. I I couldn't find them the other day. I don't know where they are. I got to do a real look feds. around. Uh, oh, he's got man. an illegally modified paintball <laughs> gun. The Fed stick your paintball guns. Just put all... marbles in it. Everybody, take cover. <laughs> There's a ten percent chance the Feds took my paintball gun. I'll have to double check. They're not supposed to, obviously, but but um, they could have accidentally because they took all sorts of shit that turned out to like not be weapons or not be pertinent and stuff. I was always getting stuff back. Anyway, you can still own a lot of things, right? Yeah, I can have black powder guns and cannons and mortars and all sorts of crazy stuff. I'd but, love, um, I would love to see you get into some kind of altercation and like somebody breaks into your house or something and there you are. You're just like, just give me a minute. We're working on it. Got to get the wick going. <laughs> the wick. <laughs> yeah. You got to load your own like custom wick no. in there. Get like a flint rock. <laughs> you in so much trouble. No, the, la- the last thing like- the, 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 the criminal hears as he's like in Kyle's dark foyer is like Kyle go loose. And then he just, he just, he just a bolt fires right through his rib cage. And then but, he, I mean, and the bullet you're there, shooting is going to be like this big. He hears, knock, draw, knock, <laughs> draw loose. loose. <laughs> just firing That's what you don't want to. Did you hear that in modern times? You know, you've made a wrong turn. <laughs> yeah, I can get a bunch of uh, different silly weapons, but, you know, I don't really. To see and they do. You'd be surprised. The air rifles are incredibly powerful and and they reload quickly. And Ooh, uh, uh, those little Bud K crossbows, the little ones with the really heavy strings, they shoot darts about little metal darts, steel darts this big. You can yeah. shoot them; they'll punch right through walls and stuff. Oh man! Yeah, I never mess with crossbows too much. I've got a crossbow, um, like a modern crossbow that's that's pretty good. It probably shoots 400 feet per second or high threes. Like it would 
it, it shoots super accurately. That's the thing that's surprising about bows in general is they're really accurate. Um, maybe close to as accurate as a gun is at close range, you know, 50 yards or something. I mean, at that All kind of speed, it should go through together. you, right? Wouldn't that go through a person? Probably? Yeah. Yeah, arrows go through people. Um, but I thought bolts go through people. Uh, when you shoot a deer with a, even with a, you know, broadhead, so the front of its blades mm-hmm. sticking out, um, it goes right through them all the way through and comes out the other side and sticks mm-hmm. in the ground as long as you don't hit a bone. Well, if you do hit a bone, it's massive trauma, and I guess that deer's going nowhere. Yeah, you would think they're, they're tough, man. They're, they'll just go. You know, if you they'll run anyway. You can you can cut their heart in half, and they've got enough giddy up and go to sprint for maybe five seconds but five seconds at deer speed is way down there you know yeah it'd be like 200 yards i know um maybe not that far but but they'll run sometimes uh you know so always with a bow i've never seen one get shot with a bow and just drop you know like dead unless you shot it in the spine but it's not dropping dead it's just paralyzed from the waist down uh one of the rednecks as a kid told me a story i didn't believe he said he jumped off a deer stand with a spear and stabbed one in the back and it went through the front of his heart and everybody was like yeah sure i, I bet no. you did guaranteed um, no i don't believe that uh, i would have to see some shit like that this was uh, a little because... bit before the era of cell phones he has returned welcome back oh yeah my yeah I'm sorry to... about that no worries no worries to, it happens to, to... to the best of us because because deer are super wily the uh, you so you got the reason you're in the deer stand is you're getting out of its peripheral cone of vision right you're above where its sight line and the high part of its sight line ends so he's gonna you gotta jump from pretty high up and when you jump you would have to do so silently it's not like the goddamn movies where you're just like no if you made a noise when you leapt off with a spear he'd run he'd run before you you fell through the air fast enough to get to him that that shit wouldn't work no, I um, totally agree that that story was BS, but that's yeah. probably the most ludicrous deer kill I've ever heard anybody in my community claim that they got. Uh, Harley, I don't know if you heard, there's a guy who said he jumped off a deer stand and stabbed one with a spear. Didn't believe that at all. Total nonsense. Like, falling, like Sparta. Uh, deers, this is like one of those uh, tree things. Like I, a, yeah, I guess he jumped out tree. of a tree. Uh, Herrera, I love like uh, looking how deep certain things go like when i was buying cameras camera equipment i mean firearms is like a whole thing i did it when i was i was buying like a like a like airsoft so there was just like replica stuff but i was like fuck this stuff goes so deep and i I was just in the hunting store looking at how deep hunting stuff goes and i'm like you could be 30 feet in a tree with like food laid all around you with special scents that attracts all the animals and you could be sitting up there cooking on like a little hot plate and like playing a uh, steam deck. <laughs> and then a, a, a deer comes and you could pull out like the sickest rifle with a scope on it. Just shoot right down onto its head. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah like Rifle deer. hunting is is so not fair if you have any skill with a gun at all. Um, that deer gun- gets within 100 yards. It's toast. Even if you don't. Well, it's less really than that. Further yeah. away. Um, if you're if you're okay with a gun, then killing a deer at a hundred yards is as easy as clicking on one on a video game. You know, you you, it's 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 actual point and click. It's point and pull. You if know, you got a sight, if you're over. doing iron sights, a little trickier. Yeah, you got a scope and a rifle and everything like Harley's talking about. But bow hunting was always really challenging. Um, and I would I had special soap, you know, so you wouldn't have because you can't use deodorant because they'll smell the goddamn deodorant. So I'm mm-hmm. out there smelling like a goddamn caveman mm-hmm. and like keeping my boots in a plastic bag so nothing ever touches them except for the wilderness. It gets kind of silly. But Man, I then, wish we, yeah, sorry, go. I, I mean, I've also been out there and had to piss and pissed right out of my deer stand on the ground below me. And I'm thinking like, this Probably isn't adding up. Idea. This but then the deer cunt came model. and they didn't smell the piss and it blew my mind. It's like all the money I've wasted on soaps and scent blockers. Some they, deer. I took a leak here and they didn't even fucking care. <laughs> I wish we had like a, a, a game on this planet like a, an animal that's putting up a serious fight. And so like the hunters that wanted to go and hunt those, like it's fine. And yeah. uh, it's like over there and it's not, but when you go, like, I wish we had like a, a, a skull Island that's accessible Ooh. and people can go and be like, yeah, I'm going to skull yeah. Island. I'm going to yeah. hunt. And like, like I you're the there, predator. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you got to be careful. And, and yeah. 
and it's I like honestly, I want some of them rhinos, hippos, dangerous shit. That if you're not paying attention, it no, fuck you up. the shit no, that's monster. not even here, like big insects, and like we got like, and I want like Starlink above Skull Island so that they can stream yes. from their body cams. Be like, yo, what's up, oh, guys? Uh, there's a fucking giant praying mantis over there, uh, <laughs> but I obviously saved up for the AK that you guys hooked with the drum magazine, so this is gonna be sick. And then like his chat donation goes off. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And, it's and then they use, they use the switch points to take a bet if he's gonna shoot it or if it's gonna slice him in half. Oh but it's gotta God. be yeah, a place poles. where the but monsters really, you're like usually him, win. Like you don't want to kill all the monsters. You want the monsters to mostly kill the people. A giant praying mantis is a real terrifying opponent, by the way. Yes, especially yeah. if it yeah. moves at the same speed as a small one, but scaled up. It would be like hundreds, maybe thousands of miles an hour. It would be like this this thing that would like yeah. delete a house in an instant. We'd lose to bugs yeah, if they were made. Well, let's not make it that big. Let's, let's make it like the size of a Volkswagen. No, as real as he got, though, it made it instantly not fun when he like got real with it. It's like, yeah, if it moves as fast as it does in your life, you're like, oh, yeah, it's not even fun to stream. He's yeah. like, there's a giant prank, man. This is foo. And it's and you're just dead. like gone. Yeah, the the camera's like. You're like you three would have steps to onto on the it, beach of Skull Island before you're getting 360 vision. <laughs> Sorry. I know. I always, that was the. That was what intrigued me about the Jurassic Park, maybe three, um, was that there was the, the, the B side line was the hunters who were going to Jurassic Park to hunt dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, that would be fucking cool. I'd love yeah. to shoot a dinosaur. Like, that would be awesome. Ah. Get fucking dinosaurs. I don't feel sorry for them. I'd feel sorry for deer. Like, even if I could shoot one with a gun, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd feel sorry for him. You see that I, video of the guy has the gun at the deer and it like comes right up to the barrel and like yeah. moves past it and like snuggles him and he's like, okay. okay. I thought you were about to tell me he just blasted it. And he's just nah, like, there's I was sure. watching the video being he's like, choking it out. <laughs> he it out. <laughs> it's way cooler. The deer in a blood choke. No, I mean, like you're talking about a praying mantis the size of a Volkswagen bug, which is insane. No one yeah. would have a chance against that. It'd be so fast. You think about a think about a praying people. mantis. Think about a twenty pound praying mantis. Just twenty pounds. And think about that. Look in the corner of your room right now and picture a <laughs> a, a four foot tall like that. twenty pound praying mantis. Low key and tell the me worst your level size, of confidence. Actually. It's like worse than a big one because it's like, it's like taking like it, twenty bites to kill you. Yeah. And it can it's hide in your house. Even? Are those they those terrifying yeah. sharp mandibles Pinsters, to like latch yeah. onto you and then just eat your calf as you're like ah, 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 freaking out. Like that they would be chopping. Terrible. They, I think they bite the heads off first, or maybe they start eating you alive. I've seen them eat bugs. They just start some, eating you wherever sort of if you watch you um, start, if you watch. Yeah, bro, yeah, but you know, fights. that's the thing about praying mantis is we're fucking humans, dog. We went middle of the food chain to the top in like record time. How long it takes sharks to do that? A million years, you fucking idiots. We're the human, trees. so you know, like praying mantis. They we see one head get bit off, and we're all like interesting. And then we talk to each other, and then we come back. Next head getting bit off. It's a special helmet that like fucking like Wild Wild West. Yeah, yeah <laughs> knives pop out of it. The praying mantis blood drips down some guy's face. He's like, yeah, <laughs> and then like we wear it. <sighs> then we wear him, and then we come yeah. back. And now the right. shit's different. They're like, yo, humans are fucked up. You ever see that video of the Those the Russian elephant on the on the road? It's like the uh, the baby elephant gets gets like it can't get uh, I, I, it can't do something I forget and an elephant comes to the road and oh elephant so sick it comes to the road and it's like literally waving down people like yo your guys are the only ones that could do this I don't like you guys You're fucking scary but I'm 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 it's hard he's literally my Baldur's Gate halfling coming over to humans being like yo I need you right now and it's sick cuz he like like you see this elephant he's like I need humans right now like I need them we're like on our motorcycles moving fast he's like trying to stop us he's like please any of you super creatures my child cannot get out of the mud uh, yeah. great clip there's 130 pound ants eating it, and I need you to fire off. Use your human powers to kill them. <laughs> like it, literally any any kind of animal would be uh, easier to take than a souped up bug that still retains all oh of its bugs. like power. Yeah, because they're, uh, they're 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 shell, but they're think of their shells like armor now. Also, yes. yeah. 
Like you could step like on some bullshit. bugs and they're still like, I'm moving, bitch. I still got yeah. eight legs. They can flatten out their internal <laughs> organs. Uh, but on this note, I, I hopped over to the other cam because there was a movie about exactly this called Meet the Apple Gates. Yeah. Where super intelligent, human sized praying mantises move into <laughs> suburban America. And it is fucking horrifying because there are these yeah. huge mantises walking around murdering people and Mantis. molesting people and stuff for the whole movie. And it's nightmare fuel if any of you guys want that. I forgot yeah, about that. I did that. not know that was a film. It's, yeah, it's something that is, it's supposed to be like a family comedy. I found it deeply uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> you found it unsettling. <laughs> like, I would really rather watch a fucked up Shutter exclusive than that PG-13 yeah, family. You said oh, molest. I'm glad you, you said Shudder again. Molest. Molest. I've got yeah. also gonna say something. You said you were going to say something else about the praying mantis, too. Kyle, you were, I think maybe you were talking about, oh. uh, you said fire, oh, the you said fire under your, yeah, you said fire under your yeah, breath a couple yeah. times. I wanted to hear what you had to say. You like break fire. out the flamethrower and they're in trouble. Like, like the flamethrower would destroy. It is the it, choice, right? They don't keep charging at you while it's, in. while it's burning. You, it has a lot of range. A war, a a war hammer like, chainsaw gun thing. Ooh. Uh, really high pitched sounds or perfume and oh, get out of here with that pussy shit. Up. I want him to burn. <laughs> yeah, but he could do. No, I like he, how he's doing it. The uh, like a, a demonic barb style. Like, yeah, it, you could. We could do it. You could do it like with speakers. Like make it cool, like Mars Attacks style. Oh yeah. Oh, it's like okay, let's yeah. say you're gonna That's hunt a, a giant mantis and you want it to burn and die. But if you get yeah. anywhere near it, it's going to murder you in a split second. But if you get near it with all these things that disrupt its senses and confuse it and make it weaker. I you bet drag it down lights. and kill it. Yeah, stuff mm -hmm. like that. I bet flashing lights would really fuck him up. Like a strobe light would mm -hmm. uh, would mess his movement up, I bet. I bet he wouldn't be able to track you effectively. But but in the end, if I'm being honest, the answer to like every horror movie and every fun little scenario that's fun to talk about like Usually this is a goddamn gun. shotgun. You get yeah, a shotgun, exactly. man, and it's game fucking over. I could shoot a praying mantis the size of a Volkswagen in the head faster than you can imagine. That fast. It's already did it. Just did it. Did it again. As yeah, but that's one of one. is that one of those bugs that like it can hang out for a while without a head? Oh, without a yeah. head? Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of bugs you can cut makes their head its, off. It and makes their its bodies legs stab faster. <laughs> yeah, he's like, gonna be <laughs> over there wiggling a little, like any animal that gets uh, shot in the face. Cockroaches but, uh, can go without a head for yes, the movie. They, they can go without a head until they starve to death. The end of the movie Mimic. You that remember might that be a one? The giant cockroach movie. They cut its head off, and the body collapsed by the front door of the apartment. And they couldn't leave the apartment for two weeks. So, like, the main characters maybe starved to death because anytime they got next to the decapitated human sized cockroach, it was in defensive stance and it would just take slices at people. <sighs> I watched too yeah. many movies. Apologies. I watched a movie on Shudder um, the other night. It was late night. I couldn't sleep. And uh, I started this thing at like two in the morning. And okay. uh, it's called Vampire, V A M P I R. Ooh. And it's about a Brit who has been hired to babysit a graveyard because vandals are vandalizing it in i can't remember the country let's call it it's somewhere eastern europe lithuania like, transylvania Slovak slovakia this or something is the, uh, anyway the, the 1990s one or the 1932 one it would have been it's newer for sure oh, he, he do probably, be probably watching a lot really of movies <laughs> but he tells them um, now the clown um, costumes look a little autistic yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. so, so so the oh, yeah. deal is he's uh it's a vampire movie obviously he's there but he does hung, he's in Hungary he doesn't speak the language that's the point so it's this really interesting thing even in modern times where he's alienated immediately in the village so that kind of covers alienated okay. so you know he's an outsider he doesn't even speak the language the the old ladies will come up to him though <laughs> I pulled away. <laughs> They'll come up to him and they try to talk to him in Hungarian or whatever the fuck, and and he's like, ah, I don't speak the Eng I don't speak Hungarian, only English, and, and and then they're like, oh, well, come with us, and they're all smiling and and laughing, and he's like, oh, you want me to have dinner with you? I understand that, and they sort of <laughs> mime it, and then he's like, wait, but you're not having any, you're not. He's he's the only one getting served at this dinner table, oh. and and they're all looking at him like watching him, like what? Yeah, eat this now. Now eat this. And he's like, oh, these are, I guess this is like some Hansel you're, you're, and Gretel, man. You're, I guess this is like what you eat here. This is traditional Hungarian weird stuff that you, okay. <laughs> you're not having any. You're not having any. And then he, he, he finally gets really weirded out and he stands up suddenly and they all stand up suddenly and start coming after him. And he just gets out of there and you're like, okay, okay. That was so weird. That was so weird, but nothing bad has happened. 
And then he starts having these nightmares where he cannot move in bed and awful things are happening to him that he feels. He feels the pain and he wakes up the next day crying because of what happened last night in his dream-esque thing. Like this old lady's sitting on top of him, like mounted him and not sexually. Ew. And she's she's got like a stick that she's wedged into his mouth. And she's oh, like, like pushing sleep paralysis. Face. Yeah, she's pushing his face into the pillow with a stick, you know, into his like sideways with both mm -hmm. of her hands pushing it down. And sh she's singing some crazy shit, smiling down at him. And she bites her lip hard as fuck and starts drooling blood into his mouth. And he's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and she's going, <laughs> Hungarian nonsense, boo 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 boo. Yeah. Yeah, it's dribbling the, the shit into his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it was it actually. Was, it was. I, I was. I was in the moment, and then it just became Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Yeah. At the end. Ooh. <laughs> you <laughs> dragged me to hell. You he played like dual roles. Have seen Drag Me to Hell. Yeah. I love that. I love that movie, and I like the cut that has like the cartoony. There's like two cartoony moments, like literally Looney Tunes. Like someone's eyes pop out of their skull in mm. a cartoon. I like that yeah. version of it. The one where she goes to see the dead body and it, it tumbles out of the coffin and it's almost it's only falling on her, but it looks like it's attacking her and it's like yeah, hilarious yeah. physical comedy. Uh, have you guys seen Lake Mungo? Yes. Lake Mungo? No. Okay, no, I have not. Spooky. I have not. And I saw the trailer and I was like, "This someone someone recommended." It. I was like, "You only get one. Just give me one." And they were like, "Lake Mungo." Yep, oh, it's okay. it's a really good slow burn. It's not high pitch. There's no uh, sorry, uh, high octane. There's no jump scares. It it unfolds in a really believable way, uh, but it's not particularly scary until that really like uh, it starts getting a little bit uh, weirder near the end because you're kind of like doing a detective story about this missing girl mm -hmm. and it just gets weirder and weirder. Um, I thought mm -hmm. it was great. If I remember correctly, uh, a lot of the police and medical people and blah, 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 they interviewed in the movie as part of like the detective work were real uh, actual professionals, working professionals in New Zealand, like police and stuff. So they're not professional actors and they don't speak like professional actors. So they're incredibly believable. Mm. That's interesting. Uh, I, I might look into that. You guys see Skin uh, and Rink? Yes, yeah. that's a whole oh, like different that animal right like there. That one? I like I that one a lot, feelings. but I don't recommend it to people. Exactly. About 5% of people are going to love that, and about 95% of people are going to say, are you stupid? Nothing happened and, in the and whole yeah, movie. And, and, and it's really important. It's terrible. It's movie. really important to watch terrible. that movie alone with the lights off. Headset. Not on your phone. And I know everyone says that all the time. And even better than a headset is if you have like, if you can like go to your parents' home, if they're still living in your childhood home and you could do that at night in the basement, lights the out fuck? there, like that'll fuck you up. You have to find yeah. something from your, like if you were born like anywhere from like 1977 to 1992, you have to find your childhood home or something like it and go into the darkest place to watch it. Okay. And you can watch it like I think anyway. I mean, obviously headphones, it's like almost cheating at that point. But like anyway, even like on an old shitty TV would be crazy. Ooh, and it's just see, bizarre. Uh... It, it just feels like scary nostalgia. Like when you were younger, I'll try that you, out. You looked in the hallway and the hallway was dark darker than dark and you just didn't know what you and you were hearing mm -hmm. but you, it was just like conversations in the other room there's no other room yeah. what are you hearing it's really crazy um but uh, i i don't want to recommend it after everything i just said if you don't like it in the first yeah. 15 minutes you could probably stop yeah but uh yeah have you seen uh barbarian love it yeah my wife has she loves it so love it's it. great man it's that really was such good. a fun i i don't watch trailers anymore at all um, and if I do, I'll very quickly turn. I'll only watch a trailer of a movie that I have no intentions of watching. And if they yeah. change mm -hmm. my mind, I'll immediately turn it off because I know that if I go three quarters of the way into this trailer, they're going to the act. They're going to the third act of the movie. They're, the they're showing me the part where they hear literally has get the, the end of girl. act one. And you're always blessed with a shot of the final scene. And I always watch trailers and I'm always like, that's the end of the movie right there. Yep. Yeah. I know the end of a movie when I see I see what you've shown me. I'm like, that's the end right there. It's like every trailer does it. Mm -hmm. I wish they did it like Dusk Till Dawn. Did anybody see that in theaters? Because they didn't no. advertise any of the vampires at all. 
It was and the first hour of the movie is played as a straight up kidnap. Uh, I got it that way. Yeah. Cops and robbers. Yeah. And then out of fucking nowhere, vampires and schlocky ones. And it was glorious. Uh, yeah. But I'm right there with you on not watching trailers. Terminator 2. James Cameron saw the trailer for Terminator 2 when the Terminator was like, he's never seen Terminator 2. Uh, that's that's one. One. Oh, I, I would say if you have to ask me, I'd put that number one at your uh, the top of your list. You don't even need to watch Terminator 1, actually. Terminator 2. I know it's crazy how it really doesn't even matter. The the no. more the more mi- there's already a ton of mystery in that world building that the more mystery you're left with is just fine because there's a ton anyways. It's not like it's going to really fill you in on things, but it's also mm-hmm. fun to watch after. But Terminator 2 is my number one favorite movie. It's the Damn. first movie I ever saw in theaters. Uh, I feel like I do what I do today because I saw Terminator 2 like at five years old in theaters. Yeah. You, I'm like jealous because like at any moment, if you're like, what should I watch? You could watch my all time favorite movie. <laughs> You've never seen it before. And, yeah. and not only that, it's just for on so many reasons to be 2023 and not seeing this movie. There's no part of it that you're going to be like, this feels outdated. Not a <laughs> moment. There's really? no, no moment Even in the, the CGI whole movie. Is super good. Exactly. Maybe the there's not a whole. There's like that's that's like, but it's gonna feel like Stranger Things kind of. Like Stranger Things doesn't feel like outdated. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's just gonna feel like like now. There's no effect in it or decision mm-hmm. or clothing. Everything is. Per- it's still. It's the craziest movie. Yeah. <laughs> I watched do that whenever. Uh, I watched t- uh, t- Terminator One and Two um, this month, last month, something like that. I went through them again and watched them both. Uh, I love those movies. That was one of my favorites as a kid to watch with my grandmother, Terminator 2. She's a huge Arnold fan. I'm a huge Arnold fan. That movie made me like, like now, after that, I followed Robert Patrick's career when yep. I saw him in Sopranos playing the gambling addict. I was like, oh, that's fucking, that's bad. It's a Terminator. This is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but that scene at the end, it, it, I cried. Like Terminator 2 makes made me cry. Um, a couple times I've watched it and cried. Is that rated uh, R or PG thirteen? Yes, it's R. R. That's what Arnold I thought. Arnold is. Uh, Arnold does his best acting of his career, I think, maybe in that Easily. movie. Seems like he's. Tr- I think he's trying as hard as he can to That's be a I'll robot, say. and he does it very convincingly. <laughs> and this actually he's loops back to what can. we talked about in the very beginning. Uh, you talked about the Toxic Crusaders TV show based on an mm-hmm. R rated movie. From that era, you had Aliens, Predator, uh, Terminator, RoboCop. Rambo. Rambo, yeah, all these fucked up, hyper no, violent toys. R-rated movies. Like you go back and watch Robocop. This is the and Toys like, R Us aisle. Yeah, in 1992. All R-rated. <laughs> and what's so movies funny about our down. generation is like that's the the toy aisle now. Yeah, <laughs> like, really. We're like, like not like at a Toys R Us, but like you can go to like EB Games and you, or something like a GameStop, and that's what you get is you're gonna get like Alien, Terminator, Robocop, and all those toys were sick. I love that alien. So you got like great. the gorilla alien. <laughs> and I remember like uh, <clears throat> it was my first time when I realized I was woke cuck. I got <laughs> I, I was able to choose any toy and I came home with uh, Ripley from Alien 3. I got oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing Ripley's at all. One of the best all time female action heroes ever. And I, I actually hat. I got like I was in my first <laughs> like argument debate like ever when i hung up with my friends and i brought a ripley toy because i brought a bitch to boys night and it was like i was like i'm like i'm like michael your parents don't even let you watch alien 3 you don't (laughs) know what this bitch does bro like you don't even know what a power loader is you have no idea she (laughs) called the queen alien a bitch you don't know shit michael Fuck you, fuck the Ghostbusters. Fuck and Michael. like and I'm literally like I, but I remember like just and obviously I didn't word it that way, but I remember being like, but you don't know anything. Because I was allowed to watch all these movies. I had like a uh, pay-per-view, so I was like Oh yeah. Uh, I love anything with killing. If I got just, something and someone's getting killed, there's blood, I'm like, hold up. Hey, I bet you're <laughs> handling squibs. Don't you wish they still had squibs instead of CGI gunshots? Like you go back yeah. and you watch Total Recall and they shoot people and like three gallons of blood. Criterion <laughs> Collection, <laughs> any cra- uh, Criterion yeah, Collection, like RoboCop, like what's the Criterion All the Paul Verhoeven collection? stuff. It's yep. like their oh, special, uh, the top, the 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 best version, director's version of select like cult movies. Oh, okay. Like RoboCop, you get RoboCop, and there's like like crazy squib scenes, like with the blood going like that. I bought that for a video once. 
and like it, they didn't work and i just remember like we bought it and the guy rigged it up and like did it and they didn't work really only some of them did and he was like sorry and i was like yeah he was like, okay. And I was like, here's your money. I was like, here's your money. I literally like, I'm just, though, right? there's, what's that? Aren't they kind of dangerous? Like squibs are little explosives going off, right? I have they no are. idea how they worked. So when they didn't work and he was like, I can't do anything about it. I was like, oh, okay. No. I still they paid him though. And I was like, did I lose just now? Yeah. <laughs> did I get scammed? Did he know more less than a thousand? Wait, more than a thousand dollars? Yeah, I was asking how much it cost, like a squid. Oh plant. yeah, no, less than a thousand actually. Oh, that's less surprisingly cheap. Yeah, you know, maybe uh, that's Alien why they didn't go off. One. Yeah, well, I Harley, like. That. I'm I'm glad to hear that you're a man of fine taste and have watched all the best movies. Yes. Well, we're all men <laughs> well, of fine taste. Everybody except Taylor. Well, well, you know. Not I just, I just have a, full, I just have a full catalog of stuff. You guys are jealous because you can't between, watch. Between the us four, though, between us four white men, we've seen every single movie worth seeing. Yes, probably. Have you guys seen 100%. The uh, yeah, the I, I had to watch that with uh, with my high school girlfriend. No, I refuse to watch. The, it's the, a good movie. Oh, what no. movie? It's really ugly about the Notebook. I didn't hear it. What movie? The Notebook. The Notebook. Oh, the Notebook no. is when the Notebook ends. Like, I promise you, even if you don't say it out loud or if the court, like, inside, you're like, okay. <sighs> oh, I bet I'd like it. I bet it made me cry, though. I'm a pussy about stuff like that. If there's if there's a fucking emotional scene or something, I'll be I'll be tearing up and crying the whole way through. I the hate shit. when a movie's like, the boy in the striped pajamas. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, that's yeah. what I want to do today. The boy? Cry. Fuck, <laughs> look at the cover. Like, I'm sick already in my stomach. Like, I'm trying to watch a movie and chill. Is it? It's my yeah. day off. <laughs> I'm fucking getting when, attached to a Holocaust baby and when I watch play a, it through. Yeah, you're going to put yourself in a Holocaust. Movie. When I watch a Holocaust movie, I'm like, oh, man, it's so horrible that those things happen. Do you watch it from a different point of view? Or are you like, God, Harley's like, I would have put a stop to this. I like it's funny because like that's a thing that you get through multiple different stages in your life, like depending on what your brain is and what the exposure is. And I'm at a time in my life where I, I see about like more about like how I was exposed to it the first time anything anything holocaust related i was walking into my uh aunt's living room where my parents were watching with my aunt and uncle and i looked at the screen and it was black and white but there was a little girl and her jacket was red you saw the red mm -hmm. so right and it, it's like this is like spielberg so in a millisecond like i don't realize like the fucking same author as captain hook like yeah. i'm <laughs> i'm like looking at the screen like right and they're like you gotta go and now, I, when you know, when you're like seven, you're like, yep. what? They're like, you can't watch this. And now I'm like, I'm pointing out, I'm like, it's a uh, she's here. I could yeah. be here. And, uh, <laughs> and I could have been. I could have been. He's there. not going to be for much longer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm and I'm just like, I've never seen the black and white with the color pop. And it was just there's a lot of reasons why I wanted them, but I had to leave. So I left and I didn't watch it. Didn't know what the movie was. And then, like I like I said, pay per view. It ended up coming onto the TV. Uh, that's like basically the same as like YouTube back in the day. And I remember yeah. watching. You have to explain it. that. That's depressing. Yeah, and I remember watching I it and seeing like you see the girl in the red jacket early on, and I watched and I recognized when there was Jewish stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but like, because I was, I recognized Jewish shit. I like, you know, Hebrew school or like holidays. Like I was always like, who's God? What's well, Jewish? You know, why is no one in my class Jewish? Um, and like, I just connected that and people were killed and there was like crazy imagery, but I don't know what the fuck was happening. And I, I don't think I ever sat through the entire thing mm. of Schindler's list. That's the movie. No, no, no. Then, then, yeah. Like, but anyways, and then there's different times and then you get what it is. But like, I just remember like, you know, you watch it when you're like, and this is why I always young guys like Andrew, uh, Andrew Tate fans or, or any young guys, like, like, I just remember how my, I always remember how my brain was working at a certain time in my life. And I remember being like, like that age, 16, 17, 18, like, I'm like dead serious being like, yo, I'll fucking die. 
killing a Nazi. I'm watching Saving Private Ryan and I'm watching the Jewish guy get slowly stabbed in the watchtower. And I'm like, yeah. you fucking bitch, bro. <laughs> you fucking bitch. <laughs> You're like yelling at him like, fight back. You can take Literally, them. I'm like, I'm like, and I'm like mad. And if there was a bald guy there that was like, I'm world box kickboxing champion. I'm fucking rich. I bet you don't like how that guy just got stabbed, right? fuck women i'd be like yo bro fuck women dude <laughs> like i was ready to be more and so just consuming it then and like nowadays whenever like like i can't look at the holocaust and be like what they did to my people i'm always just like humans are fuck dude like i yeah. like because the same thing is like because the feeling that i would get from the holocaust i could watch a slavery movie and feel the exact same way because at the end that's like, that's on all of us i'm like <laughs> fucking humans bro when we're fucking when we're like off the chain we get really crazy with it lord of but, the flies yeah bro if aliens ever yeah. came here and like landed and we negotiated like like it's there are two men like i just feel like they don't no one would really know what they're getting into yeah i yeah. agree yeah I, i've said or what if times. it was like antithetic like what if it was like any period of peacetime is anomalous to them like and they are total violence total conquest total it fight unlikely, that's possible though, right it, no. it seems more likely that look they work together enough to get here like like somehow they so work for I, themselves I love this scenario could be. Yeah, they had to work together to get to get that to happen though, as a species, right? Like like I like the or idea as of the coming here the and us being way more aggressive and uh and sneaky and yeah. backstabby. And like, they're like, short. they don't and yeah, just everything. Just just we're a real hard we're, we're hard to deal with. I can't there's a lot like of we're, um, humans are like, like bad the Vulcans ass. and the yeah. Vulcans <laughs> in Star Trek don't really understand the concept of lying. They find it difficult. You know, like, what, like, what if hands? What if like nothing else evolved like as good as hands? And they're like these yeah. fucking bastards. We can only push the one sense. button at a time. They they're don't have to use their tongue palms over there to, to select things. They can yeah. stay awake for so long. They eat they poisonous got, peppers for fun. Uh, but have any of you heard of the hunters in a dark forest solution I was to the Fermi that. paradox? That's what See? I was thinking. Did you read Dark Forest, by the way? I did not read the Dark that's Forest. That's what I, I read heard the summer, of this. I read the summary of it, and I read more about the theory. Which I'm so short... funny that you came to that yeah. conclusion from what he was saying. It's because you. Oh, that's because you prompted me when you said that. That's how they will be. Yep. Like so you're what, like what, it, you it's you're in a dark like forest. And you are every, any civilization or or species or anything that could that is on your level or anything, if they are here, like you're you're like you are all being silent. You're all treading through mm -hmm. the dark forest silently. You don't want to be the creature that makes a noise. You mm -hmm. don't want to do that. So like like they wouldn't necessarily come here and announce themselves unless they were most certainly coming to easily destroy us. Yeah, yeah. and they would. But um, I just got to say, I really believe in us that we are just fucked up in weird ways, dude. Like they're going to come here and be like, we are here to destroy you all. And we are going to be like, stop. Are you familiar with fucking? Because we got a million humans right here that are going to fuck you and suck you. And they're going to be like, what is fucking? And we're going to be like, you're going to give us out. give us one hour, yeah. one hour. And then literally, boom, they're tied up. BDSM shit. We're fucking milking them and using them as batteries to run our planet. <laughs> like, we're Peru crazy, lately? bro. We're just doing that. Just just milking <laughs> aliens for batteries because because they're like. Mm, we didn't anticipate how oh, good no. it would feel to come. And then, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, just saying, listen, I just came, came up with that right now. So I don't know what we would do. We are robots now. I don't know yeah. what we would do. Oh, I, we would absolutely fuck the aliens. They can consent. They're conscious. That's the, no. that's the scenario I want to It all depends on who see, gets though, to the other we've person's seen, planet first. In, in sci-fi movies, we've seen all the other scenarios. We've seen the warriors who are coming to take over in um, mm -hmm. Independence Day. We've seen like the friendly guys who are just visiting in um like like well ET is like an accident but in uh Close Encounters of the Third we Kind you know they're, they're visiting and, and interacting <laughs> we don't know what kind of tech they've got he made a bicycle fly dude get out of here <laughs> no the tech yeah. is crazy but, he, made, but he, phoned, he phoned agents. home with a calculator like the tech yeah. is crazy um, his fucking it, finger glows and does magic yeah. you're gonna but Kyle and he, they, if those FBI agents had guns instead of walkie talkies they would have yeah. taken them right out of the sky. We don't know if he can take a bullet. 
I, what if they bounced off of him? We don't uh, know. They not are in the Star Wars universe. All the ET aliens are there. They might be forced. They sensitive. are. So that's George Lucas is such a fucking lame piece of shit. He snuck the ET aliens into Star Wars in the background. Mm -hmm. that he, oh, yeah, but but, but yeah. the most important thing is that there's a Yoda costume in ET. So ET creatures confirmed same universe as Star Wars. So he yeah. does have he is force sensitive. Yeah. Like I operate. <laughs> I operate on that. Like ET was in Star Wars and there's a Yoda <laughs> costume. Sensitive. There's a Yoda oh. costume in ET. Like, so you're uh, saying that E.T. is a Jedi. He's no, 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 no. Being forced into a Jedi, a Jedi not, is an entirely different thing. That's entirely being, different thing. It's like he's not Jewish, but he's circumcised. Of course. I've mm -hmm. got you. No, it's like he's not Jewish, but he's good with money. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they're, they're Jewish. Yeah, like that one guy who said, oh, I didn't no. say I was Jewish. I said I was Jewy, Jewish. And, you know? uh, all right. There's Alien Nation. That's when the aliens show yeah. up, but they were the slave race on the big ship, very similar to oh, District man. 9 or whatever, where you've got the slave race who doesn't really know much about the tech. They were just fucking turning the knobs and the master race that built all the tech had been you know, turned on. They died from a virus, mm -hmm. I think, in one of the movies. I don't remember the other. Maybe they turned on them. But then all of a sudden, we have the simpleton slave race people. That's Alien Nation. And all their and and they're, it's more of a humanitarian issue just putting housing them and feeding and clothing them and integrating them into our society and alien nation they get drunk <clears> on <throat> spoiled milk and salt yep. water is like battery acid to them so there's all these little weird things their erogenous zone is their back so not their front so you could easily get up a girl the front of a girl's shirt but you'd have a hard time giving her a massage it's, Kids it's, grow it's up faster, function. learn faster. They can hold their breath for 15 minutes, but it's all a big allegory for racism. Yes, it's about immigrants coming in, taking her gerbs. But <laughs> is it a little ham-handed? No, yeah. it's honestly not ham-handed. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think you can enjoy. I the think alien you would. Is there a things? scene where they say we're not that different? Yeah. Of course, oh, every dude. episode and that ends is like ham handed that. as shit. No, it's but James it's like Con. it's, it's like a campy fun, like it's like it's low stakes kind of. It's everything's gonna get solved in twenty one minutes. Like everything. But <laughs> oh, I'm gonna present the problem issues. and deal with it. I haven't seen the TV show. I need to. i I'm talking about oh, the okay. Oh, I, the I, TV I show is way cheesier. So, so James oh, Con okay. is, is, is a is a James Conn's a detective, and his pop partner gets killed by one of these souped-up uh, newcomers, mm -hmm. and uh, he barely kills the guy. He like oh dumps God, his newcomers. whole gun into the guy and finally kills him. Yeah, that's what they're called. And um, the, and uh, so he makes it his mission to track down the newcomers that killed his partner, and to aid him in this, he agrees to take on the department's first newcomer detective. He's like, yeah, he'll be my partner. Nobody wants him. You know, he's a pariah. He's a fucking... He's been alive. He's seven years old or something. That's how their race works. So like he's been, um, what's the um, he's been he's been picked for this job because he's a newcomer, not because he's necessarily good at the job. It's a good movie. I liked it. I watched it like a couple months ago. I need to watch the TV watch show. That. I forgot it existed. But James, yeah, no, comes I always like the that. End. Like that stuff where you were saying, like uh, the battery acid, uh, and and I know it's yeah. just little details that's just said in a moment in the show, and especially when I was younger, that's the shit that would like stick with me, and I would think about like for the rest of the episode while mm -hmm. not really taking in what the episode was about. Uh, but that's what I always loved about Mass Effect was the little details about certain species. Like they'll say things in conversation that a uh, conversation that like. Eh, they made this conversation. You didn't have to go this deep and sit here. A lot of people want to get to the exciting stuff. And I'm there and I'm like, oh, crow can have four testicles. <laughs> and that's interesting because the women haven't been able to give birth for a long time. Like, and it's not any like messaging about Earth or a message here. They're just like, this is a story and that's how shit is. That's how some shit is. Like mm -hmm. and I I miss in the nineties like like nineties movies you would go you would watch a movie, and like a thing would happen and the the bad guys escapes and then now the good guys there and he's like what and he's like sorry and kill and like it's the end and you're like sick, but these days you leave a movie and you're like how the fuck did he get there? So he was here and then he's there, but like you never asked shit like that in 1992. Yeah. Not only because you were like a You're seven a year old idiot, yeah. but like no one did. My parents never left and they were like, How did that guy get and how did the car? And sometimes I watch old movies, I'm like, Yo, we like this. 
My there parents, no went, my parents, my parents paid money, sat in the movie, and they didn't ask how ever I, at any I point. Think that sometimes shit just happened because it's the fucking movie, and that yeah. happened. But bro. sometimes that's happen. great. Like Big Trouble in Little China, it's about it's like an hour and forty five minutes long, but like eighty seven things happened in that movie so fucking fast, you don't get a chance to think about it at a great all. Great movie. It still works. Though. Uh, I never drive. What does he say? I never drive faster than I can see. What does that yeah. mean? <laughs> what the? <fuck? laughs> Who's, the Who's in that? It's all uh, in the, uh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. It's Kurt all Russell in the reflexes. Doing his... uh, David Hong as Lopan is fucking hilarious. Yep. And uh, uh, Kurt Russell's doing his best. Um, um, who's the fucking famous John Wayne impression? He, he's a yes. big rig driver, and he's coming into San Francisco, meeting up with his Asian pal. And his Asian pal just happens to be picking up his fucking girlfriend coming over from China. You're not going to believe it. She's a green eyes, a green eyed Asian girl. Can you believe it? A Chinese girl with green eyes is going on about this beautiful girl. <laughs> she, he's like, well, I'll come with you to the airport. And they go to the <laughs> airport. And wouldn't you know it, fucking Yakuza come out of nowhere. Fucking snatch her up, run off with her in a car. They chase them to Chinatown. And it turns out they're not Yakuza. They're fucking um, like dark warriors for for at least two or three Raiden style yep. Chinese demon princes. Raiden was shit. based on them. Uh, Mortal Kombat yeah. was based on them. They're floating down with lightning storms and stuff. And it, 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 it switches gears so fast from guy driving a big rig, visiting his buddy, getting a girlfriend from the airport. And now there's magic. Now there's yep. magic and lightning coming out of fingers. And That's it, like the first 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And then toward the end, there's monster men in in an underground lair. There's fucking uh, the floating head and... with eyeballs that looks like a doom demon. It's uh, my, fun. The it's best really part, fun. The bad guy is an ancient evil Chinese sorcerer. And yep. one of the guys on the good guys team is his former friend, a good Chinese sorcerer. And when they meet, you think, oh, man, it's a big magic battle. No, they literally pull out these little balls and open them and like little magic Pokemon come out and they have like a little fucking Pokemon battle. And they're like, haha, 10,000 years and you never beat me at Pokemon. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> awesome. I don't remember that part. I genuinely don't. If, that sounds if, pretty if that, funny. But it absolutely fucking, happens. <laughs> Every, but it's so much happens, though. That's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I I think it's a really good movie. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, that's a good one. I like everything I've Kurt Russell's ever good. done. He's a uh, Kurt seen Russell. His, uh, commentary? Escape from L.A. No. Uh, all right. All right. New York. But it, I know. But he said everything. He said he likes yeah, everything. Yeah, I said. I don't everything. know, Taylor. You, you ever know, see Escape from New York? Escape from uh, L.A. has its moments. Yes. No, it does. Yes, you I think Escape I have... from L.A. Oh, no, first I saw of all, L.A. From LA. Escape from L.A. has many moments. Far more moments than Escape from New York. Are they better? Absolutely not. Not a single no. one. But it is all moments. I, I heard that Escape from New York, like, like, obviously is a huge movie and it was sick and it's great. And then they had him for the I next this. This one, cool. director and actor locked in for Escape from L.A. and they didn't want to do it. So they made the movie like as if they didn't want to do it. And in the first one, it's like a serious like it's like an action movie. The second one, he buys his freedom by winning a game of basketball and surfs on a tsunami. The basketball like, is scene is the best part of the whole goddamn oh, by movie. Far. And as a fair. kid, as a kid, you're so stupid. You don't think about how one movie was one way. And then the next one. You're like, hey, he plays basketball. Basketball's oh. sick. Of course, he he's good at Basketball's basketball. Basketball's fine. It's fucking snake, bro. And then and, and so then like the same thing happened the like tranny. with like Ninja Turtles. Watching that as a kid, I'm like, Ninja Turtles one is sick. Ninja Turtles two so sick. And then you watch them now. You're like, Ninja Turtles one three? is amazing. Ninja Turtles one is amazing. Ninja Turtles two is a piece of shit movie. It is three? so bad. You want to hear yeah, something awful? The, we number only three had is ridiculous. Three. We only had three at my house. You know what kind of what, how awful it is? Some relative was like, "Oh, they like Ninja Turtles," and bought the fucking third one because it was six dollars. Some yeah, uh, it was in Christmas the bin one year. So oh like my god, way. they go back in time uh, to samurai times. Taking this... a step back to return to L.A., do you remember the female lead, uh, the Arabic lady? She's yes. like, "Yeah, I'm with the Taliban and the Mujahideen. I know what it's like to kill people." Before yeah. that was like a big thing that did not age well. At they were all, still man. getting trained. Rambo 3 yeah. is the same thing. At the end, of, Rambo works with the Taliban in uh, Rambo 3 to fight the Soviets, and there's a whole like text thing on screen to thank the brave Mujahideen um, at the end of that movie. It's been changed now. New, now, they, now it's um, special thanks to, instead of special thanks to, 
to the brave Mujahideen. It's special thanks to the gallant people of Afghanistan. Yeah. Oh. But I mean, Which at the time, real, it was anything's better than communism, that? right? That's slick. Afghanist. Like gallant that. people of Afghanistan. They are a gallant mm -hmm. people. They're gallant. They're like the, the people who hate Afghanis because, you know, America, they don't even know what gallant means. So well, if I was in Baghdad, <laughs> no. I'd be like, it's really gallant uh, all over the place. It's all over here in, in uh Yeah. And then, they just, right there. <laughs> and then they'll be like, well, wait until you see Afghanistan instead of Iraq. <laughs> the, the, oh, yeah. Oh, place. oh, not gallant at all. Baghdad. Oh, what am I saying? That's I've heard that least. it's totally destroyed through no fault of America. Yeah, no, that's uh, no. Even aside from that, you could be gallant, even if uh, America comes in. Uh, Does know, gallantry have anything? Anyway, your, your gallantry is not in question just because uh, yeah. America came through, you know? Don Quixote was gallant. In a way. Right? In a way. Not really, you know, effectively, but that, that was kind so of was the of Spanish the Inquisition. I guess Spanish Inquisition. It depends on what you're on your point of view. Yeah. I thought I was reading about that. I thought that was a way bigger thing. Like, I, I thought. Yeah, it was not as a, big as you. It went on no. for centuries, though, right? The Spanish Inquisition? No. I don't think no, so. Just, I guess no, I'm thinking I th more I of thought the it was like an enormous, burning. like huge. Yeah, thing, no, no, witch burning, much yes. Than I thought. Like vague, random uh, Catholic witch burnings and uh, what is it? Heresy prosecutions, blasphemies, digging up the corpses of old popes and put them on trial. All sorts of shenanigans. Oh, that's oh, that's different though. Yeah, I watched the whole. Maybe it was. Um, it's one of those animated history channels on. YouTube they dug that, up. They dug up bodies and put them on trial. Yeah, yeah. Pope a, a did. Former pope. So, so, do, do, so are, is that gallant behavior? Wild. By the way, would that be no, gallant? No, that's no. I'd that's say it's pope gross. behavior. That's some badass shit. There's been crazy popes. One pope. They made him pope, and uh, he went through so much money, fucking whores, and doing drugs that he that he was broke. So he had rich buddies though, because you know he's the pope. So he's like, hey, give me let's call it twenty million in real in today's money, and you'll be the pope. He's like, are you serious? You'll sell your pope hood? Totally sell my pope hood. Sold his pope hood, twenty million. Two years later, you know what? Give me the hat back. I want it again. No, for real. Give it back. Took the pope hood back. At one point, he dug up the former pope, who he didn't like, obviously, put him on trial. And I'm, what I mean by that is the corpse was sat up in a chair and accused. And the corpse had a defense lawyer, the devil's advocate. On. There was a defense for the accused who smelled because he's been rotting for, you know, the last year and a half in a hole in oh, Europe somewhere. They found him guilty, believe it or not. <laughs> they threw him in the river. That pope's body was thrown in the river. <laughs> what was he guilty of? What did they... Oh, uh, who knows? Some kind of heresy. Duggery. <laughs> so, some heresy? buggery? <laughs> heresy. Skull 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 he probably duggery. said something like Jesus was an independent gallantry. person from the Holy mm. Trinity, and that was just pff, too much. Yeah, I, I, I like the... Uh, the popes have been Man. some of the most evil people who existed. I bet that was like a really weird day in Vatican City, because I guarantee... Pretty much nobody was on board for it other than the Pope. But if the Pope is like leading the charge of it, everyone else has to be like, they're like, hey, Saint, what are you doing today? And he's like, you're not going to fucking believe this. I have to defend Pope uh, Pope uh, John V. And they're like, the guy who died? And he's like, yeah. And if I don't, he's going to burn me at the stake. So I'm writing arguments defending a dead guy, right? Like, but they can't be can too good them? arguments because you know can you to lose. You you yeah, just you'd yeah. have to play into it. I, I would play yeah. into it. I'd be like, you're you're right, Pope. We got to get this shit under on lock and key. We need to be safe and let's throw him in the river. I was just at a, a Vatican City actually. This nice. is hitting for, this is hitting for me because I was at Vatican City like two weeks ago. Yeah. Just to how say, was it? Just to say sorry. Just to say sorry. Just to be like, just to check out what you guys are up to over here. Um, Seeing what the Christians That has nothing to do with us. Actually, more to do with him because you said Italian Catholic, blood. didn't you? Who said Catholic? <laughs> didn't someone say uh, Catholic? Well, this is the Vatican my, my, City. My they're, family's they're Catholic, Catholic, most of them, but... Isn't that, isn't that really? Catholic? Isn't that like... Isn't that like... You're supposed to laugh. Most most Catholics... <laughs> <laughs> Ew. No, most Catholics... Catholic. Catholic. Most Catholic Catholics... I give, I get baptized, <laughs> yeah. by the way. I know, I know some people like that solemnly like, offended. I, I need to frown yeah. like Drifter. <laughs> my low hanging lips. Yeah, yeah. I now mean, most Italians than... are like most secular Jews in that, like they're it. like, yeah, we're we're you know we're part of it too, and they're like, really, when do you do the thing? And it's like Easter, 
Christmas. And I'm sure for Jews, it's like, oh, I do Yom Kippur. I do Hanukkah. Like, when do you go to temple? Never. I never. Do you ever go to temple, Harley? Uh, yeah, here and there. Like, uh, when I mean here and there, I mean like once or twice every five years. For, and like, you can't drive on high holidays. So like the amount of times I've gone because my grandfather's there and it's like a six hour thing and I park like a 10 minute walk away and then I walk up and I hang out in the back <laughs> and like I see my grandfather after and I'm like fuck like I only go for like the last 30 minutes when he's walking out I'm like she's a long one today <laughs> like, yeah. long and then one. I like I'm like gotta walk all the way home now he's like yeah I'll see you later and I'm like bye and then I like walk 10 minutes to my car and drive home wow uh, but like and then it's like so like yeah I'm here because it's important and that's like really what yeah. religion is to me is that like it's important to him and like the family gets together here but I like the sure. rules of it I, I would never impose that on someone else or on myself like would you do would you like uh, if you had a, a friend who was a uh, Muslim and they were like, oh, come to a uh, mosque with me and, you know, face Mecca and, and you know, uh, the the I don't excuse my ignorance, go on the, the rug, the carpet yeah. thing and the prayer rug and do the ritual with me today. Like, would you do that? I mean, I have friends that like I they know people that, that, that would. I don't think they'd want me to do that. They I think right. they'd see that. that. They'd probably yeah. see like, that as like cheapening say, their religion. Well, no, let's say I, a, a right. Jew asked you to put on you do that. if a Jew asked you to put on tefillin, let's say, which also a Jew wouldn't do, but then oh, again, I'll do whatever a Jew, a Jew wants a Jew me could. to do. Yeah, I, so, well, you so have no I, choice, buddy, because you know what yeah. we'll do to your bank I, account. I, I, in, I don't want yeah. any more trouble out of y'all. Shut that <laughs> right down. Y'all are going to do me pretty good about four oh, years FPS ago. FPS Russia <laughs> passed me in subs and I got him in jail. Leave me alone, you and your friends. Dude, Kyle, you, uh, you got off this. light, Kyle. Uh, yeah, Kyle, it, did you see the public freakout video where there was a crazy person with a big sign protesting something about Jews control the world? And this dude legit walked up to him and said, excuse me, sir, I'm Jewish and I own this and you can't be here. And he's like, yeah, I figured. So I'll, I'll, it's like, he's like, yeah, the Jews don't own this thing over here. You can go over there. And he's like, all right, thanks for the heads up. Yeah, he, he and he walks, walks away. over. The guy's like, Jews yeah. control everything. And this like guy comes over. He's like, just like a chubby. He's like, you got to go. You got to go. He's like, who the fuck? Are you? He's like, I'm Jewish. I control everything. You can't be here. He's like, yeah, I can. He's like, you can't. I'm Jewish. I control everything. And the guy like <laughs> walks away and he looks at the camera. He's like, so there you have it. I'm Jewish. I control everything. And he's just like some like dude. Oh, God. <laughs> he didn't even own Jewish. the property. <laughs> he's not even he looked Jewish. Like he could have been. He looked like he could the, have been. The oh, Catholic true. and Jewish version of religions sound a lot more fun than Southern Baptist. For Southern Baptist, it was not just like, at least for me, not just a cultural thing you do a couple times a year and celebrate Christmas. It was a you go to church three days a week, you pray before every meal all the time. God is real. God is watching you. He's keeping a log of every single thing you do. You make one mistake, you go to hell. Demons live just behind the walls. They're going to come get you like yeah. oh, I fucking... Remember. Yeah, good times. Good times. Yeah, yeah. I, I like my I most of my childhood. family's Catholic, but my immediate family like didn't go Catholic. They were like regular like Protestant, Protestant. or whatever. And yeah, they they don't hit the the stuff as hard as the Baptists, but they're definitely big on hell, big on uh, sin. Don't do that. Feel bad. I think that's important too. Look, if God's real, they've got then the the people who believe in a yeah. hell and like like bad like it's I, I know. Some people, sorry, Harley, don't really believe in a hell and their religion. But 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 I I feel like there's got to be some comeuppance. There's got to be right. Or then if there's a really the good place, go there's got to be a really bad place. Probably if there's no mm. comeuppance for doing the wrong thing, then why would I do his right thing? Because I I just don't get it. If we're all going to the gold fucking streets and the clouds or whatever the fuck and the paradise. Then why shouldn't I be out for me until the last five minutes? That's probably what and a lot of Jews started thinking, and other Jews were like, "Yeah, we got to switch this system up. We got to come up with a new story because these people are—I don't know what to tell them. Like, we got to figure out something. Like, we got <laughs> to switch the live. system up a little bit. But if you told me that God was real and He wants me to live this humble life mm -hmm. where I'm trying to make others happy and live for you know and glory to his name or whatever and blood of the lamb such and such then i'd get right on board with that if i thought he was real though i could see doing all sorts of violent things in his name you know if there was okay, a real so god this, and he told the... you there were some bad guys you needed to go get tell me They're you done. wouldn't go get them but wait yeah. but what's what's the like two things yeah like in that sense like then it's just we're we're the heaven waiting room 
Like we create us, yeah. and put us in the waiting room. And if it's all about heaven, like this is like really short and like I'm being tested, mm -hmm. but you made me so like you did this. I like like we did this. This is a collaborative thing. Like, you know, like, why would you make my mm -hmm. brain this way and uh, yeah. kill my parents uh, and uh, and expect me to, like, follow the rules like you did all this, like, you know, and also if they're like, yeah, if he was like, you got to kill these these people, I'm like, who are they? I'm just tired. I'm tired of being pointed at others and being like, that's them. And it's their fault that anything's not good right then now. Then he looks at over all. at me and he, and he says, see, Kyle, that's how they are. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they can't be. With all us, these Kyle. Jewish goblins come from and, the underground. And and they're you, like, yeah. You realize that come, I had. Come, hurry. Come, come, you realize that Kyle had begged God to give you and your people one last chance and you had just spoiled it. And I, I was like, uh, how much are you going to cost? Um, <laughs> the, uh, no, I but like I said it. before the, uh, sorry, I was, uh, go ahead. I was going to talk know. about, I, I was going to talk about Islam again. So like, it's not important to Yeah, you. I guess I'm kind of boarding on that because the, their whole thing is like, they're like, hey, God hates these people and what they're doing. They got to go. Like, that's his thing. He told Abraham, and he told this guy, and now that's what we do. We kill them when they don't do that, when they do that thing they're doing over there and they're out to get us and it's. You know, with us or with us or the dead. That's how it is. You know, man. If you believe that, it's time to get a fucking vest, right? Like it's time to go, right? If there was a like, real guy really telling it. me that some people had to go, it's like, all right, how do I do it? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Yeah, if you believe it's God, that's why so many people do things like that when God tells them. Because like, if you really believe, believe in that, that guy. God tells you to do something, <laughs> like people tend to do it. See, if, then, I, if, if God's a, if, the and real if a, deal, if a true believer like that just becomes schizophrenic or, you know, loses their mind in some way where, where some, they're hearing a voice and they have this strong belief in a God already. And now the voice, because of their mental illness, is taking that role on and it's saying, mm -hmm. hey, God here, you know, the guy you've been learning about and worshiping your whole life. Do I have some shit for you to do? <laughs> oh, <laughs> did your girlfriend do clown makeup? But does is God? That's, why is no, that's what God said. To, Apologies. Yeah. Uh, I, the dude, I'm, just, I'm roasting in here. It's like 80 degrees, and that is not here. an easy wig to be in. Can Sorry, this is yeah. this is latex paint. <laughs> Am I, the, I think it's scarier with your it, natural it's, hair. Everything's been getting crazier. This the whole juxtaposition time. between normal hair. <laughs> the and headset the, too. Uh, yeah. Well, this is coincidental. I just got this in the mail because I'm sponsored by Logitech, and all the only color they had is white. Oh, they make it looks good. Ah, yeah, yeah. oh, thank you, thank you. The long Sorry. hair, it's like if you dyed that green. Yeah, they love white on PKA. Looks yeah. great. We like it to pop. Um, I was saying, uh, <laughs> like, even if so, if you didn't go into a, a mosque or something, but if you had a buddy and he was like, "Do I'm doing the daily prayer?" Yeah, I'd love if you join me. And like, maybe that's not really Muslim of him to have mm -hmm. uh, someone. an infidel like yourself. Yes. Uh, but like, I, like you know, would you do that? Uh, because I I have I know lots of people like would not or or someone if a, a guy was like you know what let, let me baptize you I'd love to baptize you. I know a lot of people Ooh, that would be like absolutely big deal not mm -hmm. and yeah. then it's like it's interesting because like the people that like are really not Catholic or Christian or whatever. They're so not about it. Like, because I don't believe in that stuff. No, do not touch me with that water, motherfucker. <laughs> don't even it's bring it in. It's like funny because it's like, you don't even, you know, oh, you're going to get baptized. You're yeah. scared. But I thought that's not, but I thought, you and I thought it's just silly. Yeah, it's just water. No. It's not, you but, know, but like because for it's some what people. That water means, though, like, like for those who don't know and yeah. fast forward, like it's, it's, you're taking on the new covenant with God and Christ. You're saying that no longer am I part of the Old Testament where we must sacrifice animals to uh, to get rid of our sins. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I wash myself of, uh, self of my sins here and now and forever because He is my Lord and Savior, and through Him I will be clean. You're making a big decision right then and there, and making a statement for sure, in, for in sure, public, yeah. in front of no, the whole but if someone if someone who is like, oh, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in all that. And another person was like, oh, cool. Will you do me the favor and let me baptize you? I'm sure a lot of those people are making this all up, but I'm sure a lot of the people would be like, oh, absolutely not. Yeah. 
And it's I'm like, sure well, let wouldn't. me just put a little bit of, right? I would assume, because why not? Logically, if you don't care, why wouldn't you let it? But I, yeah. still, there's it's still a lot of weight to the prayers. Like mm-hmm. doing like, if you put on like to fill in like the Jewish like leather thing, or you did like that mm-hmm. Islamic prayer, and it wasn't something that you grew up doing or committed to doing, and you were just like doing it as a thing for your buddy, it, it has like some weight to it. And this comes from it a person does. who's not, like that and maybe it's just because i walked around all these like cathedrals and churches like in italy and stuff Mm -hmm. that are like so crazy and magnificent but i was just thinking about like how just we've been with religion and all that and i'm like i'm not this guy there's still there's a lot of weight to doing that stuff if you went down and like literally were on your knees and you know did the the whole thing this is where woody and i really disagree because Yo, uh, he's not here. He's demons. a bitch, though, right? Admit it. Taylor wouldn't so admit bad. it before. Say it. <laughs> oh my god, I feel like in the role I'm of Woody. Kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. I can be your Woody with the with the demons and stuff. When we, we'll, I don't know, we'll we'll find a story about demon worship or something, and and Woody's like, sign me up. It's just gobbledygook, and it's like, ooh, the same way that if Taylor found out he was going to be dead in six months, he he'd be fucking doing mission work and praying to the <laughs> Lord. Um, I will not look. I don't believe. I don't believe, but I don't disbelieve so thoroughly that I'm going to take any risks with demons. Okay. I'm not Very so sure that de- I'm, I'm sure enough that there is no God that I ain't going to church and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk to him unless it's a code red emergency, but I believe in demons enough that I'm not going to like offer my soul to them. And like, like I'll tell you what, I would say it here joking, like take my soul, dark Lord. But yeah. what I wouldn't do is like if someone sent me an old book with some Latin in it, yeah. I wouldn't be reciting like, sign it they're, in blood. They're like, like they're yeah, like, cut your I name agree. here, cut your name here, and write in 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 your own blood on this page out of a Orthodox Bible that you know this and that and the other, and then take this stamp and rub the blood on it and put it there. Be like, nah, man, I'm not. Nah, yeah. I don't think so. I like, think I do any I'm of like, that. I've seen I, this movie before. Like if I buy in that this is real, then I'm already buying into playing for the side that is going to lose. Yeah. Like why would you? Oh, bother? now that I don't believe. So I think that God uh, like lied to us. I like this theory too. This is what I hope happened. I hope that Satan, uh, or the Morning Star, as I prefer to call him, was the good guy that he wanted mankind to to have all of the abilities of the angels. But also the 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 falsehood that man has. He wanted us to to be a, a, a because maybe like what God is is half what we are and half what an angel is, and he split his grace and made two different beings that he could lord over. And so if uh, if um, if the angels would come down, if it turned out that that satan wanted to give us that power and he was the good guy and that god was the bad guy and the whole bible and christian religion are propaganda and the devil's like no read the truth my son and like so showed us the truth that's the movie i want that's the and that's the reality i want but that's I in bet, the bible I bet the devil's basically sick. that's the well, bible like because okay so i bible yeah. study uh, background whatever uh satan tempts eve not with the fruit of li- of life, but with the fruit of knowledge. There's a different. There's two trees in the garden. The first is the fruit of knowledge, and the second is the fruit of life. They give her the fruit of knowledge, and then she immediately realizes, "I want the fruit of life." And as she is going toward it with Adam, I believe one of the angels or God say, "We absolutely must stop them from eating from the tree of life, or they will be." immortal like us or something like that so there is Hmm. an element of that very much so in the bible and even even earlier in like different translations and stuff uh satan the word satan primarily meant adversary he was sort of a devil's advocate in god's court it was his job that god gave him specifically to tempt people to test them imagine imagine the afterlife and it's just like a character create screen and you're choosing like horde or alliance it's like heaven and hell. You're like, oh, what's going on though? Like, what's going on there? Damn, hell's got some you really talk cool Saint Michael. Hugo Boss suits. I was you really hoping you were going to say Michael <laughs> Archangel, and he's like, honestly, man, it's like pretty, pretty similar in a lot of ways. And you're like, what do you mean? He's just like, it's like the same. Oh, I, I think that Satan probably did it out of out of jealousy, where he was created and to serve. one of his main, yeah, he was created to serve. All the angels were, and he pridefully believed 
well, I was jealous that the Lord then made humans because he thought you've already perfected creation with us. We're more impressive in every way than these beings. But they betrayed God and said, no, we're not going to follow you. And so he leaned into the humans. And so the way that Satan strikes back against God is by corrupting that which God cares most for, which is That's humans. the second movie, Satan Strikes Back. Satan strikes back. Yeah, it's a trilogy. That's pretty much, also pretty much accurate. That's how that works. Satan yeah. fucks with us just to fuck with God, at least according to most mm. theology. It's the way he can undermine what God cares about. Which that's is why, us. honestly, like at the end Return of the, of the, like, the, end of the Torah, end of the Torah, they're like, yeah, people, people aren't buying this shit anymore. We need the story's great. They love the story, but we need on, a hero so and a villain. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna need a hero and a villain for part two here. Well, I mean, you got a great villain in Satan, the ultimate villain. Like, yeah, yeah. It's a good and you're one. you're not gonna knock Satan out in the first. Well, that's movie. why you're I'm I, I, I'm Jewish, but like, I don't know that shit. You guys got going on is pretty sick. Like, I became a GI Joe collector because I loved Cobra, you yeah. know. And I'm like, <laughs> Satan's like fucking sick Cobra. Like, like angels are pretty cool too, though. Archangels, they have like. Sword have you met and the devil in Baldur's yeah, cool. Gate yet? No, I haven't, but I will try and uh, fuck him. He does not be <laughs> good luck in that, I don't think. Uh, but but he's pretty slick with the. That's with all. The that's not on brand. It seems like he'd be all about that. I think his name is Raphael. Uh, he'll he'll appear over and over and kind of be a a bit adversarial. He he really does seem like the Christian devil though. Um, he sort of tempts you and yeah. takes you to well, a paradise. Well, that's definitely the most common devil. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I it's like the biggest that. religion, so that makes which sense. is based like on the- Hades, kind of. Yeah, based on... Uh, did you guys play the game Dante's Inferno? It was kind of like a... Uh, a uh, God, God of War clone, kind of. Yeah, it was like a God of War clone, no, but it was really good. I thought it was amazing that you get to you get to cleanse or murder unbaptized babies. They're like one of the key enemies. Uh, but you fight Satan as the final boss, and he's like 12 foot tall, and he's got this monster like 12 inch dong that's like flopping around in your character's face for the whole fight. It's have yeah. you seen he has the movie? to be, he has to be offensive even as he fights like yes. satan's Same have you movie? seen the movie you Dante's have to beat him in a rock off uh, uh you know, I think, yes i think, I did see I think so so there's an animated movie from 2010 i ah. think called dante's inferno uh, this is made Very from the same good. game by the way i think this is connected yeah. by the way i think it is connected. it is this this is it was a promo for the game yeah and it is sick and that's why the game is like that that story too it's it's cool the book is yeah. good too if you want to read the book don't read purgatorio or paradiso they're boring I'm I'm so sucked into Baldur's Gate that that's taking up all of my like free funny silly time. I'm 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 loving that game so much. I'm I'm gonna play after this. I, I I want to know. And the reason I'm playing is two things that that make that game so addicting for me personally. It's I do like the combat now. When you set off a big combo and everything gets wasted, it is cool. It to is just, really to satisfying. not run in there like pressing square or mouse clicking at a like doing combos. Of course, and it yeah. like pausing for a second and being like, "Hey, you run here. I'm gonna. You're gonna drop this here. It's gonna make it slicked in oil. You cast fire on that, and like just coming up with this thing and like, I love that. What a, one thing that I do wish it had, and it's not a, it's not a big ask at all. But I played the Alien Dark Descent game recently. Yeah. And that game's fucking amazing. Oh, I'm thinking of Isolation. I, I haven't played Dark. Yeah, Is- Isolation's incredible also, but this one's so good. It's uh it's like I would describe it like XCOM or Baldur's Gate. Oh, it's turn-based. Like, you, yes, but yes and no. Like you can set it to that it pauses whenever you like switch your weapons or whatever, but like really your guys are always moving and shooting and and yelling and like you're clicking them around and like whenever they're walking somewhere, they'll still target like an enemy. So they're moving around while shooting at the aliens and it's all the sounds from the movies. And uh, it's the action is happening because like one thing that I, I, I miss after that is like when in that game, like you set up like like you could pause it for a second or slow down and then you like set up the four things and then they do it. Like they do it like in the timing because sometimes I want to like th- and you could do this in Dungeons and Dragons and I, it's so funny like I'm never satisfied. You could throw something to someone, but I want to throw something to someone and have them like hit it in the air. Ooh. Like I want to be able to have like sequence of actions. Yeah, yeah. But that's just now I'm just asking for too much because I could already fuck a bear in the game. 
Yeah, now I'm getting, getting selfish. Now. Uh, I'm getting greedy. <laughs> yeah, I am. But like, I just the alien game is kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Like you set up like like four guys to do something like at the same time. Like it's pretty cool. Like two guys take out their flamethrowers and like torch like a whole area. While two other guys, like one guy throws a flare and like the suppressing fire, like, and it all happens at the same time. Um, and the game keeps happening and, you know, it's cool. That's really cool. Actually, yeah. I watched the trailer while you were talking about it. It looks really good. I, I honestly kind of want to play that. that it's great. I, 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 Everyone's played it. About I beat it. it. It was like almost 30 hours to play through the whole campaign and all the secondary objectives and all that. And it's a good, it's a good purchase. If you love Alien... And you're down with that type of game, then easy recommendation. Mm-hmm. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, on the topic of retro games, they did uh what was it? They had an Evil Dead video game. There's a Friday the thirteenth game, Chainsaw Massacre had a beta. And amazingly, the one I'm excited for, not because of this, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the mm-hmm. asymmetrical survival horror game where you play as clowns that hunt humans or as rednecks that try to survive clowns. Oh, so you get two sides to pick from. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I'll fuck with that one. I'm kind of tired of the asymmetrical horror yeah. meta that's been going on. I really did love Dead by Daylight. What does that mean, asymmetrical It's like game. one person plays as Jason and four other people oh, are okay. like running around and have things to do. Great style of game, and I did have a lot of fun with it, like ever since even like Evolve came out and then Predator, and I, I just I played all of them, and I'm just... I'm done with it. I mean, just like battle royales. I'm also like, I'm just like kind of done with them. Um, And I've been really doing single player lately. And there's the the funniest game that I slept on because it was it was cringe at the time. And now it's cringe in a fun and funny way. It's Devil May Cry, the 2013 bad one that fans don't enjoy. What they did to this character, I have never like what you were describing about cutscenes in Baldur's Gate. Uh, Kyle saying how you like listening to like everything they're saying, like every yeah. cutscene. I had to see what was being said because it was so. This guy is like they made like a TikTok guy somehow, like years before TikTok, but he's the main character in this Devil May Cry. And like him and his brother, like they're just like like they'll do shit like they're competing, and he'll be like, he'll be like, huh, did it faster than you? And he's like, yeah. But my dick's still bigger than yours, and it's just like a <laughs> weird thing for the two the characters fuck? to say because you're natural like, dialogue. It's it sounds like the, a B movie, like one of those insane. movies that's so bad it's good, like it's twin ninja. There's a I, there's these action movies where these twin brothers made in like the 80s. It sounds like that McNamara twins, Canadian. the McNamara twins. Yeah, they, yep. they they've got a real case of the not gays, which means they're doing everything they can to let the audience know that hey hey hey. <laughs> We might be here together in the woods with no shirts on, sweatily chopping wood. But here are our babes. They're going to show up in like five minutes. This is bro time for now, though. So chill. No what do you like? Manager. Pussy. Like that. They're <laughs> so talking to each other in the woods. It, dude, dude, those movies are hilarious. I, I saw them on Best of the Worst. Yep, same. I've, I've seen it. I'm such a big Red Litter Media fan. I, I, I've literally seen every... I went back and just watched everything. I really like those guys. They do such good shit. Oh, fantastic. Some of the overall best, like most consistent, high quality content on YouTube. Definitely number one for their genre. Uh, They do have some fun behind the scenes. If you go way, 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 way back before YouTube when they were filming movies at Rich Evans' grandma's house, uh, (laughs) you can see them destroy the entire house and lie to grandma about it being replaced and stuff. Yeah, I want to see. Uh, they made. A, what's the movie they made? Um, something cop. Space cop. Space cop. Yeah, I've never actually seen Space Cop. They made an intentionally low budget movie, um, and it's the sets and some of the effects are better than real bad movies. Yes. And I think that's part of the allure they're saying because mm-hmm. they're always shitting on movies. And it's like, all right, let me just show you what I could do with egg cartons, my buddies. And a, a, a Patreon, like like I'll I'll do a better job than you, and won't even try that hard. And and, and space do I've a seen... lot though. We know that. That's true. No cards. So that was that the alien alien set uh, is egg cartons on the walls or something. Some yep. the person like that, that did that job. No, uh, it's 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 uh, not alien. It's the one James Cameron worked on before. Right before with that, Tana, the slug Gal- that Gal- Gal- Galaxy of Terror. What? Uh, they oh, he basically replaced okay. the principal photographer halfway through and started doing his own different shit. And they got McDonald's Big Mac styrofoam containers, yep. put them on the wall and spray painted them, and it just looked like a wall of uniform little square nubs. 
Why do I know this? I have way too much spare time. Because we watch the same fucking documentaries and, and, and YouTubers yeah. telling this these stories. That that's the one where the my version's actress... like someone high told it to me while I was <laughs> high, and that's why I had my mutated version. Yeah. That's why I whenever right Taylor's now. like, let me double check that, and he's like, I don't know about that. Yeah. Dude, that, that's how <laughs> I, I know about so many where... movies is like <clears throat> someone will say a movie title in my real life and I'll be like, I'm like, I that's the one about and I'm like, no. Kyle's just explained that to me. I've never seen that. And it's like, there's a shocking number of movies that Kyle has just explained I'm to me. I'm almost sure never the seen. Planet of Horror or whatever, the one he's describing with the, the Big Mac things, is the one where the big slug alien rapes the yes. girl at the end. And when they were filming that Ew. scene, they like nearly that. crushed her with the prop. And I think there's even some more drama behind it where she wasn't supposed to do nudity. Yeah, that hair extra. And it was, and, oh, it was really cold. She was shivering and freezing and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I think she was supposed to do like a shower scene and she like wouldn't do that. And they're like, all right, we'll do the slug rape then. And they and lied like, about her age probably in the casting. And it was like, a real low know, budget Hollywood age. shit. You guys know how it is with bad, those though. adrenochrome sucking monsters. I, I skipped like, that one. Did you actually watch the movie? No. No, it's I've never seen it yeah. is significantly underrated because the exact same thing that James Cameron does with aliens on the alien world. They do yeah. a very good low budget version there. There's like six different monsters because the twist you guys probably won't see it is that it turns into whatever you're most afraid of. Mm -hmm. And it's got this interesting like meta plot and uh, the the emperor was actually on the ship the whole time and all this kind of <laughs> like. It, I actually yeah. thought it was kind of good. It was it was a B movie. It was bad in a lot of ways, but it had really neat ideas that just kind of weren't quite budget appropriate. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the big rapey slug monster might be Exhibit A for that. But yeah, well, but that's because I mean, that's like the anime OVAs. It has to hit up a certain level of violence. Like to sell the I, movie, it has to have a minimum level of violence and a minimum level of nudity, and even better if they're together. Yeah. Yeah, that's for the best. I watched that Mexican movie or Spanish movie a while back where there was like a crash landed tentacle monster and everybody was fucking it or letting it fuck them. Uh, what was, was the name uh, of this movie? Dude, I don't ask. I, I, um, but but I'm, I'm sure Google if you Google this, like, I think that's enough information for you to be able to find it. Probably. Spanish tentacle sex <laughs> and and movie. Um, I, I think that was the one. Well, you guys want to call it a oh, show? It's uh, the Untamed. The Untamed. There you go. Cool. Anybody want any uh, Spanish language tentacle porn? The Untamed. Check it I'm out. Watch it tonight. Check it well, out, gentlemen. So, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming on and spending the last four hours with us tonight, Sans thank Woody. You. Yeah, baby. Thank you for getting dressed up, Drifter. It was oh, thank you. absolutely <laughs> like gut busting seeing you come in with that special camera, laying down with the clown makeup on. That was thank such you. a treat. That's That's what I hope. Kyle, you got it. Kyle, you got to come on my podcast, Drifter. You got to come on my podcast as well. Absolutely. Bro, collecting guests for the podcast. Uh, uh, now I know why you guys have a guy. Message yeah. me. <laughs> I, I know have a guy. I, I'm very easy to get a hold of through almost any social media emails publicly available. Definitely. I'm there. I like doing Next podcasts, month. like talking. Let's do it. I, I won't do clown makeup. I promise I'm a lot less crazy than the clown makeup indicates. This was just a totally impulsive. Marginally decision. less crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I agree. There you go. So, Harley, everybody go to Epic Meal Time. Check out Binge Eater Podcast, obviously. And, and the podcast stuff, too. Yeah. Wherever uh, yeah, your podcast, favorite podcast stuff. Uh, wait, is there anywhere else? Your well, Snapchat your Harley plays. I actually upload a lot there, there and I get paid. So I don't know. You might want to be there the time that I show my dick on Snapchat accidentally when I'm wasted because I post weird stuff there. Harley plays on Snapchat if you want. Follow him there. And Drifter, where can everybody find your stuff? Uh, it's slash Drifter on pretty much every platform. I do a lot of TikTok and Twitter now. Uh, YouTube is on vacation until I get this whole, well, you know, this situation a little better sorted. What's yeah. what's the issue? Uh, spine is. All right, that's BKA. <laughs>